every force. I'm Kryptonic Killer. I will be your call out commentary for the night, and I am joined by. I am here. My name is William, William Chilling Walk Moore. I will be the play by play by play uh, caster for today. So, hope you guys are ready to watch Reverie Esports and their amazing tournament. And as of some of you might have already figured out, yes, if you've looked at the brackets and the teams and the actual players, I am a cutie pie. The real I am a cutie pie is in boy boy. This ought to be a very interesting night to see from both of the challenger tier players. Definitely. Two challenger tier players is on. And we definitely have to see how I'm a cutie pie steps up in the, into this as well. For, uh, former LCS player, you guys already know, on Team Dignitas, 80 carry. So we'll get right into it. All right, boys. So all we're waiting for now is just the brackets, and then we will be getting into the lobbies with the teams. Um, each team uh, might be practiced. They might be, uh, they might be just solo key players, just mashed up with each other. We don't know, uh, but we're hoping the best from each team. We're hoping very sportsmanlike like con uh, conduct come from everybody as well. We're hoping to see some exciting games tonight. Also, um, I would like to say that these tournaments are hosted every week on a Saturday and Friday. Uh, both a the amateur on Friday, uh, the amateur on Saturday, I'm sorry, the amateur on Saturday and the regular Friday. So I'm really excited to see how <laughs> today's tournament comes up. For sure, for sure. And right now we are just waiting. We are just waiting for the uh, the teams to get into the lobby and get started. So so right now, definitely just want to cover up some strong picks coming in. There's a multitude of of ELO players in here. Like I said, we got Cutie Pie from Challenger, Boy Boy. It looks like Boy from Diamond 2, and also just a, a multitude from the Bronze, Silver, and Gold, and Platinum tiers. So, uh, so Crip, what do you think about the uh, what do you think about these top picks coming in that you're uh, guessing? Um, okay, so since we have a number of <clears throat> depending on how the captains are made and how each team comes about it, um, the there also there might be just meta bans such as a Mundo Raka, uh, just champions that are automatically banned just because of how scared they can actually be in a team fights and how it, some people just play against them. But there also be we might see some weird bans tonight because we do see some teams that are actually built. Um, they have set ADCs, they have set picks, they have set com uh, comfortable compositions that they make of their team. Um, so we might actually see a lot of weird bands coming out just because that a certain champion or um, a certain mechanic, or they might look up their opponents and be like, they're really good on this champion, and it, they think they might mess with their uh, composition of the team. So they might try to play to their strengths rather than play um, as a as a counter they for might sure. try to play as a team rather than just countering each lane for sure for sure and we definitely have to see how the macro play coming in from these teams as well definitely want to see some rotations as Monte Cristo would love to see uh, definitely want to see some individual play as well uh, but yeah I think a huge pick in this tournament would be the bard with the new Thunderlords and how this patch is working uh, what do you think crypt I think the Thunderlords in this in this latest patch has become a very overpowered Especially in my elo, uh, without seeing somebody on Thunderlords. If you don't see somebody on Thunderlords, it's either because they're playing an extremely uh, heavy tank or a support, maybe just for the Bloodstone, just to take the damage away from the ADC. It's very rare to see somebody not have that Thunderlords. And for Tom Kinch, Tom Kinchin's recently like shot up. Like when he first came out, he was strong. He he was a very strong champion, and he's still strong no matter what they do to him. He is he is gone from being a support to being a top, to being a jungle. He can mid. He is just a very strong pick. And I he has a I think he has a ninety percent ban rate right now. For sure. I think um, I think Mundo is actually higher than that. Mundo is a huge yeah, that's, right now. Mundo is one of the highest band champions. Mundo brand is a very high pick uh band. Um Raka is a high band. Yeah, definitely mm. wanna see Definitely want to see how these teams play with the brand and with the Raka. Uh, I am excited to see how brand works, maybe in the mid lane, maybe in the support. High damage, and probably the only champion to, to utilize Deathfire's Torch as a Keystone Mastery versus everyone else using Thunder Lords. So I just definitely want to see that uh, brand uh, come out in this tournament. Oh, I would love I would love to see a brand play. Um, this brand with Riley's flow. If, if you get a brand and you're able to get ahead. In any kind of way, shape, or form, and you and you and you don't force team fights, 
something is definitely wrong. Um, the ultimate, the the spread of the fire, everything that he does just says things like if a Brand Sejuani composition came out and they just hit their and they hit their wombo combo Huge with Sejuani's uh, glacial prison. Oh my gosh, that would be gorgeous. But fire on top of ice, huh? Yep, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I think another. I think another huge pick that could come out is the Trundle, uh, especially uh, with with Mundo. If Mundo does go go through, we may see the Trundle get picked up. The one that is the anti tank, just draining all the stats, all the health, armor, and magic resist from that. So, definitely want to see if a Trundle gets picked up. And and the thing is that Trundle has a really poor laning phase. So they m we may even see some lane stops with, with this Trundle pickup from the support lane. But it could be also be a huge flex pick for the top lane for the jungle. Uh, let's see the most recent tournament. I think at I at, at I am San Jose we we saw some trolls getting picked up as well. So definitely want to see how that works out. And another thing, I really want to see along with the Trundle pick. I'm really want to see how the AD carry position will come out because they have gone from Lucian to Misfortune to Tristana. Tristana is now a really high pick for about average Elo players, which is gold plat. Uh, just because the fact of her burst damage is insane. She has really, she's a really strong pusher. She has no, uh, she's an assassin, which means she can get in, get out, or she can even use that as an escape rather than a uh, follow up engage. Or she just has a safe ability with her ultimate to knock them all back and then create uh, an extra momentum for her team in the fight. For sure, for sure. And also, also another thing I do want to point out with the Tristana, with the new rework. The mid game is so much better. It just doesn't compare to versus like, uh, doesn't compare like a Jinx or like a Kogma. These these late game eighty carries you don't see coming out anymore. The only person you would see is the Bane, just so that she she is probably the only carry to deal with that Mundo to deal with these uh, other people. So honestly, may see a Jinx, may see that Kogma, may see these late game uh, eighty carries, but definitely gonna be looking for that MF and the Lucian in these early game eighty carries coming in. Uh, 100%. Uh, Lucian, to me, is probably the best ADC right now, just because it's hard to out-damage him early on. Um, if he gets any kind of, if he gets ahead in CS and he's able to get that extra damage, you will not be able to 1v1 him. Um, he's a very mechanical champion. His ability to dash, just his Relentless Pursuit is just amazing. It gets him out of so much stuff, can get him out of a Thresh Hook, can get him out of uh, Nautilus, a Nautilus uh, Dredge Line. Anything really just to reposition himself. He, he's a very high mobility champion, and that's what I think a lot of teams are going to go for high mobility because if they have that high mobility, no matter how much CC that you have, unless you have a Malphite, Sejuani, um, <laughs> Nautilus, it, unless you have like the most unbelievable like chain CC on your team, it is going to be hard to stop their uh, to carry hard to stop their carries for sure. For sure. Yeah, but definitely. I think I think another huge impact is how the junglers will be playing. We do see a lot of uh, early game junglers impacting that, and just it's this game is so snowball that to this point right now, a game's ending 25, 30 minutes, 35 minutes in, you don't even see that late game anymore. So I just want to see how these junglers and how these junglers uh, play in this tournament. Uh, may see some, may see these standard lease and lease in the middle, but you know we also may see the Sajuani, like a Crip sets, maybe some uh, tankier junglers. We may, may even see the Trondo or the Mundo coming in if they go, if the Mundo goes through, we may, we may see that in that jungle role. So definitely have to see how well it works out. I'm actually very, I'm actually very uh, surprised to see Sajuani be played as much as I've seen her lately. Um, considering that most, like you said, most junglers nowadays are snowball heavy. Uh, I've seen a lot of CC, a lot of Lee Sin played, a lot of Shaco played. Um, any anything that can provide the extra damage early on and then go into a tanky kind of form is what most junglers do nowadays. And I'm really excited to see how these higher elos are going to combat combat their uh, jungle counterparts. Um, if we're going to see any invades, if we're going to see any counter jungling, if um, I really want to, I'm really going to be looking for how much each team wards. Especially into the enemy jungle. That that right there is going to be the primary thing that I look for. Uh, whenever I play my ranked games, whenever I play any kind of like normal game, I look for warding. See how well my team is warding, because vision in this game is can make a difference in every fight. For sure, 100%. for sure, for sure. And also with that, I just want to see the Magro play the tower push. We don't even see a lot of dragons anymore, but we may we may see that five dragon play coming in. Uh, it is a little bit rare, but uh, like I said, the game is accelerated towers and gold really would like to push the teams a lot quicker so we definitely have to see we are still waiting for that team the team lobby to come in this could be a lot of fun though oh yeah i can't wait man i'm so excited i'm just talking about it it's like it's i'm already getting
see what mechanics we'll see. I'm really hoping that we'll be able to see I'm a Cutie Pie somewhere or Void Boy into this. I just want to watch the mechanics. I, I watch Cutie Pie stream all the time, um, but I, I would just love to personally see his live mechanics, actually spectate one of his games, uh, to see what he does, to see what tricks he goes for, to see just what kind of stuff he does. Even then, I even I think I think even then a boy boy the pro LCS the the former LCS player for top lane of Curse and CLG and also to a boy boy going into the Curse for the mid lane as well. We haven't seen him in, in forever. We haven't even seen him stream. We haven't even seen see him uh, on on social media at all. He just recently came out with a social media post in regards to where he's been and what he's been doing. So definitely have to see where boy boy is and see how boy boy is performing. He according to according to our uh, bracket, he is diamond two, not diamond one nor master, but I think his mechanics are still there. He's a former a former LCS professional, so definitely have to see how he does in this tournament with Cutie Pie. Oh, of course. I wonder how that would be if they were put on the same team. Can you imagine? Honestly, if they're put on the same team, they they just if they if they're leading their team, they'd probably destroy it. If they're all on voice com. Boy Boy and Cutie Pie would kill. Hey, that doesn't mean that any any team should be encouraged. I would be honored. To play against one of these guys just to be able to see what my stuff is against one of these players I know that they might be mechanically better. I know that they might know more now, But I would just love to see what I could do against these guys. Oh, just definitely because I Would know what to work on just from that point So <laughs> even if you're going against one of these teams that boy boy or cutie pie are on Don't be discouraged be excited get ramped up for it show what you got <laughs> Honestly, think of what happens if there's an upset from onto Void Boy and Cutie Pie. Just think about it. Think about what happens if like Cutie Pie doesn't see a gank or Void Boy, whatever Void Boy is, what role he's playing, he just loses uh, flat out due to a one of a one or a jungle pressure. That would just be horrendous. And we will catch you here right on Reverie Esports on what happened, how they lost the game. Oh my God, I am just so excited. If if they if they destroy, <laughs> that'd be amazing. But if there's a potential upset, that'd be even crazier. Oh man, now, now now you got me all up and all up and emotional now, man. Just to see, um, Cutie Pie have a stressful moment from maybe maybe even a low tier player, like just to see if if a gold were to come out on top of them, oh. like you you know how much that would boost that gold. Oh gold my God, and, his like, ego would rise so high, he'd be like, Yo, man, I'd just be Cutie Pie in a tournament. Got it recorded. We're good. <laughs> we're good. We don't need we don't need nothing. Got <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would spam that all over the internet. For just sure. Just to say, hey guys, I was in that. For sure. I would, I, dude, I would spam it just to ca just because I'm casting it. <laughs> I would be able to say, guys, I was casting the game that Cutie Pie got, you know. Got dang. demolished. What? No way. No way. Yep, right here. Just take a look at this link. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But. So we're still waiting on the lobby. I do apologize. We uh, do apologize for the wait coming in. Uh, they're still getting the lobby set up. We will have it uh, going uh, as soon as we can. But definitely, um, anything? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to discuss, Crip, regarding uh, this current meta and how it is? Um, the current meta, with the way that things have been looking, um, it's it's not it's no longer about one carrying anymore. It's come from rotations. If your team cannot rotate to that dragon, to that bot lane, like your mid jungle cannot rotate or your laners cannot follow their lanes to uh, to stop them or to create a counter gank. That is something very big. It's always been an issue in the game uh, for solo key players to get their laners to, to ward and to follow their lane to, to, the, uh, to the bottom or top side or to mid or to top. You know, it's, it, it just, it's important for each laner to be able to follow up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, X. Uh, I actually think that I actually think yes, it is so much on T play, but I I just, I just want to see these uh, little, these talented individuals just s ex straight up solo carry their games. I mean, if you guys watch the All Star All Star um, NA versus EU, you see NA just dominating the early game, dominating the macro play. But then we have we, we have Huni on Jax, literally just destroy the entire NA All Stars team by him. So just literally single single handedly qual uh, killing and a four man flash stun onto the teammates. Man, I just want to see if that were to happen. If someone were to go Jax top lane or an Irelia top lane, running that try for Squinsues and just straight up demolishing a team. That'd be that'd be hilarious and also super fun to cast.
you want to make me cry just reliving that Hooney <laughs> Jax moment. <laughs> that was that was so insane watching Hooney demolish uh, NA. I mean, I'm a huge NA fan. I'm a huge TSM fan. But mm, man, Hooney going for that four man flash stun, literally just setting up EU for greatness and just solo carrying by himself. Hooney. Now Hooney's in NA. We get to say Hooney is part of NA now, so we get to take credit for that. So, you know, I'm now excited. We get to take credit. <laughs> I'm excited for us saying Hooney is a part of NA now. He's not part of EU. It's all good. So, definitely want to see that. Oh, 100%, man. Um, other than that, uh, guys, if you like the casting that we do and if you like the commentary that we provide you at the service, um, go like Caster's Caravan, guys. That's the company that we're a part of. Uh, we love the people that we work with. We love the work that we do. Um, be sure to like the page, guys. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Go like us and help promote us, guys. We love to do this for you. Yeah, Caster's Caravan is also for those who are interested in going to shoutcasting. So you'll find everything at casterscaravan.com in regards to what we do and how we do it. And if you guys are interested in being a streamer for, under them or being like or being what Crips said, you know, a shoutcaster as well, definitely check out Caster's Caravan. Also. Always check out Reverie Esports. They're holding tournaments, like Crip said, I think almost every Friday or Saturday. Is that correct? It's every Friday and Saturday. Every Friday and Saturday. So definitely keep your heads out on that. But uh, we do apologize for the wait. The lobby's still getting set up, set up again. Uh, it's almost going get, to get on. We're just getting some notifications in regards to that. So definitely going to be waiting. So let's just go and talk a little bit more, uh, more about um, power picks coming into this uh, meta. Patch 5.24 that we're playing on. What do you? What other power picks do you think seeing uh, that is coming out, Crypt? Um, I've seen a Swain. I've seen Swain top come back into meta. Swain being a really strong pick again, especially against uh, the Mundo, uh, being able to counter his healing ability, be able to heal himself, create a lot of CC for his team, and just do massive amounts of damage. He is also a very uh, strong pick that I believe, along with that, Alistair has come back into meta. Alistair being that. Moo Cow, um, that he always has been with the headbutt pulverized combo, uh, leading like leading his team to victory like that. Moo Moo, I've seen a Moo Moo come back into the meta, again a really strong, uh, pick especially coming into the team fight phase with the curse of the mummy, uh, forcing, can can force a big change into a team fight. He does massive amounts of uh, magic damage, off of his W al along with uh, Leandries. If he gets the Leandries and he gets that Sunfire, just a lot of magic damage coming through. And he doesn't have to do anything. For sure, for sure. I think another power pick that I want to see uh, in the jungle world specifically is Kindred. How Kindred plays, even in the mid, -lane, mid lane or AD carry position, Kindred is a huge duelist in the jungle lane. Can, it can even out duel Lee Sin at some certain points of the game. So definitely want to see how Kindred, if Kindred gets picked up, played in the top, I'm sorry, not in the top, in the jungle mid or AD carry position, running that ignite, getting, essentially being another AD carry. But man, strong early game, strong mid game, strong late game. Ultimate literally denying kills for the team, uh, for uh, Kindred's own team. So I think that's another pick, another champion we should definitely keep a lookout for. All right, I want to keep on. I want to go to the support side real quick. Uh, biggest support I have seen make a big role into this game recently has been Thresh. Yeah, definitely. Um, Thresh's ability with his death sentence and then the follow up with the flay has created a lot of chances for a team, has also created a lot of disengages. Um, I think Thresh is also a really strong power play for his support just because of how much utility he gives. He gives a shield, he gives a lockdown, um, a slow off of his flay, and a knock up off of it as well. And then to not only mention that, but he has his box. Mm -hmm, for and sure. the box just creates a huge perimeter that forces the team to have to run away and then forces us to slow. Oh yeah, definitely. Thresh is always Thresh is always like at this point in this stage, he's always that 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 support that gives almost everything. He has the initiation, he has the catch, he has the he has the knock up, he has that box, he has some he has that ledger to save someone. So definitely wanna see. Definitely wanna see that. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, let's see here. Is there any is there any other uh, power picks that you want to see? I mean, other other than the champions that we already said that I would really like to see Shivana come out into this game. A Shivana, um, may maybe maybe even a Maokai come back into maybe this game. Maybe a Maokai. Yeah, the general maybe will be proud if he, if he saw a Maokai come into the game. That'd be hilarious.
yeah, definitely want to see how well that works. Oh boy. Um, waiting on keys. Yep. So right now we're just waiting on the keys to get into the lobby. Once we get that in, we're definitely gonna get, go ahead and get started. But while we have this moment in time, I will be. I'm going to go get some water to go ahead and start the night. Yep. Go ahead. And right now, I do apologize for the wait. We're just going to get get into this. Let's see here. Oh yeah, we were just waiting that right now. Let's see here. And copy message. Custom tournament. All right, now we're just we're trying to go into the tournament code here. Doesn't seem to be anything's working right now. We do, we do apologize for the wait, guys. It's almost gonna be up here. Yeah, we're just waiting on that. Let's see, the game. Uh, so according to according to Reverie Esports, we do have a game going on. It's, let's see here. It is a, another one versus Plat AK, but it did already start, so we do apologize for that. Just didn't get the codes in time, but we will definitely get another one set up and running. We're just waiting on it's that code started. right here. All right, let's see here. It's already started. Just waiting right now. I do apologize for the wait, guys. Oh. All right, not a problem. Let's see here. All right, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We, we can definitely pull up, pull up a game, though. You got it. Let's see here. Oh wow. Oh we do apologize. Let's see here. Alright, not a problem. Jamaican me hungry. You're Jamaican me hungry. All right, so we're gonna be pulling up the game right now. We do apologize for the wait. Let's see here. Mm. All right, excellent. Alright. 
So I am pulling up the game right now, Crip, if you'd like to go on to na.op.gg to find that game with them. Um, Now we're just loading right up into the champion into the loading screen right here, as you can guys can clearly see. All right, this this game is actually another one versus Plat AK, and uh, and as you can see here, we have Jim making me crazy in the support lane. Diamond, Cloud, Z, Legend in the jungle. Irelia, uh, Leo, as Irelia in the top lane. The fuzzy kangaroo on that Maokai. Maokai looks like he's gonna be a Maokai mid in this matchup, and then and the risky crap being. Um, on Keyblade Warrior in the AD carry position, while on the other side, Charlo 2006 is playing the Leona Blood Moon Callista on uh, Blood Moon Callista with Ben Karin. Yasuo Rific on that Elise tank 24/7 on Shen and Talon with that cleanse in that mid lane. So we definitely have to see how that how well that will play out. And uh, on the blue side would be another one, another versus Plat AK, and we'll definitely go and get that pulled up right here. All right. This year's do apologize for the way it is three minutes in, but fight is happening. Cloud Z is going to go on to Yasuo Rific. Yasuo Rific does have to force the flash, though. And Cloud Z is still on that chase. Goes up for the repel. It looks like he's going to be not going to do anything. Throws out the Sonic Wave, but does miss. So we definitely have to see how well these guys t perform. And the flash on the Malka goes in for the Yasuo Rific. Yasuo Rific looks like he's going to be going down. First blood goes over to the Fuzzy Kangaroo. Well, good pickup coming in from the Malka. Forcing it, and also Talon just not reacting to that uh, well. Let's see here. All right. But as you can see, the Irelia is is a couple CS ahead of Shen, but Shen does have that pot available as well. So we just have to see. Fuzzy Kangaroo is going to go fight out J uh, Jalal in the mid lane. Does have that CS lead, it looks like. All right, and I am sorry about that. I am actually. Do do. What's up, Crypt? I am currently loading at the moment. It's okay. it... not a problem. We're we're just uh, four minutes in, so it's not that big of a deal. It's catching up right now. But yeah, but then uh, first blood did go over to that. So we definitely have to see how well it is. So in the in, so in the bot lane we have a Vein Thresh versus a Callista Leona. Definitely have to see how well that plays out. So it's a Callista Leona. That's that just that combination of champions right there. That's gonna be something really scary, especially when it comes to mid game team fights. Um, Leona is actually countered by Thresh just because Thresh can flay every time she goes in for the Zenith Blade. Definitely. But because of the fact of Callista's ult, she will be able to launch uh, Leona right into the middle of that team get an instant ultimate and then be able to do whatever she will go ahead and use her Zenith Blade as long as Kalis is able to force her into the middle of that team I, I, I don't see any problem with uh, with Leona ha with Leona getting that strong engage at all yeah and as you can see here the, diff the CS differential 28 to 30 so not that big of a deal in that bottom lane and as you can see her fuzzy kangaroo I honestly really want to see how this Maokai versus um, Maka versus uh, Talon goes in, but look at this bot body in the fight. Keely, Keely War going a little bit low though. Ben Karen just gonna get that Thunderlord proc. But look, it's another fight in the jungle as well. Cloud Cloud Legend going out to Yasuo Riffix going so low. Thunderlord proc gets procced off, but not that big a deal. Hook comes out from Jamaican Me Angry. A lot of action coming in. Zemlin comes out. The flay comes out from Jamaican Me Angry, and Ben Karen's gonna try and fight, but trade does go over to the blue side. So just a lot that's of these exactly little fights. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That right there, as well as just saying uh, the. Th when she goes into a Zenith Blade and she done off from her uh, shield daybreak, it, the Thresh Flay can cancel out all that and the engage just be lost. For sure, for sure. And I, man, this, but I definitely want to see how this Maokai talent matchup is going. Definitely Maokai has the favorite, has 30 TS over the 30 on Joe Lowe, but and has that Kallus for that sustain. So, really interesting pickup. Really, really kind of a cheese pick in this mid lane. But definitely, how I want to see how how uh, Fuzzy King Group plays out this Maokai into this matchup. Uh, does have a little bit of that weaker damage though, so it's all just going to be on that vein and that lake, and if it does ever get extended to that and the Irelia as well. Well, let's 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 look at this. Okay, so we do have the Maokai pick, but Maokai usually builds extreme tank. He doesn't do a lot of necessary AP damage. 
as what a Cinder or Annie or a Lux, you know, it doesn't have that hardcore AP burst. Um, so really, all I'm seeing is the for the most of the most of the time that I'm seeing is that Red would just have to go to armor. They have a Lee Sin and Irelia, a Vayne, that do a lot of AD damage, and I just see a very armor stat game this game coming from Red team. Um, but as it, it kind of goes the same for blue team as well with a stack on I mean Shin does magic damage but not a burst heavy the only real burst heavy AP that I really see is Elise and the way that, she, that her jungle is going um, she might become that kind of she might become that kind of thing uh, burst AP but she needs to try to get ahead and she already has a death which put her, puts her behind already for sure for sure yeah, I definitely want to see how this talent bears up. Looks like talent is essentially getting nullified. He isn't a lot of snowball and Maokai, full health, full mana. He's gonna keep the lane in the pr pressure. Definitely have to see, have want to see how Elise does it. But you can see here, Shen's getting re Shen's just standing at his base. Is he getting ready for a teleport play? He might be. Definitely have to want to see how well it does it. No, he's just gonna TP back to the top lane, up there. And it looks like Leo's gonna try and brawl over tank 24/7. Cool, he's gonna land that uh. equalizing strike. Fight's coming in. Leo's gonna Leo gets it gets a little bit of an edge, but is in that minion wave taking a de decent amount of damage. Tank 27 does definitely win that trade though, but that corrupt, that corrupting potion is gonna give him a little bit more of that sustain. Definitely wanna see how this goes. But man, this mid lane going so heavily adv advantageous for the fuzzy kangaroo with this catalyst for that sustain. 52 and not even giving me that amount of kill pressure. <clears throat> the talent doesn't even have a lot of kill pressure on fuzzy kangaroo on his Maokai, so. Really interesting pickup, but definitely pulling it, definitely working out right now. Of of course, and then Maokai not having a like actual mana, like Talon is already um, so Maokai can just have his way with all his saplings and just force whatever he wants. And yeah. like, look, he's even under tower right now. Yeah. He's not taking hardly any looks damage. Looks like they're trying to get onto uh, Yasuo Yasuo Rific though, but no kill right there. Did get really low though, so definitely have to play a little bit safer. Blue team playing super super aggressive, but you can see the synergy coming in from Cloud Z and Keyblade. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Keyblade Warrior from Jamaican Me Angry, synergizing really well in that invade. Honestly, coming um, right as Maokai went under tower, then I'll look at Maokai taking tower damage there, like is gone. Just blinking red. That's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just blinking red. Just a lot red. of tower damage on a Maokai for just no reason, um, but. We saw Lee Sin go into Red Side Jungle and hop onto Elise, did a lot of damage, and forced Elise to flash, I believe. Um, no, she actually has her flash. She, I guess she repelled. Um, but to see her get so low and to see Blue Team not go for Dragon was very surprising. That was a very good Dragon opportunity that they could have had to get an objective and get their team a little bit extra gold. For sure, for sure. And you can already see the gold differential. 1k ahead from that kill. And just I think just a CS differential too. I really up on that Shen by 10 CS. Maokai up on that Talon. The only person who's who's winning the lane with CS is that Kalissa, so definitely have to see how that plays out. And he, and Lee Sin also just even on, but does have that assist as well. I'm actually very surprised to see Kalista up over a Vayne in CS. Kalista, to me, is um, Vayne and Kalista are both very hard ADCs. Going to, in though, uh, look at the CS JoJo goes in. JoJo has to flash away though. Tank 24/7 gets knocked down in the back. Has to talk through. Gets two of them, but looks like no one's going to do it. The legend is going so low. You're making me angry. Throws out that box, but no kill is going to be happening. Both getting so low. Did have that kill potential, but man, really interesting fight. Shen, it was definitely some good communication coming from the red side to use that stand united on to Talon. I actually did what I, I called like the tail end of that fight. All I saw was Lee Sin kick, and next thing I know, I see Shen just out there in the red. Trying to run away, but look at bot lane. Yeah, let's see if Charlo is going. TP comes in from. Oh, TP. TP is coming from Leo. Leo looks like their red team's gonna back up. Can Leo catch up? The tr the third Fourth. silver bolt gets proc. Charlos is getting so low. He does have that slow. Another one comes out, but looks like Leo just burns out that TP. Nothing gained from it. So, so really good, really good job from the red team's uh, bot lane to to disengage properly. And they could actually kind of force this tower. Leona's less than half health. They, if they wanted to, if Lee Sin would have came bottom, they could have dove so they, easy. Yeah, they maybe picked could, up a kill and even got the tower. Definitely, they could have either done that or even done for Dragon too if they wanted to. But looks like they caught out Yasuo Rific. Jamaican me angry is going in for that flake. Plays back. Keyblade War goes in for the for the for the uh, ultimate, and it looks like Keyblade War is taking so low though. Can't Keyblade War survive? Leo comes in for the pickup. Jamaican me angry picks up the kill. Charles is gonna is getting so low, and one more hit. Does her block come in? But no, but Ben Karen pulls it out with the Fates call, saves him just barely. But look at this though. 
You're making me angry. Taunting him. Can he get it? Tries to go for the auto. The heel comes out from Carlo as well. Ben Karen's going to look at but goes in. The Ren comes out. You're making me angry solo, but not result of a kill. That was very mechanically done by Vayne right there. She she got caught out. She got into a bad situation and it forced ult. Whenever she did, Elise and Leona were both on top of her. Leona burning everything, her solar flare, her zenith blade, her daybreak, everything. And Elise came out with a nice stun and burst damage onto Vayne. But Vayne, when she popped ult, Vayne queued and then stayed into stayed into that stealth mode, which gave her team the ability to be able to um, jump on to the Elise and be able to burst her down because Elise was wanting the Vayne. They were wanting to kill the Vayne and they were but because they had no one to target, that all that burst damage she did became void. And that allowed the blue team to come on top of this and be able to turn a bad situation into a very winning one. They almost got two kills. I'm really surprised that Vayne did not pick up. That was a really good calling, uh, a fades call by Callista. Yeah, I do apologize, guys. My my yeah. did just accidentally crashed, but it's just going to load right back up real quick here. And we will get right back into it. Do apologize for that. Oh, that was beautiful done by Lee Sin. Lee Sin forced um Lee Sin was forced out of the fight but came back in just so um just so Elise would try to jump on her and then they turned on Elise right as she came down from her repel. Uh Lee Sin threw a sonic wave out to Shin and right as they killed Elise, he jumped to Shin to get away from the damage and then was chased and was chased down and was ultimately killed. But I really are picking up two kills for the top. For sure, for sure. So the lead, the trade is three to one though. Balin is trying to play aggressive. Look at that though. Carlo does go in. Keyblade Warrior does have to activate all types of faith calls. Comes out, misses though. Keyblade Warrior is gonna go low, a little bit low. They're focusing on Ben Kern though. Ben Kern's gonna go solo. He's, he's gonna get taken out. Carlo's by himself. And look at this. Jello is going solo as well in the mid lane. Fuzzy Kangaroo is gonna have the advantage. And flashes goes in for the for the cute. Stan United has going from tank 24/7. Gets stunned out. Can't even keep. can even Stan United towards his Leona in the in the bottom lane. But man, really well. Really well played coming in from the blue side, synergizing so well, stopping the TP, <coughs> and just using uh, doing so well to prevent the mid lane as w to kill the mid lane as well. And you make me angry. I'm just gonna claim that kill onto Leona as well. But Yasuo Rific looks like he's gonna try to collapse. You're making me angry. You're making angry. Flashes away. Does make it out though. Can Yasuo Rific pick up a kill? Tries to go for bite. Looks. Let's see here. Does doesn't have that flash though goes over for keyblade warrior misses the cocoon oh, however the stun. and look at this clouds legend is coming in for the flank can yes terrific miguel does have that ward there throws out the sonic wave misses has to ward hop over yes terrific is going solo gets the slow on the cripple cocoon comes out throws out the poison the toxin and just going to deter that fight from there Go is going to survive that but man a lot of action coming in from this game and cloud Legend is still going in for the fight yes terrific is going to get a little bit low but not going to be a kill uh, at least, and if you would have landed one of the sonic waves, that would have probably been a dead Callista. For sure, on for sure. a dead Callista, and I'm, I'm really, uh, that, that was really kind of iffy for him to miss those, uh, considering that he had the warding, but it was very well played by Lee Sin to be able to try and get that kill. He came really close. Uh, I want to go back to that bot lane fight. Vayne, uh, with really good mechanics, knows that Leona's going to try to predict her movement. And so it forced the, the solar flare ahead of her, and she went back, and it got an instant box onto Callista. They turned on her, got the damage dealer, and then went for the support. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, and it was very well played by uh, Blue Side. Yeah, and you, and you can just see the mid lane disparity here. Uh, two kills, two levels, and has that role already built up into that mid lane matchup into Talon. Talon's essentially useless right now. There's no, there's so, it's so hard for Talon to get into get into his face or where he can one shot someone when he's this far behind in this matchup. I wasn't even able to roam as well just because Maokai was pushing to his turret and had priority all over that. So blue team playing extremely well. And then when it comes to like that that instant burst damage that you said, look at look at the items that Maokai Looks like he spicy. has his glacial Yep, fight's happening in the top lane though. Tank 24 7 is going super low. Can he get it? So low it throws out another blade uh, doesn't take him down though. So close. Really, really well played from Cloud's Legend, but Leo, but just didn't have enough damage. That is an insane amount of damage coming out from Trading Some Blades. That true damage off of Irelia did a lot of damage to that Shin in that fight. I'm really actually very surprised to see him live with as much health as he did. Um, I was I, I was thinking that was a for sure kill that was going to happen. But, I think... Uh, the... 
Yeah, I think it's actually what? the Shadow Dash. He, he dashed through both of them, so he nullified the, the auto attack damage from Leo and, and Cloud's Legend. So it looks like Cloud's Legend is going to go in, gets Cocoon in the tower. Kenny goes on, the Stain oh, comes out. Can he make it out? Jam. Leo's going, can, he, can Leo goes on? He's so low. Leo is so low. What do you go top of the fight's also happening in the bot lane as well? Carlos, Charlo's gonna get pulled out from Fate's Call. Three men on the Jolo goes in on Keyblade Warrior. Keyblade Warrior's going solo, but they have the vision on the Jolo. Jolo is gonna go down. Fuzzy Kangaroo is also getting exhausted, but Charlo can he make it out? He's he's gonna go down from from the Fuzzy Kangaroo, but Fuzzy Kangaroo is also gonna go down from Ben Karen. And Ben Karen getting one kill. He's, he's obviously gonna pick up Jamaican Me Agri's kill as well. TP comes out from Leo though. Keyblade Warrior and wins the one on one against Talon as well. Leo's trying to collapse Ben Karen by himself. Let's see here. Can he make it out? Keyblade Warrior on the chase with Leo. Pings are coming out. What's Ben Karen going to do? Throws out the Q. Gets condemned to the wall, though. Oh. And he has to flash oh, out. Does flash. anyone have a flash? No one has a flash out. They do see Ben Karen, but Ben Karen is definitely going to make it out from that skirmish here. Ben Karen picking up one kill. But, man, trade trade overall two for two. I don't know, man. Look at Lee Sin. Lee Sin's going hard in the pain. He's Cloud Legend is looking for wood. something. Oh, Cloud Legend throws out the Sonic Wave. But Yasuo, Yasuo, look at that! Oh. Yasuo does so much damage. Has that Rufle and that Nisi Large Rod. Man, Yasuo Rufle coming back into this game. Cloud's Legend, one and one, three and one now. Man, that like like I said earlier, that's the damage that the red team is gonna need. They're gonna need that AP burst damage from Elise. That is something that Blue does not have. They do not have that instant burst damage that they that that they have uh, that Blitz team does. They're going to have to utilize at least this entire game just because of the AP factor. It's going to make the entire blue team go these weird builds whenever Red can just build armor and have a free time all day. And it looks like Jolo is going to get caught. Uh... He's going to get solo, but Fuzzy Kangaroo gets taunted, though. Can he make it out? The Lantern comes pulling out. Can he pull it out? Save And yes, he does. <laughs> Yasuo Rific is going to get a little bit caught out. The, the charge comes in, and Yasuo Rific is going to go down from Keyblade Warrior. Charlo is by himself. What's going to happen there? Can you make me angry land a hook? Not going to go for the hook, though. But, man, just a quick turnaround. Good rotation that was coming a, in. That was a great lane. job. That was a great job to see that uh, Thresh come in and try to say and, and save the day. Cocoon landed. But it did not have, it did not stop the uh, the lantern. Looks like another fight is happening here. Cloud Legends trying to go for that Kalista, but look at the Jolo gets condemned into the wall, getting solo from Killian War. TB comes in from Shendo. Can Shen make it out? Charlo's getting solo. The taunt comes out. Fate's call comes out. Cloud Legend gets taunted, gonna kick him away from the team. Misses the Sonic Wave. Actually, no, it does land though. Can Cloud Legend make it out? No, he is. So many red blinkers onto the red side, and you're making me angry. Also, super low. Man, all these fights going so close. A kill is, could have happened, but man, just a little bit, these tiny little things changing everything. And Red Team does have Vision on Fuzzy Kangaroo, though. This, this is where the warding comes in. This Dive's coming in, though. Dive's going in. Uh, goes on to take 24 7. Ben Karen's going to get so low. He's taking Tower Aggro, though. Can he has? He flashes out. Is can he get in the range rage? But the Maokai oh sampling! Touchdown! Touchdown! Oh! Tank 24 7 does block the touchdown. No touchdown goes in, but look at that! Cloud Legend goes all the way in deep! Can he make it out? Flashes over! The blood, oh, and the face of the mountain coming in from you, making me angry. Holy cow. So many things going on here. The the that side the resonating strike beautiful. going oh, the resonating strike going all the way towards to the tier three turret. Huge. And I was thinking off of that crippling strike that he would have been able to pick up that other key to shield still on uh the Callista. And I was thinking that was going to be a double kill easy just because Shen uh, dashed back that way. And ended, I mean, not dashed, but he uh, ulted to the Kalista. So I figured that'd be a double kill going easy towards Lee Sin. But uh, as it had it, it was just, uh, it was still a really good attempt. He picked up a kill and mechanics saved him right there. If he wouldn't have, if he wouldn't have ward hopped, he would have probably ended up dying. For sure, well. for sure. Very good. And as you can see there, Dragon does go over to the red, to the red team. Blue team did try and steal it, but... Unfortunately, wasn't able to do it. But as you can see here, they look like they're trying to catch onto jo Jolo. That's so horrific. It's so low, though. Can they catch him? Throws out the cocoon. Misses. Throws out the flate. Throws out. <coughs> Charlo throws out her ultimate. Has to repel up. What can they do? Yeah, so horrific. Solo does go down from Leo, but Talon's doing a lot of damage. Leo just gets exhausted, and Keyblade Warrior is going to go in. Ben Karen's going to go down from the from that thrash here, and Keyblade Warrior going in for those silver procs. Again, one more gets a third. Gets an is out of rampage. Red buff applied on onto the vein, uh, onto that Leona being able to pick up that kill like that. That was really 
Yeah, really good mechanics. Uh, great Here. mobility coming over from Vayne. And as you see, they're going to take out this. Going to take out the tier two turret as well. Gold leads huge. Six k up ahead. It looks what like you're taking the lead tier three. Going in for that tier three though. Look at this. Cloud Legend is on the top side trying to defend this turret. Looks like it is going to go down though. As you can see here, tank 24/7. Cloud Legend is going to be dueling out, but fight into by the inhib. Yasuo Rivik going solo has to repel up. Fuzzy Kangaroo is in the front line, taking a good amount of damage. Can he survive? A lot of rent stacks going in, and looks like the, he's going to be going down soon. Ben Karen picks up the kill, and look at that. They stopped him from taking the inhib. But trade does go over more towards the red team, getting two turrets, tier two and the inhib turret as well. But they do have to run away. Baron is looking like red teams, possibly. No, they're just going to back and just go and clear out these waves here. But definitely, uh, Yasuo Rific, though. Two and five, not really stepping up. Has most most deaths on his team, and also the Callista probably being the strongest player right here. But you, but Keyblade Warrior four zero oh, and three, huge right now, and Maokai definitely being able to shut down this Talon in this mid lane. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and look at this gold difference. There is a six k gold lead on the blue side. They four turrets, not oh, three three. I was right. They have three turrets up. This could easily come out to a very strong game for blue team. They they're just making these right plays, right calls. It's thirteen to six right now. Um, in favor of blue team, they have four turrets. Although the red team does have the only dragon in the game, um, they still gives blue an entire lead. And red right now trying to push out this bottom lane turret. They know they need to go for turrets, um, and they really need to go thresh with a nice hook under tower, forcing the Shen to take damage. Yep, look at this though. It looks like they're gonna be trying to be sieged, but look at the flank coming in from Cloud Legend. And then Leo also fighting Yasuo Rific on top. Look at the damage coming in. Yasuo uh, Leo does have that Triforce being built, doing a lot of damage onto that 2 5 Elise. But looks like no kills are gonna happen on either side of the map. But bot turret for the red side is still standing, so they are they are gonna try and defend this. But the split push pressure coming from Leo being huge for blue team. Oh, especially since he has really nice burst damage coming, coming over from her blade surge, and then right on to our Hitan style, uh, it just does a lot of damage, a lot of healing. So, she dive this tower. So then again, we have Elise, and she pops her ultimate, trying to get do a little bit of extra true damage onto Elise, so that way she can uh, try to force the wave as well. Look at that! You're making me angry. Perfectly flying off uh, Charlo's, Charlo's uh, Zenith blade. And you can see here, red team is going to try and take out this in it. Jolo is by himself trying to defend this. Can blue team get this? Looks like it's going so low. And Stan Unite comes out from Keyblade War. Keyblade War going so low. The taunt comes out. The taunt does like Keyblade War is going to oh, go down. Jolo really gets nice. the shutdown kill on that. And looks like David was going to be coming down from the bottom lane. Jamaica Me Angry getting so low. And looks like, looks like uh, red team is going to claim their second turret of the game here. Cloud's Legend is going to try and rotate. But... Blue team is going to respond with that top lane being taken down. Man, this is the only out. problem with um, how how blue team is playing this right now. Jamaica Me Air gets caught out in the by, by the turret. It's so low though, but Jamaica Me Air claims a kill onto Charlo, but the shutdown goes over to Ben Car Ben Carson. Do apologize, and but Cloud Legend is going to pick that up. A one for two, but red team does get that turret so. Overall trade is going to go over, but Yasuo Rivik goes on to Fuzzy King Row, getting so low. The Rylize and that Rune Glaive doing so much damage, even through Fuzzy King Roos, Froze Heart, Froze Heart, and uh, Rod of Ages. Just not enough damage right now. Not enough tankiness, I apologize. This is, this is the only thing that I see wrong with Blue Team doing the split push. They have a Vayne. They have, Vayne needs to be able to have some kind of peel. They have a Maokai and I really, two of those can easily split push. But the way that they need to do it is they need to have one of those two, either top or bot lane, pushing and then trying to force the inhib, or trying to force that top tower. Because if they see any, if they see like the Callista, uh, the Callista Leona go bot lane, that's a three v four up top that they could try to force a tower on. They have a lot of damage with the Lee Sin and Irelia to just themselves. So Maokai would be perfect in trying to force that split push and force objectives right there. It would force fights to happen uh, in their favor just because. Uh, Talon cannot do burst damage on Maokai. Elise won't be able to burst Maokai as well. Shin would probably be the only one that I see to go defend just because he has he has TP in his ultimate. Mm -hmm, but sure. still, Maokai has a lot better point. He has a lot better uh, wave clear and pressure that he can hold under the tower than Shin can. Mm -hmm. 
for sure, for sure. And it, that's just that's just the way I think red uh, blue team needs to be able to play this game. That that's how I foresee the uh, winning match come about. For sure, I think we definitely have to give credit to Jamaica. Be angry though; he's playing so well, four, two, and seven. Part of a uh, part of eleven out of fifteen kills. He's doing really, really well, helping out the team as well. And look at this; going to be taking out Baron. Can red team react to this? Let's see here. It looks like. Red team doesn't have any vision of this. They have no idea this is happening. They're just taking Baron right out of their noses. Some pings coming out of blue team noticing uh, some red team checking it, but they know Baron goes over to the blue side. Huge gold swing. It looks like they're going to be pressuring it. And you can see Ayas Rivik going to be taking out the dragon while that is happening as well. Looking for that push. Throws out the sonic wave. He becomes out this the hope. Is, this is so many fights coming in. Leo is on a 1v2. Can he get Yasuo Rev? Yasuo Rev going solo. Leo, but look at Ben Karen doing so much damage. And Leo does get the kill on Yasuo Rev. Ben Karen isn't a part of the fight though. Can the blue team start the fight? Do they want to start the fight? Looks like they won't be as Leo did go down. But Dragon, Dragon did. Just want to make sure Dragon looks like they did go over to the red side. But man, yes. a lot of m cross map action going on here. I just just take a second and look at these words. All the words for red team except for one are on the bot side, all by dragon. Like you said, they didn't have they had no vision. Captured that Baron without red knowing anything, and now they have so much wave pressure just because of the buff of Baron that it, it just gives the minions so much time and so much uh, ability to be able to push the lanes out further. They could easily take this inhale. They could easily go bot lane. Capture two more turrets. Oh, the stun goes out from the Keyblade Warrior though. Keyblade Warrior is going so low, but he does make it out. Keyblade Warrior is by himself. The peel is coming in. Fuzzy Kangaroo is the only person in the front line. But the Lancer saves him, brings it back to the team. Ben Karen gets hooked. And he's going to go down from Jamaica. Air Clouds Legend is going to go as well. Yasuo Rivik gets stunned out. The flake comes out. Charla looks like he's going, going down. Fuzzy Kangaroo picks him up. Yasuo Rivik gets bored. Keyblade Warrior slays him. And Jolo by himself. Man, that looks so good for the red team. But blue team. Reacted so beautifully to that. Oh, that was a beautiful E by Tal Talon dodging the hook barely just by hitting on a desperate yeah. kill. But this will probably be GG. Looks like it's gonna be game here, boys and girls. 21-10. The ace comes out. Klaus Legend pick up the double kill. Five, three, and three. But uh, and and Jamaica me angry being such a huge player, getting the hook onto Ben Carson on Ben Karen. I apologize onto that. Uh, onto his Callista and look at that 29 minutes in looks like the game is gonna go to the blue side GG Let's take a look a little bit of, of closer what happened there All right, so, so but That uh the way that that ending The Callista got caught the Callista got caught by Maokai They had four people onto Maokai versus the Shin onto the rest of blue team one Shin versus a Fed Van Irelia is not a good matchup, especially when Irelia was already beating him in. Um, and then we saw, and then we saw Thresh. I, like I said before, we even started this game. Thresh has been a big support champion. He is a big meta, um, big meta pick right now. He has a huge win rate, and just from the uh, just from the utility that he provides for his team, can create so much. He was able to grab that hook on the Callista. And that forced the GG. Once Callista was dead, they no longer had the ADC to do the damage. They had Elise, yeah, but they no longer had the ADC to do the damage. They needed the wave clear, and with Callista, that is amazing wave clear coming from her land ability. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, you're making me angry playing such an incredible Thresh. And, all, and I do have to get credit to that Maokai mid lane to that counter pick matchup against the Talon. Doing so well, nullifying Talon to stop his snowballing in the early game, to stop his assassination as well. So definitely huge props. Definitely huge props going over to the blue team in that tournament in that match. Yeah, that was that was a very good game. I really watched. Um, have to give props to blue team. They they knew, uh, they knew what they were doing. They had very good communication. They had better warding. Uh, even though that they were really AD heavy and all red team had to do was build armor to counter them, um, they still played it very well. They snowballed really easy and they forced fights when they knew that red team was low. So I, it's definitely props to them. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be going into our next game right here. Let's see here. Just want to make sure. Mm. All right. Going to be popping in here. Just going to be waiting for the teams to load up. 
the men. Let's see. Uh, let's see. This team here. This team. What? Another one? Another one. Another one. Pulling off that win right here. One second. I'm having to restart my client. All right. But man, yeah, another one. Jimmy Avery, Diamond Five, playing really, really well. Yes, that was that was a beautiful support. Definitely, definitely. Definitely want to see some other picks. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't manage to see the bands, so unfortunately we couldn't see that. But this game we will be seeing the bands. <clears throat> Still gonna be watching another one to see who their matchup is gonna be for this. I can already call Mundo was banned. <laughs> <laughs> Mundo, Soraka, probably probably bands of that game. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. If I can get my league to load. I'm just gonna go pull up the bracket here, folks. There it is. Let's see here. Just wanna make sure. All right. No. What do you think? Who do you think was the MVP of that game? Was. <laughs> I, I want to say, I be because. Hmm. I want to. I want to give it to Irelia. Irelia? Why is that? Yes. Uh, because not only was uh she able to keep Elise and Calissa down by the dragon pit while the rest of the team was taking the tile, taking the inhib, mm -hmm. but she was also able to pick up the kill on Elise. It might have forced. Uh, her own death, but it, it created something for her team to be able to go into a 4v3 situation with the ad with the advantage right there on their side. And then because they were able to do that, they had minion super minions pushing down the mid. They were able to go get Baron and then push the rest of the way through mid. For sure, for sure. So I would definitely give MVP over to uh, the Irish. Yeah, I would give I would give a uh, major props to the Maokai and the, like I said the Maokai and the Thresh Maokai just nullifying that talent in that mid lane and Thresh is be just being there for a majority of these kills so definitely I want to see how well the next team turns out definitely want to see who the matchup is there's uh, Cloud Ledge is going to be coming into this lobby right here Ooh. now what, now, based on their team's um, composition, what kind of what kind of team what kind of uh, team do you think we'll see from team one? From another one, um, let's see. They went for they so they went for the so as you can see they went for the uh, the dueling top laner to split pushing Irelia the mid game spike with that triforce, uh, and then for the jungle they went for that early game early game Lee Sin like like we predicted. But so what they did, it's really interesting because what they did, I think that so they essentially, essentially it's kind of like having a Maokai top and Irelia mid, where you know we see Faker pull off that Irelia mid back then in LCK. So it's a little bit interesting. Is they just kind of like it's like a lane swap, if you will, with that vein in the bottom lane standard. So it, it's interesting. It works out because the Maokai literally just nullified that Talon. Didn't have any kill. Talon didn't have any kill push on that. So honestly, it was really well played. Uh, you know, team composition. From uh, another one, right? It, it, I would still rather that situation happen where Maokai is going against the Talon and your assassin is going against their other tank, just because it gives. If you're able to, um, if you're able to have a clear mind when you look at this, you want to keep your tank against their against their assassin, so that way they can pressure them, they can deny them CS. But then you want to get yours up at the top lane to where they can deny their tank CS and they can have pressure up there. That's what what that's what I would think you'd want to do. You'd want to have both your sass and your tank having pressure on their lanes and forcing uh forcing the CS under the tower. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. Because Maokai has a lot more poke than Irelia does under tower just with the sapling, and so that could keep Talon at bay just with the extra damage from that. Mm -hmm. And then with that, you have um you have Irelia at the top lane with her Q. She can just dash everywhere just to just to uh, get minions through. And force it under tower because Shin is not the best last hitter. Uh, Talon would have to sustain damage in order to be able to farm against Malakai. So I think it was a very good idea. Yeah, so definitely want to see how well it does in here. Go to the race.
yeah, it looks like uh, another team, Diamond 3. It looks like it's going to be a Diamond Squad from 4 Team 2. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and suspect maybe a Malachi ban. Just yeah. from how well the Malachi was able to um, able to dominate in the team fights with mm -hmm. the way that he just uh, that he got his W onto the right person, created the team to have to try to peel him, but whenever he popped his ultimate, he just became a monster tank and just soaked up all that extra damage. Almost killed Callista. When you saw the Thresh landed that hook, she had like a bar left on her health. Almost for sure. killed the Callista. For Not sure. That AP burst damage is very impressive. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be loading in. Look at this, a t an entire diamond squad coming in. It's going to load up the lobby here so you guys can definitely see here. And as you can see, look at that. Another one on Team 1. Team 2, don't have their team name yet. Just going to go and get that Team 2 name real quick here. No, my phone. Yeah, we have super inspired, a lot of diamond players coming in. Let's see how uh, let's the, I definitely want to see how another one plays up into this squad of diamond diamond players. Uh, they did have they did have uh, really good uh, war control against <clears throat> against uh, let's see here against the other team who they went hmm. against. And it looks like it's going to be like another one team, team. <laughs> another one versus Team Teddy Bears. Versus Team Teddy Bears. So I'm assuming an Annie an Annie's going to come out from Team Teddy Bears maybe in the mid lane. I would love to see a teddy bear get played in this game. Um, Tibbers, oh my gosh, have you seen my bear Tibbers? <laughs> I definitely want to see a squad of team of team bears from this. That Annie, that Vala bear. Who else is a bear in this in the in the champion pool? That's the only two I can think of so far. Ooh, that's the, yeah, that's the only two I can think of as well. Uh, definitely. I mean, I guess we can count Udir. I guess we can count like Udir. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Udir, definitely not Udir. Bear form. So yeah, Bear another mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely want to see how well this pick and ban goes out though, because we saw we saw the uh, Irelia picked up, we saw the Vayne picked up, and the Maokai, the unorthodox Maokai in the mid lane, but definitely want to see how well that is. Excuse me for a second. Yeah, and you can see the team just chatting away at each other. He's like, but it's going to go and target, <coughs> target uh, another one's Maokai mid. They just won with that. <laughs> so we're just waiting on two more players. All right. So we didn't, um, we didn't manage to see what uh, Aloha and Ancient King Rise played. But we definitely, I do definitely want to see how they are, what they are going to play. I'm assuming you know H King Rice. I've always wanted to see get played. What? I've always wanted to see the most rare Rise skin, human. Human yeah. Rise, human Rise. How do you even get that skin? Um, you got human Rise, Black Alistair. Um, what what's it called? Uh. Oh my gosh, something, uh, I can't remember what the name of the skin is, but it's for TF. Um, Pax TF? J Pax TF. There you Pax go. Pax TF, there we go. Pax TF, um, I think you got all those skins by pre-ordering League of Legends. Oh yeah, holy crap, way back then. Way back then. Way back. Definitely want to see a human rise gets, get pulled out, haven't seen that in a while now. Oh, 100%, dude, I, I am... Mm. I've actually never gotten to see human rise. <laughs> All right, just gonna be doing taking a look here. All right, we're almost ready. Clouds Legends gonna be yeah, spectating yeah. with us. It looks like also with HK Rise. No, they may be. I don't know. They might want to. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps, I don't know. Perhaps so. Can the casters play? Let's go. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> let's go and get into it, guys. Don't worry. All right. I I I, I can play. I can play mid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the one trick pony, guys. I can play mid. All right. We Everybody are. Everybody loves a one trick pony. All right. Yeah. They're just gonna fix. Uh, figure out their pick order. 
in here, see how they want to play out this picket band phase. Definitely want to highlight how they're going to do it. Right, man. I, I can't. I can't wait to see what this team will bring us again. Another one with an amazing thresh with the great Irelia Malachi. Just overall team communication was extremely well. The warding um, was amazing, dude. They had their t their whole enemy side jungle warded bottom and top. They they knew what was happening. They knew where they were. They knew what to expect. So I'm I'm really waiting to see what uh, Team Teddy Bears can bring to the table against this well communicated yeah, team. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now we're into picking bands. Let's go and take a look here. All right. Let's so see here. I'm already gonna let's let's go for the Mundo first pick, man. First pick Mundo. Let's go. Let's see what happens here. Call on it, boys. So, first band coming out. Definitely, I'm assuming purple uh, red team is gonna ban out that one. No, blue team actually Mundo. bans down. The, so here's the thing. If so, blue team is banning out Mundo. They're banning out. This, in, in my opinion, right now, the strongest champion in the game. That's so such an interesting ban because that's that's always an automatic ban from purple team. I wouldn't say he's the strongest. I would say he gives definitely somebody to be afraid of, though. Mundo is a really huge champion right now, but he's I don't think he's the strongest. Um, he is he, Mundo goes where he pleases for right? sure. For he sure. will go anywhere in the game, and he will do nothing but chase you down and just throw like, cleavers in your face. The yeah, cleavers sure. do chunk your health. Mm -hmm. But if they have a way to negate his healing with a red buff, with um, any with any kind of extra damage, with a swain, uh, any, any, an ignite, anything to just stop the healing, he can mm -hmm. die. Yeah, that's all it takes. It's just something to stop that healing. Yeah. As you can see, Lulu gets banned out from purple team. Pretty standard. Same with a kindred on the blue side. But that Rengar and the brand brand. Pretty good, pretty strong band as well. They just don't want to see that damage coming and that Rengar, that sneaky, sneaky Rengar with that Thunderlord's proc. And look at that, Tom Kench gets bands out from Purple Team as well. I'm actually highly surprised to see a Lulu band. I have, yeah. not, I have actually not seen Lulu played in a while. Um, she could come back in the meta easy. She's a very high utility champion, very, very strong as well. But I, I don't, I don't know why this Lulu is being banned. I, I guess. I, if if they ever get to pick Lulu for Jamaican Me Angry, I would love to see it. Yeah, it looks like Jamaican. Um, but other than that, Jamaican Me Angry is gonna go on that thresh. So pretty standard. That looks like they don't want to reveal anything yet. So definitely want to see what uh, Team Teddy Bears wants to pick up for their two. Uh, the jungle's open. They have least. They have the least in. They have the least. If they want to pick up one of those. Uh, they can definitely also pick up the timeline. Look at that! The trundle is getting covered. Uh, like I said, the trundle anti tank. Let's see what what. Let's see what they're gonna do with that. And look at that, the Trundle and the Zac as well. Trundle, Zac, very two strong, two very strong picks right there. Trundle with a nice CC, nice attack damage. Ultimate can take all the stats that he wants. Zac, heavy engage, heavy uh, CC as well. Dude, his let's bounce is amazing. Great for team fights. He will spread the team so easily. We gotta keep. So they. Oh, I was gonna say another thing. We gotta we gotta keep in tab was too is that that Trundle and that Zac could be complete flex picks too. We have we haven't seen Zac in the top lane. As of yet in recent, but he can definitely go in the top lane. Trundle can go top jungle or support. So these are really strong flex picks coming in from Team Teddy Bear. There looks like they have a really strong game plan coming into this pick and ban phase. All right, so I don't know how popular Trundle support is for high tier players. Um, it's definitely more of a competitive pick. Kill lane. Yeah, it's definitely more of a competitive and kill lane pick um, for somebody that wants to be really aggressive in lane. Um, to force to force fights, easily catch them out, you know. But th then again, you would have to see that their bot lane is very immobile. Mm -hmm. as yeah, well. yeah. When you do see a trundle get picked up in the bot lane, it's actually mainly so that they can lane up. Trundle has a really poor laning phase, actually. So definitely want to see where this trundle goes. And as you can see, blue team picks up that Lee Sin, picks up that main. So vein. Blind picking that vein, so you know, definitely showing maybe a little bit of disrespect, maybe a little bit of a skill. Definitely want to see how Team Teddy Bear is reacting to it. They are hovering over that Draven, though. Huge lane bully, sneaky, loves playing Draven into that vein. So definitely want to see Team Teddy Bear what they want to choose. Ooh, but we might see an MF as well. He's yeah. hovering over quite a few ADCs. I would love to see an MF come out with the Trundle Zach pick. I think that would be a great uh, Wombo combo Huge. to happen right there. 
Huge wombo combo coming out right there if that were to happen. Twitch is also pretty pretty decent as well if he if Twitch manages to survive that laning phase. And look at that. Looks like it's gonna be the Twitch and the mouth fight. Gonna get locked in that, here. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be that locked is gonna in. That's gonna be amazing. Venom ambush in the venom casket in the rat tat 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 and then venom cast. I mean I mean it can contaminate. That that right there, I'm already so seeing much the mouth cry the mouth fight all right into all that. Huge knockup. And and see is this so this essentially so they have they essentially have their top jungle and support locked in. It's all based on what they want to choose essentially. If they want to put that troll in the top lane, have a mouth fight support. Haven't seen that yet, but it could come out. So definitely want to see how they want to play this. It looks like they might be planning for that lane swap too, and there it looks like they're gonna be saving that last pick for the mid lane and uh, and see how what blue team's gonna react to that. There's the Fizz, and there's the Jax coming out! Looks like a looks like Leo's going to try to to do his best on his Hootie impersonation here, possibly. And he's going to lock it in! Oh Leo's going to play that Jax here! Looks like he's going to try and pull off that Hootie, Hootie, Hootie in this game against Team Teddy Bears and Swag Master. Is he going to lock in that Fizz? Looks like it! Looks like that Fizz is going to get locked in! And looks like Purple Team... Looks like Purple Team has their counter pick. Let's see what they're gonna pick. What do you th what do you think they what do you think they're gonna pick into that fizz? Hmm. Oh. Yes. There Team we Teddy go. Bear. That's. that's <laughs> Team <laughs> Teddy Bear. Definitely. Def I'm definitely thinking that. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely thinking, thinking that, that too. Okay. It could be that Team Teddy Bear, the signature Team Teddy Bear champion. Let's go ahead and look at these two team compositions right quick. We are looking at heavy team fight coming from teddy bears and then on another one we are looking for a heavy pick for sure one count one counters the other if if uh teddy bears were able to get their full team fight off their full combo and uh force the team fights onto another one then they will they definitely have the upper hand but if another one's able to come out with the picks that they want with the thresh death sentence with Jax being able to pick up anything uh force tp down bottom pick up kills mm -hmm. fizz being the assassin that he is or yep. even Lee Sam being the assassin that he is, if they're able to force uh, picks onto uh, Teddy Bears, then Teddy Bears won't have, be able to do anything yeah. to counter that. Because if they're able to take down the Malphite, there goes a big chunk of CC and damage coming from Teddy Bears. Yeah, Teddy Bears did... I, honestly, Teddy Bears played that pick and roll pretty darn well, picking that Trundle and that Zack first two, not really revealing what their top jungle and, and support is going to be. But once that Malphite got locked in, it was pretty obvious who's going to be going to that top lane. So, as you see here, that Malphite is going to be going up there. We have the Zack in the jungle. The Twitch uh, Twitch as AD carry. LeBlanc mid against that Fist. So, looks like it's going to be a skill matchup there. And then that Trunnel support. Uh, they may have a lane swap coming in as well. So, you so we never know. They might do that into that Jax, which is actually really smart. Jax, Jax isn't that good in that lane swap. He has to see as he has to get that gold. So, definitely want to see if Team Teddy Bears is planning for that lane swap. And uh, now we do have to wait for that three minutes. The the uh, players are loading in, so let's just talk a little bit more about these team comps a little bit. All right, so let's let's go into these let's go into these lanes, the lane matchups. So we have a tank versus a assassin top lane. Um, Jax is like, give me a real weapon, and Malphite just throws rocks at people. Um, I would I can't wait to see what kind of uh, outcome will come out of that. I'm not expecting that Jax is going to be a high pressure lane, mm -hmm. forcing Malphite into turret pre-6, but when level 6 comes and Malphite has that ultimate, um, I'm sure Zach and Malphite are going to sit there and they're going to get the slingshot, they're going to get the uh, seismic charge off, and they're going to just wreck uh, Malphite. And they're not They're not really, um, they're not really auto attack dependent champions, mm -hmm. Zach and Malphite, mm -hmm. so I think that that kind of nullifies um, Jax's E ability to be able to dodge those uh, auto attacks for sure and f for sure and I think another thing too with uh, with another one is that this is almost this is almost exactly the same cop that they ran last game into um, into uh, into the red team uh, from previously they had the thrush support the same bottom lane same jungle the only difference is that they still have that split pushing top lane and then the mid lane a little bit different instead of the uh, Maokai they, they do have the assassin fizz but yeah, huge picking coming in from blue team. If they snowball uh, well enough and get enough of a gold lead, I can see them demolishing. Uh, can see them winning. I do apologize, but man, team Teddy Bears—they're looking really strong. They had a really pretty well thought out team, um, 
really a pretty well thought out uh, pick and ban phase as well. And I just want to see how this mid lane matchup is. Fizz and Tillablanc, huge skill matchup in this. In this. Well, the way that I see, I foresee the skill matchup coming between that, it's going to come down to Urchin Strike uh, coming from Fizz along with the passive on his W, giving that extra damage onto the Blanc. I already see that he's going to dive in on her. She's just going to um, she's just going to dash away, and then right whenever she tries to dash back, it does a mimic to come back and do damage on a Fizz. I think that she's going to try and bait out his playful tricks for her. If she doesn't, it's going to be havoc for her in mid lane. Yeah. She's going to need help from Zach. If not that, if not that, I think it's all it's also based on how Fizz play, uses Lotus's playful trickster. Usually, uh, level one to five, Fizz does have a weaker laying face, so can get punished by LeBlanc, which LeBlanc is is a strong lane bully with that uh, with that <clears throat> with her Q uh, sigil of silence and that distortion combo activating Thunder Lord. So I think I think that's essentially based on how Fizz wants to play it. If if he can bait out that distortion and dodge the entire burst from that, Fizz can definitely win this lane. Well, I think she's just going to use her sigil, um, I think it's Malice. Sigil of Malice, yes. Yeah. yeah, Sigil of Malice. I think she's going to use her Sigil of Malice a lot to poke him out but and try to force him to get low. But then again, she's going to use up a lot of mana. Mm -hmm, for and sure. And that's, that's just going to be something iffy right there because, I mean, Fizz, no matter what, he can do damage just from a Q, W combo onto her to just like and a half health of a bomb. Yeah, it looks like so we're going to be... So if he's able to just dodge the uh, Sigil with his playful transfer... I think you'll be fine. And it looks like we're going to be loading right into the game here. Boys and girls, we have another one against Team Teddy Bear. So definitely want to see how well they do here. Would you like red or blue, sir? Uh, I don't know. I'm definitely, I'm definitely feeling that Team Teddy Bear is is probably going to win. I Just because just how, the, how right, well guys. the team is drafted. Coming from another one, we have Jim making me crazy on it. As Cloud's Legend on Mui Tai Lee Sin in the jungle, Keyblade Warrior on Aristocrat Vayne in the bot lane, Leo on, <clears throat> on Classic Jax and Swagmaster 7100 on Atlantean Fizz in the mid. And for Teddy Bears, we have Aloha on a Classic Malphite for top, Senor Burrito on Special Weapon Zack in the jungle, Agent, uh, Ancient King Rise for ADC on Gangster Twitch, Super Inspired, uh, plan that little slugger trindle for support and zebit on wicked the in the mid. Yeah, as you can see here, as you can see on another ones, they have four people with level fives, but then Leo, not level five yet. So I guess we're going to be reporting yeah. him. Please report Leo for not having a level five mastery on that Jax. Looks like he may not or be doing his best Huni impersonation today, guys. But definitely want to see skin. Mm -hmm. Or skin. So. Definitely. Or skin. <laughs> or skin. So definitely want to see how well this does. And then we're going to be going right into it here. Going right into it here. Let's see here. I, I want to see um, if I want to see if they're going to lane swap. They might they might want to lane swap right here. This is a mile fight. I I think it would be better for him just to go mid. I I'm not going to predict the lane swap. Ooh, and pause the game time. is paused for a bit. Just definitely just to wait. Us. Just gives a little bit more time to talk about the the uh, the game, if you will. So let's see here. <clears throat> I think. Oh, I, the one thing that we have not talked about. Let's let's go to that. Is the bot lane for sure? Up. For sure. Um, trundle trundle support is something new to me. Um, I, I personally don't like it when people yeah. are off support, such as trundle or brand, just because I know that there are or supports that have a lot more utility. And can do exactly what they do, just in a better way. For sure, for sure. Um, in a, not not necessarily better, but just in a in a more calculated way, I guess. Yeah. Um, the the reason why you pay, actually pick Trundle though, um, tr I don't think Trundle is that good in solo queue, to be honest. But in a in a ranked in a team five scenario in these tournaments, um, you can lane swap. You uh, Trundle is essentially the anti tank, draining all the tank stats from from the enemy uh, enemy tank, enemy front line, if you will. So that is why Trundle gets picked up. Uh, looks like it might just be standard lanes, though. So far, so but the game is paused. This, this is, this is, uh, this is what I'm trying to get to. Trundle. They, they don't have a tank for Trundle to get onto. Like the most tanky person on another one is Thresh. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. been making me angry. You know, it's that's that's the tankiest person. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He's just that. He's just a heavy utility that he is. Um, so I think other than that, I think if 
as long as Trundle has a hard time getting to the vein, which I don't believe that he will just because of the Malphite ult and the Zack slingshot, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, that it, it, he'll just get kited around by vein yeah. and just get burst. We just have to see how uh, Super Inspire plays out this Trundle. Um, Trundle is really good at at helping out ganks, helping out roams. Uh, that's what actually what happens when he, if he does go into a lane swap, it'll, it'll, it just allows um, Ancient King Rice to get that solo EXP, and Super Inspired just roams around, throws out pillars, uh, tries to catch people off guard, and just allows a little bit of that pick with that LeBlanc in the mid lane too. So he's so if that lane swap were to happen, Trundle is essentially either essentially a, a secondary jungler, if you will, a roaming support. Right, and that's still like massive. His his bite is still gonna just do chunks of damage, and I can't and I cannot wait to see what Toronto will bring out. It might make me feel better about Toronto support, but at the same time, it might not. So I'm really excited to see how this is gonna play. For sure, for sure, yeah. If this if this early game does go it does go into favor of another one, I think that they do have to get very far ahead to be able to team fight to go on a full on five on five against uh, Team Teddy Bears, but. Looks like the pause mm-hmm. is done. We're going to be going right into the game. Looks like it's going to be a standard start here. Looks like there isn't going to be I'm any I'm actually going to expect Eight kind of a... I might, I might in, uh, expect a little bit of a, maybe an invade. Yeah, possibly. Super inspired. Just going to go in a... Let's check the dragon a little bit. Ooh, starting distortion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is actually... Uh, actually, with uh, LeBlancs, you actually do want to start distortion first all the time now. Got that, uh, got that really good ward right in front of red. Gives a little bit of vision. Fizz doesn't even know. Yeah, both teams are playing super defensively, so we're not going to see anything too crazy happen here in this level one. Uh, looks like it's going to be a standard start. Um, Senior Burrito is going to go for that Gromp, while Cloud's Legend is going to go for those Krugs. And they're all just going to be dancing around, having a little bit of fun. I'm wondering to see if this long LeBlanc is going to be sneaky right there. You see her hiding now in the bush yeah, right there? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if be... she's going to be sneaky right when Fizz like, goes to lane. If she's going to try to land an early distortion. Yeah, it's true. To just do a little bit of damage. Just, yep, definitely, definitely. And you, you can actually see the, the different mastery too. Zebit went for... Oh, there it is. There's the quick distortion. And I guess that Thunderlord's, yep. Thunderlord's uh, decree get procked off. But I think I, I want to highlight how what masteries it went. Looks like Fizz went for... Didn't go for the uh, biscuits. I'm assuming went for the assassin. So if you're by yourself in uh, by yourself in an area, you get a bonus 1.5% damage. So I'm assuming that's what he went for that. And Zebit went for that. Um, and look at that, getting bullied. Already, uh, you can already tell this is going to be a harsh fizz. But if he gets ahead in any kind of way, mm-hmm. if he gets a kill or an early assist, that can put him ahead, and that can mean the difference in the laning phase. Yeah, it looks uh, Aloha, Aloha with that uh, shield passive, getting that trade in. Super inspired. It's gonna get a little bit poked out here. Nothing too crazy. I just, it's really fascinating how they actually went with that trundle twitch into that bottom lane matchup. Uh, but it looks like uh, another one isn't really punishing it though. Looks at like this. Leo's gonna no, get that stun. Gets that level two spike. Then all the procs get procked up. He is winning that trade though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- like we said earlier before. Uh, um, Thunderlord's very strong. Level two spike very coming strong, in though. Uh, mastery. Oh Ooh, man, you're making that? me angry going so low. That level two spike, super well played from Team Teddy Bears. Just playing with that mini field, getting that level two spike. And Zebit playing also really well. Look at the CS differential is huge in the mid lane. Two to fourteen. And also in the bottom lane, three to eleven. This is going hugely in the favor of Team Teddy Bears in the bottom in the mid and bottom lane matchup. And there's that distortion. He misses the urchin strike though, I think. And gets the gets the Ethereal chain. And that goes, ticks off, has to flash away, throws out the sigil of malice. Can he get it? Cost legend is for here right here. But not gonna get it taken down. Swag master. Super low. Does have to back. And Cloud's Legend is gonna go and cover that up. Ancient King Prize is gonna bully that. But man, super aggressive play coming in from Team Teddy Bears and punishing punishing their lane opponents really, really well. Oh, 100%. I'm actually really surprised uh, that we didn't see any kind of hard cheese coming from Twitch. Twitch early on with Contaminate and the uh, Venom Cask can do a lot of damage. Um, he's actually super close. He was, he was super close to killing Jamaican me angry. Yeah, but uh, like I was expecting like um, I was kind of expecting a little bit of cheese for them to start out into their enemies like mm-hmm. uh, front bush right there by their tower. Oh, yeah. And like and as they come out, they sit there and they get a little bit of auto attack chase him down, either force a flash, force a heal, 
and then they automatically have lane dominance right there. Yeah. And Which, if they would if they would have did that, they probably would have been a kill right there on Jim making me angry. Look at where Senior Burrito is. Senior Burrito's in the top jungle. Looking like they were gonna he was gonna go for a die, but not doesn't look like they're gonna they are gonna spot Cloud's legend in the jungle. Looks like a little fight's coming out here, but nothing too crazy. Cause it's gonna spot him out. Level five mastery marks is gonna come out and show a little bit of BM. BM right here. Uh oh. but yeah. Zebit totally oh, man that gets me going yeah Zeb look at Zebit 20 CS ahead does have to distortion away from that damage but look at this the dive coming from onto Leo Leo just go goes ahead and cues away onto a minion not gonna be doing anything man these pillars are uh oh super inspired oh, is gonna get taken a little bit of the tower play. they're gonna get two tower shots but look at that King Rice is still trying to do damage here has he enough poison has that six is he gonna expunge or contaminate He's, Let's see here. He's already contaminated. Oh, he's already contaminated. All right, but man, that hook. But super. Insp the, so here's the thing with Trundle support. He just has so much sustain from his passive. Whenever a minion dies. Shit, are you gonna eat supper? Looks like hook is gonna come out onto King Rise. Throws out the pillar, and Ancient King Rise is gonna do a little bit of damage onto him. Not gonna be too crazy though. See here, Senior Brito. Looks like he's gonna be going for a gank, but. Ping gets warded, not going to be too crazy, but Cloud's Legend is on that rotation towards top, top side, but there is a warder, so he's going to get spotted out. And look at this, Aloha, CS tied, goes out, Leah's going to go for that, Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike is going to go in, they're going to be brawling out a little bit, but look at this, Leah is going so low, but Aloha has no mana, trade does go over to Aloha's side though, Leo just guessed and didn't take into consideration that Thunder Lord's Decree doing a lot of damage, but Leo is 6, and... Uh, Hello, I'm gonna go ahead and say, actually, Leo won that trade. He might have lost in health, but he has, like, he has the ability to enforce that. Whereas Aloa, Zach with the slingshot, beautiful onto Jax. Jax with a nice counter and a nice leap to get away. Mm -hmm, for sure. But um, I believe that he actually did win that trade just because. He could force another fight, right? If Malphite would have came in to oh, yeah. get some CS or to do a little bit of warding or something, he could have forced another fight and easily won that next trade. Mm -hmm. All right, and look at this. Leo's going to pick up that <coughs> pickaxe and and a Null Magic Mantle. So he's going to try and build out that MR. Ancient King Rise going to throw out that Venom Cask. Going to land him Keyblade Warrior for a little bit. Is out of mana. Yeah, it's going to be a slow, slow game, but... Honestly, disparity coming in mainly, I, I feel like, from that mid and that bottom. The 29 CS to 53 and 27 to 49. Huge. I'm actually I'm actually very surprised to see that uh, Toronto didn't take Ignite. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, just because the fact that the poison from Twitch is almost like an Ignite, and if they would have stacked, they would st it's stackable. So if they stacked the two on top of you, that's a lot of damage. It's almost like a secondary brand. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. And that that actually might have picked them up that kill early on, you're making me crazy. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right. But so far, everything looks normal. I mean, builds are where they need to be. The only thing, really surprising thing is that Jax started corrupting patients. Um, that's actually really weird to see. He honestly could have took biscuits and... Uh, had an easier bit of a time than maybe afforded, uh, like um, a little bit of a damage item, maybe a Dorn's Blade, or even a little bit tankier as a Dorn Shield. But other than that, I think he's playing a well, nice from Fizz in the mid. Look at that, Zeb is gonna get going so low though, as Ignite gets, does have a Swagmaster, is gonna get taken down as well. First blood goes over to Zebit, and Klaus Legend is gonna go for the chase, does a ward hop, doesn't get the auto though, Zebit, can he, is he gonna start back? Does, and look at that, the Sonic Wave comes out. And and the senior breeder is gonna try and stop that though. The wards come pinging out. Aloha is gonna go and try and fight Leo as well. Leo's gonna do a decent amount of damage, but look at that. Aloha is getting that cinder hook. He's getting so light. Goes in for the auto force. Leo's gonna go so close. He's gonna do flashes for the auto and gonna get that kill as well. Oh and two over to Team Teddy Bears. Huge play coming in from from Xebit in that mid lane. Not getting not getting killed from Cloud's Legend. Whoa, what a play. Forcing. Forcing the flash, forcing Malphite to force his flash to get the kill, um, I, it's worth it. But then again, it cannot be worth it. If if Jax comes back and he starts to do a little bit more damage, or say if he gets a gank, um, he might have to burn his ultimate, mm. which could be used for so much better. So ha that flash being gone, that's very important for uh, a very immobile champion like Malphite. 
Definitely. So we'll, we'll see in the next couple of minutes if the flash and the kill was worth it for Maokai top. Mm, definitely. Looks like he's going to be going Sunfire first on Malphite. Not going to be too crazy. But look at that. Zebit misses the chain. Misses misses the distortion as well. Uh, well played by Swag, Swagmaster in that in that trade right there. But yeah, that uh, Frost Queen's claim getting picked up onto Zebit. Huge pickup here. A lot of mid lane players are picking up that item. Let's go see how the vision game is. The vision game is is weak right now. Only blue trinkets is essentially the best in the mid and late game. So really smart to get that frost claim and that early gold. Throws out condemn gets condemned in the wall though. Keyblade Warrior is by is gonna get bit. Lanterns out. But trade going over to the red side, even with that condemn. As they spot out Cloud oh, Lantern. Can't find he's, he's gonna be by himself, throws out for the slingshot, can't he miss it? Does get to land onto Cloud Legend, and the knight comes out, and the damage got Senior Burrito picks up the kill on Cloud Legend. And look at this, Aloha and Leo are back at it at the brawl, but look at a look at Aloha. Just gonna go charge in. Does already have that Sunfire cape built already, so he's gonna nullify a lot. Senior Burrito gets gonna get spot out from that a dive, and Super Inspire is gonna claim that ward. Man, everything's going so well for Team Teddy Bears right now. Yeah, yeah they're definitely having the positioning. They're having the warding. I mean, look, look at this. They have two wards deep into uh, the jungle of blue. Mm -hmm. And they have one right in. by the blue. Yeah, and looks at this. H King mm -hmm. rise. No, looks like there's not going to be a fight in the bottom lane. Oh, man. I, w I would love to see um, the Rider Tat Tat come from... He's already doing massive amount of damage with his contaminate, mm -hmm. but uh, the extended the extended range that his right attack gives him it would it would just demolish Vayne. She would she would stand no chance just because the the short range that she is like she has to build a rapid fire cannon. This Look game at this though. In order to be able to compete. the pillar comes out, you're making me crazy. Gun is getting solo. H King race has to flash away. Keyblade War is gonna go in. Does get that self but the cripple's gonna get it. And then H King rise looks like it goes though. No way. Keyblade War goes on first. H King rise gonna get that kill. Super Spire. Is does it have that chain? Is going to be stalling. LeBlanc is coming away. Same with Senior Burrito. Senior Burrito is going to go for the slingshot. Can he get it? Blast the flash away, but Class Legend is by himself. He's going to go down. Zeb picks up the kill. One and five goes in. But Aloha, look at this. Going on for Swagmaster in the mid lane. Doing a lot of damage with that. But look at this. A 1v2. Swagmaster is so low. Can Aloha catch it? He's going to get it. The playful tricks are out. Aloha has to get out of there. Leo's doing a lot of damage, even with that pickaxe. And Aloha's going to get him. He has to force up. Look at this. is on there. Can he get this? Throws a chain, but misses. But look at that. The double mimic is going to go that end of the autos. is going to claim it. Huge damage. Zebit making a huge play on this LeBlanc. Roaming from bottom and coming back mid. Picking up two kills from that. All right. And yeah. Definitely 94 to 47 huge making a huge impact in this mid lane and Aloha playing that really well getting Swagmaster super low and also had enough to get out too so definitely a very far hit senior burrito and cloud legend looks like they're gonna catch each other out but not gonna be a big deal war comes out from senior burrito looks like he wants to try and take out this Krug from Cloud's Legend does have that vision. Things comes out. He's gonna go out. Nope. Smite goes over to Cloud Legend. So Cloud Legend is gonna get that. But he's by himself though. Looks like he's gonna be caught out. Can he get out? He starts the let's bounce. Gets condemned. Doesn't get condemned in the wall. Does he have that flash? He flashes over, and Cloud Legend is gonna be going on for that chase. Throws out the cripple, cripple, and he's gonna get that slow. And gets the kick back. He's gonna activate the passive, and looks like he's gonna be going down. Spooky Ghost comes out, but Cloud Legend does claim that H King is gonna throw it out. But looks like the fight's still gonna be going on though. No, it doesn't. H King, H King rise by himself. Is he gonna make it out? Throws on the shark. Does land. It looks like H King rise is gonna go down for that. Like condemn into the wall. Jim making me angry. KS in that kill. Scumbag. Jim making me angry. Gonna claim that. But man, Senior Burrito playing too aggressive in that jungle, trying to get Cloud's Legend from the uh from get that jungle creep as well. So definitely should have played that a little bit better. It was still, it was still very thought out. They had a great, they, it was a good plan. To, I mean, look, look at the warden. They had, they have one, Krugs, uh, one in the tri bush, one go, going to the lane. They were well prepared. They even had one, right by um the race, and they they were very well prepared. They knew what they were doing, but they just did not expect the damage to come out from clouds. Did, for sure. It was, it was just a great overall communication coming over from another room. Yeah, but the gold lead is building up now, roughly 3k now, so Team team Teddy Bears is going to have a pretty big lead coming into this next fight. And look at that, HQ oh. race, 155 double, almost double CS, and look at Zebit, Zebit's gold. Let's see here, 
5,700 to 3,300. That is huge. 2,400 gold differential in the mid lane. And in the bot lane, 1,100. It's coming in huge in that. Throws out the distortion. He's just going to get some trade there. Very curious item for Twitch to rush. I, I would not think that Twitch would want to rush a Yomu's Ghost Blade. Um, I get the fact of his Rattata attack can do a lot of damage, especially Fred, uh, especially spread over a massive uh, team fight and coming with his casket. But um, I thought he would want to do a little bit more actual damage, and I have to be based on an item active, mm -hmm. just because the item active does wear off. TP comes in out though. Looks like they're gonna be diving. Malphite is coming out. Just get the box. Throws in flash. Flash on someone before someone to keep it working. Keep it going solo there. A slingshot picks up the kill. Oh, that it's was beautiful. And Ancient King Rise. Getting the kill on it to make me angry. That was so synchronized. They had the TP planned out already. AJ King Rice played that so well. He was just, he was just playing like, you know what? I'm standing in front of y'all. Nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to auto you guys for a little bit. And just baited and him out. And rat -a tat tat And rat -a tat tat Just baited him out. And rat -a -tat. A rat -a tat tat Just like that. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're going to be going for this second tier uh, tower right here. So a little bit more on the Yomus. I the reason why I see Twitch's build is because it's just a quicker early earlier game spike and the, like it's like you said the synergy with the Ratatat. -tat. So it for me I think it's actually mainly for that early early game. You get that easy crit. You get that easy uh, the CDR as well. So it's just a quicker item. Uh, there's the only other item you could probably build is Essence Reaver. Uh, Infinity Edge isn't that isn't as strong. As it was back then, so that's that is the reason why I see switches go Yomus. But yeah, just isn't right now. There just isn't a better option right for Twitch at the moment, except you want to go Hurricane. But <laughs> well, I mean, that's it's still it's still a great option. You still get the massive amount, and no surprise to see a dragon come through come through right here, especially after they took two towers in the bot side. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna already expect them to go back and go for those mid towers and then maybe oh, them. that that and Zeb <clears throat> that was actually very classy. Zeb that was just, classy. Yeah, for sure. Just picking up that kill on a Cloud's Legend. Three and nine. It looks like they're be having their sights on that first tier turret. They're gonna claim it. Four turrets up to zero and one dragon. Huge swing is on. A huge. Control is over onto Team Teddy Bear right now. Pink War comes out, and Sabbath doesn't get that distortion though. Can Swagmaster come out? Swagmaster's gonna get a little bit low, and the hook comes on to Ancient Keyblade oh, Rise. Ancient the shark comes out. Swagmaster going solo. The gate can't even follow up on that shark. Zebit's gonna go in for the double distortion. Doesn't land, but the sigil doing a lot of damage, and the flash goes over from Swagmaster. Man, that sigil chunked him super hard. He knows where he's going. He knows where he's going. Will Zibby be able to catch the Will Zibby be able to catch the fish? Yeah, and Senior Brio is just gonna go in for that fight. Spooky Ghost coming out. Nothing too crazy. Not even gonna follow Swagmaster. Mm. Yeah, but look at this. Mm. No, but this might be another tier, another second tier turret. Yeah, five over. turrets in 17 minutes. That is huge for Team Teddy Bears. That is definitely a huge thing, especially for the especially for the gold spike that they're about to get. Definitely a big increase, and I'm I'm gonna be shocked if they actually don't go for this Rift Herald. Yeah, and look at this though. Looks like a low. Oh, gonna they're going for this bit. other tier tower. He does have a unstoppable force open. He's gonna get hooked. Look, look at this. There, look at this. Aloha saving it. He saved that unstoppable force. Can he go in? Looking for it. The Sidra goes in, gets the double because but it gets he gets get him. He's looking for it. But no, the distortion's gonna go back. Aloha's gonna be trying to bully him out. But man, Zebit being a huge playmaker, 6-0-1. Amazing and look at that. Leo's gonna go is is gonna go down from senior burrito Aloha. <laughs> Overextending a little bit, getting a little bit low, but Super Burrito is Senior Burrito is gonna not senior burrito, um super inspired is gonna take a little bit of that turret for the team. Let's see here. This the Ethereum James gets hooked. Zebit is gonna take that turret. Agro Shark gets landed, but that a uh, force is gonna land on Swagmaster. Zebit is still alive though. And look at that. Zebit really well played. Didn't get that didn't get killed on that. They're definitely just using the, the these plays. They're forcing the enemy team to focus her, and then she just distortions away. The other team just uh, focuses whoever was trying to kill her, and then she just comes back in the fight and says, "Hey, I'm here again." Yeah, it, this is very this is very good plays from from uh, Teddy Bears. They're having really good communication. They're knowing what they need to do, mm -hmm. and they are not afraid to dive these people. They For are sure. not afraid to go 100 percent on them. The sure. slingshots are on point this game. Yeah. Uh, Zach being incredibly huge, creating a lot of moments for his team. 
LeBlanc coming in as the finisher. Twitch also doing an incredible amount of damage uh, for his team with a rat -a tat tat I, I actually, um, I actually, and I commend this Twitch on doing the job he is. He, Twitch is out of meta right now. He's very, um, he, he's very iffy, he's very skill oriented, and I commend this Twitch on the job. Zero chain lands on Leo, though. Leo's so low! Look at that! Just the Ethereal Chains and a Sigil of Malice doing that much damage. Angel King Rise looks like he's been going for that rat -a tat tat No, it doesn't, though. But man, Zebit with that Ravidon's Death Cap and that Frost Queen's Claim doing so much damage has 441 AP at 19 minutes. That is huge. Yeah, that that is that is incredible. I mean, he has already. LeBlanc already has that Death Cap. She has her Frost Queen's Claim. And I'm sure she's going to be going for a Void Staff here. So uh, I'm, you're already going to expect massive amounts of damage to come from her. And then Twitch finishing up that Yomu's going for the Bork as a second item. He's just going to be an unstoppable force. He's going to be able to do a lot of kite as well. And look at this. They're just waiting. They're just waiting for him to check Baron. Look at, can, look at the ward. They have, they have no ward. They're waiting for them to check Baron. They can just do it. They can just but, do it right now if they wanted to. There's no vision in there. Oh, uh, look at this, though. Oh, Jamaican Angry looks like he's gonna be caught out. They see Edge of Kings. Yep, he's gonna be caught out. Jamaican Angry has flash, throws out the hook, goes on to Super Inspired, and yeah, goes back onto Super Inspired. And the slingshot comes in. Jamaican Me Angry looks like he's gonna be going down right here. Edge King Rise with that Yomu's active. Aloha, they're just mm. wait. They're just trying to give it to Edge King Rise here. Jamaican Me Angry. He's gonna throw look out the word. box. And yeah. Look at the ward coverage. For sure. Look at that. Uh, Zibit might go for the Fizz. She sees the Fizz and she's and the Zeb is trying to uh, predict where Fizz is gonna go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where's Leo going though? Leo is on the other side of the map. Is he proxying? He might just be he's proxying. Not... No. Or he. I guess he's just he's just gonna go all the way there and just start backing. But I think at... he was caught out with Thresh. But yeah, I think he's just trying to get away. Yeah, it looks like. But look at this. They're pressuring or... the bo they're pressuring the top tier in him. Keep it warrior has to try and defend this, but it is gonna go down. And the flash and let's bounce goes on. H King Rise with it right at that attack. Keep it warrior going so low. Gets it with the contaminate. And look at that. The BM dancing comes out. And the forfeit comes out from another one. Huge 3 and 15, 24, 25k to 41. That was a demolishing performance from Team Teddy Bears. That was very well played by Team Teddy Bears. I cannot wait to see what other kind of communication that I thought. Another one would have been a would have been much better of a team against this uh, communication. I mean, they both really communicated, but Teddy Bears just came out, man. That slingshot was just unstoppable. They had Trundle in the front line. They had Zach in the front line. They had Twitch with a rat -a tat tat from so far away, and LeBlanc with the assassination. It was just a great team comp overall. Yeah. Um, they knew what to expect. I'm guessing they uh, I'm guessing they did. Their researcher might have even watched last game. They knew what to expect from For sure. another one. Yeah, and even that, I think I think it was I think it was on another one's flaw to essentially pick the same team comp again when um, when Team Teddy Bears picked the Zach. They picked the Zach to get onto the vein, and then they they secured it with that Malphite too. So honestly, picking bands. I think Team Tedbury essentially just won that with their pick and ban uh, phase against another one in this matchup. I can't. I can't wait to see how Team Teddy Bears will uh, will use the mechanics that they have into the next game. I mean, they are very on point. The best play that I think that I, we saw from them was the TP bot lane. Um, that was a Twitch, huge just play. Like, hey, how you doing? That was. That hey, was hey, what's very, up, guys? I'm just gonna, you know, round. just gonna auto attack you guys for a little bit right by turret. They didn't have, uh, they didn't have any vision of Trundle where he was in the tri bush. They didn't have, they didn't even realize where the TP was coming out, and Malphite having that flash too. If you look at the damage charts here, LeBlanc has 11,000 damage and Twitch has 10, almost 11,000 as well. So definitely a lot of damage coming in from the top, from the mid and the bottom lane. Oh, it was, it was very well played, and I I was I was a little bit disappointed to see um, how mid lane was going. I mean, that's a six zero and three LeBlanc, perfect game LeBlanc, perfect game Trundle, perfect game Malphite. Um, Fizz I thought would have put up a little bit more of a battle just because um, his his roam mobility, um, but I we didn't actually get to see any of the mid laners roam. Yeah, we didn't it see. All just, it, I honestly want to see Leo do his best Huni impersonation. He had that like, Quintus built up and ready, but uh, he just couldn't pull it off. It looks like. Uh, it's 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 not about that, man. It's about when it came down to team fight. Did not have the communication. For sure. No, 
<clears throat> they they couldn't really force a team fight either. They they were just so behind in uh, items and gold, and they didn't have this many. Predict. Uh, they could not try to predict what um, Teddy Bears was gonna do next. For but, sure. I mean, when, when we saw Teddy Bears just roaming around the Baron, uh, like they were trying roaming around the Rift Herald, like they were baiting it. Little did Teddy Bears know that. Uh, Another one did not have any wards yeah. whatsoever. No wards. That area. was Teddy Bears really looked super on point in that game, <clears throat> and I think I think you see the 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 dis, the disparity in the mid lane matchup. Zebit going going against Swagmaster. You just see Swagmaster just get bullied out and just get out CS almost double, and even in the bot lane too, just double the CS. Tron, even with that Trundle bot lane, they put it off so well. You you rarely see, like in in this scenario we should rarely see a Trundle lane win that heavily when you can pretty much try and punish him and Trundle can't really go f can only go for traits when he has that pillar up so honestly really really well played from Team Teddy Bears even even before the laning phase started uh, we already kind of predicted that LeBlanc be uh, um whenever we saw. The distortion come out first. We predicted that she would go and do a little bit of the damage before uh, this got to lane. And little did know she got that Thunder Lord's proc off, and it was just going to be instant poke lane. From For sure. For sure. Knowing how weak Fizz is uh, at at the early stages of the game, really, really well played by Zebit in that middle lane. But man, Z I think the MVP this matchup goes over to Zebit. He made such a huge impact on the map, even with that team play from. <clears throat> From uh, Malphite, I think Zebit definitely deserves a reward in this game. Didn't even die once, I'm, I don't even think. Alright, boys. Um, waiting for another key so we can get into another game and be able to give you guys uh, another awesome game to watch. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Oh, I have the Mario theme song stuck in my head right now. <laughs> yeah. Do you do know what's do funny? Do I have do 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 You know what's really funny? I haven't seen a bar get played yet. There may have been bars in the other games that we haven't casted. But man, I just want to see if a bar comes out in these future games. Team Teddy Bear might pull it out. I don't know if they want to stick with that channel, but yeah, I just want to see if there is a great bard in this game. I want to see a moo cow don't bother me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, I, I definitely want to see an Alistair pick into this game. Definitely. Wait, sorry, don't use that. <laughs> yeah, and I think just a little bit. Uh, just gonna talk a little bit about another one. Another one, and uh, and against Team Teddy Bear. The Trundle didn't die, Malphi didn't die, and the Blanc didn't die. Three of their members. Didn't die, and only Twitch and Zack died three times. I think that is huge for their team and how well they played. Oh yes, in incredibly. And I was see that the Blanc didn't die early. Uh, when the Blanc had the Fizz old on her, got a little bit of in the lane. Um, the Fizz to be able to go right back in. I was waiting for it, and then you're like, he's really low. And I look down, I see he's at like 200 health, and I'm just like, what? I know. Honestly, the Blanc played <laughs> super well. She played super well, super safe, um, backed up her team whenever they went in, you know, to go in and they were not afraid to show their team. Yeah. And that that is very impressive for this. I hope they make it to finals. I, I would love to see how they go along. I just want to see if we get that cutie pie game, whatever their, whatever their team was. What was their team name? Like I something have no Something idea. squad. I want to see that game. I want to see oh, cutie pie uh, dominate. Ninja? Ninja the ninja squad or something. I mean, I, I she's giving my best. They uh, lied. Memory. They did. Oh, I'm actually reading a Twitch chat right now. One of a one of the uh, spectators is actually saying they actually didn't have boy boy or I'm a cutie pie. So that's unfortunate. Thanks for spoiling that us, Twitch chat. Yes, thank you. Thank you. The, you know, you know, I down. I was looking so forward to to spectating boy boy and cutie pie, but you know what? I guess we're just gonna call it a night. We're not even gonna spectate them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Later, boys, we're out. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible. All right, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Let's just—we're just gonna call it night, guys. We're not even casting cutie pie anymore. Sorry. <laughs> not.
I mean, we we came here to we came here to cast the pros, guys. <laughs> we only came to cast Cutie Pie and Boy Boy. That was the that was the sole purpose of our casting. All right. All looks, right, guys. Looks um, like we're gonna be pulling up another game right here. All right. It's gonna be pulling up super quickly. We're gonna get the team names out right here as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. All right, so let's look at this. It is Diana top lane versus a ooh Diana mid with a Wook Thresh Lucian bot lane and a Lee Sin jungle versus a. Victor mid with barrier, Rex side jungle, Tom Kench and MF bot lane, and a fire war top. Uh, the bands are Alistair, Mundo, Lulu. Very, very strange bands with Alistair and Lulu. And then for uh, red team, it is Ringar, Kindred, and Callista. Yeah. Hmm. Taking a look at the teams here. So, so team blue is, is we just want to play LOL versus Supernova Scorpio. So definitely Supernova does have that SN, SN logo right before the name. So this is looking like an, an official team, but we just want to play League. Or all diamonds, so we definitely want to see how well that is. A Diana mid, I haven't seen that in forever. Uh, so Godby, um, Godby on Team LGD popularized that Diana mid with that TP, so want to see how well he pulls off that. This name, though, is pulling off that Godby play. Oh man, uh, last time, I remember when Diana first came out, Diana was like incredibly strong, nobody knew what to do. Um, she, she was so broken. A very good count. Oh, she, she was ridiculous. She had, she had, she was able to out, out assassinate every assassin, but also out, uh, was able to out tank everyone except a tank. That's okay, how broken so she was. so look at this guys. When I'm in loading screen, you will see every player has a tier, tier four or tier five. Every one of them. The only person that doesn't have a tier five, four blue team is the Lee Sin. Yeah, these <clears> guys and are. For the red team, it is Fiora and Tom Kent with the. All right, looks like we're just gonna be loading right into the game here. It's gonna be a standard start going on. All right, so, um, seeing as it's a Diana, um mid i mean a wukong top and a fiora top i don't know how that matches um fiora again heavy damage but can negate most of that fiora against wukong so it's it's a little bit interesting so it all it all is based on how uh, randall plays his fiora against uh, uh on how um on how what randall plays against uh lord zakutara's Zakutara. lord zakutara's uh, q because if she negates that Q, all the armor shred is gone, so it doesn't amplify uh, the ultimate, nor does it amplify his, his Nimbus Strike. So if he leads in with a Nimbus Strike, then you should, uh, sh Randall should counter that. But if he leads in with that, uh, with, uh, with uh, Wukong's Q, that's what he should do, cause just because of that armor shred. So, question. What's um, up? Repost. Uh, would that actually negate Wukong's knockup? It wouldn't negate it. It wouldn't negate it for the first part, but it will still get knocked up once she is done with it. So, okay, so yeah, it, it will negate just a little bit of the damage, but the knockup will still go through once okay. she's done with that animation. I was because yeah. I, I know she negates like CC whenever she uses it, like a stun or something like that. So, um, I was wondering like if that would negate his old and come of that. Oh, that'd be so broken. That'd be so broken. <laughs> oh, that'd be ridiculous. Let me just dance around your old. Yeah. You like. Mm -hmm. Black yeah, it looks like it's just going to be a standard start coming in from both sides, though. Nothing too crazy that happened. And, have, and a Rek'Sai coming in, too, from uh, from Spreel. I want to see how well it does. Hopefully against this name, though. This name, though. Going to start Diana off with that shield. not taking uh, Biscuit. Yeah, so it definitely looks like she specced into the Assassin Mastery. And Randall against Zakutara. Not going to be too but crazy. look at the damage coming out from Hope. Yeah. Look at that, the Nimbus Strike comes in, gets that passive. Look at that, they're still going to be brawling though. However, 
However, Randall does have uh, the Corruptor's Potion, so Sustain is going to go towards Randall in that matchup. So Randall is okay to trade, take a, take a little bit of a losing trade in those matchups. But level 2 spike comes in, Butthole Sniffer is going to hit that, Flaying Exhaust comes in, Esten Wolf has to eat him, started off with a Devout first, gets the hook, but he's so low, has to eat that potion. And Esten Wolf makes it out, uh, find my light, uh, this, that level 2 spike going strike. huge, yeah. Look at this, the yeah, fight comes was, in. That was a uh -oh. very huge. Yeah. And look at this, the sustain coming from Randall. She's already at half health, but look at Zakutara. Only at 30% health now. So definitely, Zakutara has to back right here. So you can yeah, see think, this matchup coming. Go ahead. Yeah, I think this fight is always going to be a little bit more um, dam like on the output damage side. Mm -hmm. Just because the fact that she can reposition herself so easily with the lunge. And then um, with, with the... With the ultimate, she will be able to negate the knockup for the most part, and then her ultimate, if she can hit all of those, uh, all of those quadrants on her ultimate, she will be able to do massive healing, not only for herself but for her teammates. So if she can get ahead, it's going to be a very drastic thing for uh, yeah. for red team. Something I got to point out: Zakutara picked up refillable potion, so he might be going into Corruptor's potion to deal with that same amount of sustain. But that is a really interesting pickup. Uh, I don't know how much, he may have had, he may only have enough gold just for that. Could have picked up a ward possibly for for ganks, but you know, really interesting. Has to back so quickly. Didn't get to utilize that gold for something useful. It's no combat stats from that. I want to see how this Lee Sin is going to can come into this game because their team is not something that you necessarily you go into uh, the Victor or the Rexai Ooh. and you get caught out, and that's an instant bullet time from MF. Yeah. Like that's just so much damage that's just going to pounce onto your face. Yeah, and look at this though, Dive might be coming in from the top side. Tengu, Tengu Reaper is looking for that kill. They do spot him, throws out the Sonic Sonic Wave. <laughs> is gonna back. Let's see what happens here. They do have Vinish uh do they do have Vinish of Randall on that top. But looks like nothing's gonna happen. She's just gonna go back. Probably gonna TP back up. But hopeful is gonna be doing out this name though. This name does win out that trade. Nope, there but the death mark equalizes that so Ran hopeful doing well, there is the TP. Yeah. There's a TP. Ran doing a pretty good job. And find my light making it rain onto that bottom side. Nothing too crazy. I love the name of that skill, make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> make it rain. Hopeful. Just gonna go for some Ooh. trade right here. Very nice siphon power. Mm -hmm. Dude, siphon power is actually a really nice um for um, Victor. If yeah. he can go into that Lich Bane, he will do massive amount yeah. of damage just it's from a, using that Siphon power. It's just a one-shot with that Lich Bane. It allows him to one-shot oh, yeah, any Squishy so well. The only thing is that can he get away from it because it's not, there's no defensive stats. It doesn't, it only gives him a little bit of move speed to run away, so it's a greedy build. So when you, if you do, spe if you do a spec into that Lich Bane, you have to, you have to play super defensively and know your opportunities of kill potential. Oh, 100%. And the thing about it is, is that they're both really burst champions, Diana and Victor. Um, so if he's able to get, if he's able to get, um, oh my gosh, look at just as I say burst, she just like almost 100 to zero, uh, essence spir spiral. Like that was a massive amount of damage. She got that level six, and she just went all lunar rush. Yeah. Over, yeah. Over look the, at this. Uh, top lane is out of brawl. Lord Zagutar has to back. That minion wave is too much. Can't fight through that. So. But man, Zagutar putting in a good amount of chains onto Randall, but Randall CS is winning is winning this lane. 26 to 41. Huge. But team is made up for uh for Sir Wolverine uh fighting against Find My Light in that bottom side, so it's gonna be equal equal fights. But look at the CS difference right now. We have uh, a fifty one Lucian to a thirty five MF. He's gonna back, get a BF, and maybe even boots. For sure, for sure. And that, and he yeah, I was gonna say this. I was gonna say uh, this. This name though has a level six. So once she has that, definitely easy trade. But look at that! The death ray doing all, all the way, almost half damage with that Thunderlord's decree getting procked off. So once the fight comes out from the top lane, looks like are they gonna continue the fight? Lord Zagatara yeah. throws out the grand challenge. Cycle has to come up from Lord Zagatara. Has to flash away. But man. Lord Zagutai being a little bit antsy right there. Thought he was going to fight, but it looks like he didn't want to, so. 
Yeah, once once he saw that old woman got dropped down on him, he, I'm out of here. For sure. For sure. Hope, Hope was trying to... Just going to try and poke out this name, though. 57 to 53, so this name is going to get that CS, uh, CS lead just a little bit. 60 to 53. I think a huge thing, too, is that Spreel is dominating the jungle in CS. 16 to 28. Oh wow, that's yeah, three, massive. 300 gold ahead in that too. But the thing is that the gold is neutralized just because of the differential from that bottom lane. 65 to 45. So Wolverine making a really good name for himself with the CS and his bling. 5 9 light, only level 5 too. And look at this, they have their sights on Dragon. Pings come out though, Rek'Sai is going to detect him with his vision. But I'll sniffer, going to try and go for that. But... I don't. Th I don't think blue team is gonna care about that because throw it on the on the Lucian. They have boots and they can prepare for this. Oh, and he does get a hook. <coughs> yeah, but look at I, that. I don't think that they're gonna try to force anything at the moment. Yeah, nothing too um, crazy is happening. The game and neither jungle. Neither jungle has died. Yeah, neither jungle has done. Yeah, it. it's all just. They're all just both currently powerful. I mean, nothing too open. Spreel does have that EXP advantage and just turn level 6 though, so map pressure is gained for for Supernova, so so it does look at that. Waiting for that gank. Will he do it? Really? Zagatar is going to go in for the trade. Look at that damage! Just a, just a Q and then auto attacking the weakness. Uh, What? The weakness onto Zagutara, what's the passive called again? Completely forgot. Onto Zagutara? Yeah. What, the uh, duelist oh, the, dance? Oh, yeah, the vitals, the vitals, yeah. Just getting that damage onto the vitals. <clears throat> yeah, with um, with her mobility, I think Wukong's going to have a hard time trying to uh, keep up in damage with her, even though he has a damage striking. Uh, she just still has a lot of mobility. And she can even negate his ultimate first starter point of it and cause a soul of herself. Mm -hmm. So and look at this, Randall wants to fight though. Look at that! Look at that. What a bad, bad trade from Zaku trying to go into that. Looks like Tango Reaper is off to the side though. Looks like they want to force something. Look at that! The cycle comes out, but doesn't hit Randall. Randall is, just walks away from it. Really, uh, uh, some miscommunication coming in from Tengu and Lord Zakutara on that. And the Hulk lands on a fire my light though. And there's so many strikes coming in. We have to cover the top line. Randall's gonna go on to Tango Reaper and Spree is gonna go on, but the flash gets forced out and it looks like Fire My Light is okay. And Butthole Sniffer gonna get a little bit of a trade, but this is my this is my name though is gonna go into hopeful the Chaos Ring comes out and the Crescent Strike comes out. This is my name is gonna get a little bit poked out. The Death Ray comes out. The Flash Cyber Strike gets first blood. Oh my God! Hopeful plays that so well. Had a Flash gets that Cyber Strike and look at this. A Wolf is on the Butthole. Butthole Sniffer is gonna go down and the Cone comes out. Activates the Shield. Not gonna get any killed, but man, what a great play from Hopeful onto this. Is my name though. And that is first blood, and that's a big first blood because that goes on a Victor. Victor now has the ability to build damage, but it looks like he's gonna go into a Morella now. Yeah, it looks like he's going into that. That's really strange. Usually you don't really see that, but Spreel on the backside of the bot lane. Is he going to go in? No, he's just going to go and scare off Wolverine and Butthole Sniffer. Funny name coming in from this Thresh. Definitely want to see how well it does. It's going to ease up ease up this bottom I don't lane. Think, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a very high lane. Uh, <laughs> just by the way that they're playing passive, this is definitely going to come down to team fight. Yeah. Um, no, there no no team is being too aggressive. No team is forcing uh, anything that needs to be too aggressive either. Yeah. They're both they're they're both uh, very cautious. Yeah, they're playing this really smart. This is my name though is going to go into hopeful. Hopeful is going to go try and get it. Gets the gets the uh, crescent strike onto it. This is my name though is going to get slowed from that and it throws out that like look at that the hopeful barrier comes out. This is my name though is going to go down, but no, no this is my name is going to go to hopeful kills him. Oh man, the barrier just saving just enough. This is my name. Not having enough damage only has that Phoenix Codex and that Stinger. So even, even if uh, even in Hellful did not use that. Barrier. Oh, Randall's going so low with the Grand Challenge comes out. Can he get that passive? He has to get that passive in order to win. He's gonna go down. He has to flash away. Randall's so close. Doesn't get that word. And uh, Lord Zagutar is gonna get gonna get the kill. Well played by Zagutar, even with that. And he actually caught up in CS 71 to 75. What happened there? Holy crap! Zagutar picked up his game. But looks like it's the clone, man. Yeah, looks like yeah, looks like Supernova is gonna claim this dragon right here. This man name might catch him out. Nope, just gonna go and place that ward. So first dragon goes over to Supernova. 
Gold is tied though, even with that first blood, 16.8 to 16.9, sorry, to 16.7, so not that big of a difference. And Rando's gonna go on to Zagutara, but not gonna cause anything. Spreel defending this mid lane. Yeah, very low kill game compared to the other two we've casted. They're very, they're playing very safe, very conservative, and they're use, they're taking a lot of calculated risks in in this game. Oh yeah, they they're definitely being cautious about what they do, where the champions are, initiate things. I think Diana, like like she is right now, she's being a little bit too um, aggressive. I think she's being a little bit too aggressive whenever she goes in for these plays because she's using that Luna Rush off of her Q. But it's not doing the damage that she wants. Mm -hmm. So what she needs to what she needs to do is she needs to farm up a little bit, try to get the damage, um, and then she try to force those massive plays. Either do that or run down bot lane, where they're not building against her, and she can just do mat. She can burst that MF so easy, mm -hmm. and she can make a play for her bot lane, or she can go top and burst Fiora and help the Wukong out a little bit. I think that's how she needs to go around uh, to play this game more. That's yeah, how look she, I at think that. she's going to get that. Look at that, Randall. It's taking the damage from Wukong's Q. Doing a lot. Yeah, she has to uh, She has to repost that. She has to repost uh, Lord Zagatara's Q, like I said. Look at that. Using Dan the lunge defensively. Mm -hmm. that, that right there is a, that's showing that it's a scared fire war. Oopsies. She, um... She has the damage, she has the ability to come back into a fight, but the way that he's poking out with his Nimbus is just incredible. Mm -hmm. um, he's doing a lot of damage, he has the Tiamat. And look at this though, Randall's going against Zagatara, Zagatara's going to throw for the repose, misses though! Zagatara's going to go and throws up the Cyclone, and R Randall's going to go down, Zagatara 2-0 and oh in this lane matchup, he's coming back with a vengeance, with that CS differential, doing so well into Randall, Randall's Fioro, so... Definitely a top lane disparity coming out now. Alright, now here here's the difference. We have Look at Spreel though. Oh. Oh. Spreel's gonna be going in for again though. Gets a knockup on Butthole Sniffer. And the Tongue Lash lands on a Butthole Sniffer, but not gonna be crazy. But yeah, nothing too crazy. Nah. It was, that, was, that was gonna be some action in the bot lane, but nope. Now, now here's the difference between the two teams. They have a 2 0 Wukong who can do assassination moves, and then they have a 2-0 Victor, who can actually stop assassination moves with the, um, with the use of his gravity field. Like, if, if he's able to catch Wukong, if he can, um, what is it, if he augments, if he augments the gravity field, he can stop Wukong in his tracks and even pull him away from his team. So, I'm really, I'm really excited to see how Victor is going to come out and to, um, into the into the team fights with the lane for uh, sure the team with the cyclone engage mm, for sure yes yeah, interesting pickup so so regards to how Victor built you usually see uh, just a, just the uh, lo the level up on his uh, hex core and then you go into Ioni and boots mm -hmm. Lucidity for that cooldown reduction so it's very interesting how hopeful instead of going uh, Lucidity he optimized he went for the Merle and Nobcon and then for the boots he went to Sork so um, it's it's um, it's okay. It's not uh, so in regards to cooldown. It's a, it's better, and early game damage. It's also better as well. But oh, who comes on to find my light though? But it's gonna eat him. But yeah, going back into how how uh, Victor builds. So you just lose out on damage in the later in the later game because the uh, the other f uh, f what five items you'll have are essentially kind of like a needlessly large rod item. So you just, you're oh. just kind of losing out on that. So that's just the difference between Merlin and Amicon and Sorks versus uh, Lucidity boots. Well, I mean, in the same aspect, Lucidity, um, I, I guess Morella Namakon gives him the ability to be able to have um, the mana regen as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lucidity boots would just. Spear's getting cut out, though. Spear's getting cut out. Hopefully, throws out the Chaos Storm. Spear's getting so low. Can this name get through it? Throws out, gets the knockup. And this name throws out the crest strike. It's so low. Can he get one more than the Nimbus Strike? Because the Sagutar gets the kill. But Sagutar is also getting low from the Siphon Power. Randall comes in for the. For the lunge, and then lunge comes out, and sh the shutdown goes over that to Hopeful. Hopeful is gonna get that siphon power and get that, and then but bottom bottom turret, Sir Wolverine gets that bottom turret. So Trey goes over. Randall still wants to fight. Though. Look at the damage coming in from this name though. Tangu Reaper kills him, gets the ki gets the chaos. But man, Randall very underpowered. 0 and 3, only got that assist. Definitely underestimating this name. Uh, this name those damage on that Diana. So. 
uh, 100%, but also did not expect Luis and um, was, I think, was looking a little bit too hungry right there, trying to force something that wasn't need, that didn't need to be forced. And the Lucian just like came in and gave a foot to the face. For sure, and for said sure. No. Yep. So they definitely need to keep. They need to keep the way they should, uh, the way they've been playing. Pyro needs to keep playing um, the more conservative way how they started. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the key to that because if she keeps going the way this she is, uh, that's a three zero. That's a three and one Wukong. Yeah. Which they're. This is going to be a struggle between who can carry harder a victor or a wukong yep for sure for sure because victor got all that shutdown gold he got <laughs> he got that gold and he gave his team a little bit of an edge but still that wukong is very very dangerous he's he's building armor against the fire he can he can 1v1 fire he's not afraid for sure for sure yeah if that wukong and, gets yeah if that wukong gets into the back line onto that mf that's gonna be devastating for supernova Oh yeah, and that's that's what I'm excited to see how. Uh, that's why I'm excited to see how Victor's gonna. Oh, the damage here. comes out, but this name though. Oh man, this name though. Just disrespecting the damage from Hopeful. Hopeful is four and oh. Should just play that a little bit safer, but this name will have that natural. He thought he and could take it, but fight coming in from Randall. Oh, Randall's gonna go in, but fight also coming in. Joe's right side. Butthole Sniper's gonna get so pretty low. The con the damage comes out. The box comes out, and then the bullet the bullet time is gonna go from. Uh, by my light, and the hook comes on to Spreel, but Wolf is gonna take it. But Hose never takes the hook all the way down into the team, and he's gonna get a, he's gonna die. <laughs> he had the I think I can mentality for that, but no, he did not. He's gonna get taken down. Dragon looks like is gonna be going over to Supernova. Are they gonna take this? Looks like Wolverine is going to try and take that. No, Tango Group is trying to go for that steal though. He's getting solo. He has a flashback out. He can, they can he cannot try and take this anymore. He went so low drag. Second dragon is gonna go over to Supernova. Five dragon play is gonna be going over towards Supernova side. So let's see how well they utilize that. Dude, the only thing I thought about when Thresh land, my mind's telling me no, <laughs> but my body, my body's telling me yes. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. The only thing that came into my mind. For sure. And, was just, and whatever I saw, I'm just launching. I knew. I'm done. You always so, gotta love the those hooks, those resonating strikes, where they go in where they didn't plan to, and they go all the way into the enemy team. Oh, and what's even funnier is that he went further than we thought he did. For the sure. The power spit him out. Yeah. Like, the, the battle. <laughs> he spit funny. out, spit out Spreel, <laughs> and because Spreel was, was already on the other side, it went, he went all the way over there, not even to Wolf, all the way over to Spreel, so. Butthole Sniffer really wanted to sniff Spreel's butt, it looks like. <laughs> oh, 100%, dude. He was all over the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But, so far, it's been a really good game, and I think... I think they're, they're really going to try to protect Victor, um, along with uh, earlier whenever Dinosaur tried to force the kill, um, that again went to the gravity field. The gravity field it got augmented, he did do it, and she did not take into consideration of the gravity field. She stayed, he stayed right in the middle of it, and right whenever, um, right whenever she went in, she got stunned, and that's how he was able to do his damage. For sure, for sure. Yeah, but definitely, uh, hopeful being the bigger, big playmaker on their team, Randall definitely needs to step up. Randall against uh, against Zagutaro. Randall did have the edge in the early early game, did have that CS lead, but Zagutaro with a little bit of a jungle pressure claimed that, and now is now three and one. Find my light. Just going to go ahead and CS that. Yeah, really slow yeah, tempo I, game. I, oh, but look at the word, look at the difference in warding red team. Have the entire jungle warded. Just about the only other word I think they're missing is right above the red buff. Yeah. Three pink wards. They have three pink wards picked up simply. on on Supernova side. It's like huge. they they know they know that they need to keep this uh, warded. They know they need to keep fighting, um, but they have the upper hand. They have a little bit of wards around bear. I think that's sufficient enough. And and just to say the least. They're all wards that could be killed with one strike, pretty much. Yeah, and hopefully, look at that! The Chaos Storm doing so much damage! Forces out Sir Wolverine, but Zuckerstar goes back in! The Cycle doing so much damage! Final love is gonna go down, but this, but this is my, this is my name that's gonna go down from Randall. Randall is gonna go claim it, and Lord Zagutaro is trying to chase Hopeful, but Zagutaro is gonna go down, and they're gonna get the Grand Challenge, uh, 
a what active coming out gonna heal the entire team two for zero trade so far and the push is gonna be going on wolf is gonna devour spreel mm -hmm. just is gonna wolf's gonna get hooked though butthole sniffer is gonna play him t tango reaper is gonna go in for that resonating strike but not gonna do uh plenty of damage but man really really great uh reaction from hopeful and final light to get away from zakutara yeah, that was, that was really followed, and again, with the gravity, that's what stopped Wukong. If Wukong wouldn't have got stuck in the gravity field, he wouldn't have been able to pick up the kill on Victor, and maybe even change the fight entirely. Um, but very well played by Victor to know what to do, know how to react, and very well played by his team to back him up with him. That oh, and TP, TP, TP's coming out here. from Lord Zagutaro. Lord Zagutaro is going to try and go and find my life, but look at that, it's a 1v3 though. Turret's almost down, and they are going to get that. Looks like they're going to try and keep up that push. But look, no, Randall's going to go down as well. He's still going solo, and the and Tango Reaper is going to take the resting strike all the way to Wolf devours Misfortune. Find my light's going to get pulled back, back in. The double kill comes out, and then Lord Zagutai is going to take that third kill. Man, greedy play coming in from Supernova, trying to take that turret. Just didn't, didn't I guess, didn't see the death timers from the uh, opposing team. I, I don't think that was necessarily the worst. Um, oh, that was that. Yeah, they yeah, they they are up in objectives. I think that as long as they can keep grouping, uh, red team. As long as they can keep grouping, I think the uh, way they need to go about it is, of course, these small things. They need to stay as five. Otherwise, Wukong is going to come in and just everybody. Yeah. The thing is that so, though. The thing is that um, I just want to play LOL. They still have the gold lead, thirty-six point nine to thirty-five point nine. Lucian is doing really well. Hasn't participated in the fight though because he did get knocked out from that previous fight with that chaos storm. I want to see how I want to see how Soul Wolverine does in these next fights if he doesn't get poked out from Hopeful. Yeah, I I can't wait to see that. Either. I want to see a fight where Lucian's actually in the fight as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have the rapid fire cannon. He does have the extra extra range on his auto, auto attacks. So let's see if he's going to be able to stay in the fight. Let's see if he's going to be able to back up and go into and go in with the damage that he did. It's his team desperately. Needs. And look at this! Fine Light's going to get caught up by Sir Wolverine. Wolverine's going to pick up that kill right there. And man, a little bit greedy for Fine Light to just go ahead and push that up a little bit too far when they didn't have that vision control. They only had vision up blue, so a little bit greedy from Fine Light to try and push that lane up. Yeah, they def they definitely they had no idea. That blue team was going to be chasing around the MF, and that might even be a free dragon, which mm -hmm. is going to spawn here in 20 seconds. Yeah, look at that. Final Light is going to be up for that next dragon, but might not make it if they were to fight. So, blue team is getting getting ready for this for their first dragon of the game here. Sir Wolverine's going to take that red buff. Look at this vision control is coming out. I don't, I don't think that red team is going to let them go without a fight. I yeah, think that, um, they're definitely going to try to contest. No, it looks. Let's see here. I just want to play LOL. They're 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 trying to do a standoff. Looks like a real Mexican standoff right here. Zagutar's gonna go playing it onto Sir Hovel. Hovel's gonna go down. The cycle comes out. No, it does not. Zagutar's going super low, and the bullet time comes out from oh, Find My Light. Super time. well played. But look at that. Chaos Storm gets blown. Doesn't hit anyone. That is a huge huge two ultimates down for the next fight. Zagutar still has that cyclone available. So definitely want to see how well they play this. Dragon gets started by Supernova. Hopeful is, is going to be taking it, but look at this. But Butthole Sniffer is going to be trying to lean the pack. So, Resting Strike gets up. The hook comes on to Wolf, though. They're not going to go in. No, they're not. But look at this. Supernova. They know. They know that their ultimates are down. They cannot try and fight this right now. Just because uh, Zagutar has that Cyclone, they, Zagutar can always start that fight with a massive AoE. And, but look at that. They gave up the dragon. They they were just too scared of Zagutar's Cyclone. So really safe, really safe play from Supernova. And uh, honestly, really good play from I just want to I just want to love LOL to stick around for that dragon because of Zagutara Cyclone. They know that they're gonna back. I'm really surprised they didn't see a Baron call here, but they're gonna try to push mid, and they might even turn for a Baron. We don't. It would be really, really interesting to see how they play this. We do see them going to their jungle, so let's see. Let's see if they do make the call. Yeah, let's see here. They're gonna take out that blue buff. Gonna claim that. Oh, they actually might give up Baron here because MF is. Without without their ADC there, that's gonna be a four v five in favor of uh, just want to play LOL. Yep, and then so real. Let's just see how they'll come about this. All right, look at this though. Looks like they're gonna start the they Baron. Are starting. Looks yeah. like they're starting the Baron, and and looks like at that though. But look at that. Hopeful's not even apart. Not Hopeful's not even close yet. They have to wait for Hopeful if they want to start a fight. 
Look at that. The wards are coming out. But Hostnum is going to take a little bit of damage. Spiro is going to go for the... He's going to be the, the dragon. The bear's only at 2k health. The dragon goes on. Spiro solo. He has... He's going to get taken down by Sir Wolverine. The bear's going to get solo. Cyclone is going to... Uh, Zagatar is going to start the Cyclone. And the smite goes over to Tango Reaper. Tango Reaper is going to get that. And Hopeful gets gets hooked. The, the Hourglass comes out. Five My Light's going to get taken out. And Sir Wolverine takes him out. Rando activates the Grand Challenge. Zangutaro solo is going to activate. He does activate. But Rando, you're by yourself. Why would you go back in? And he's going to get taken out. Hopeful has, act has, act has to activate the barrier. Oh, and look at that. He gets a shot down onto that. But, but this my name, though, flashes and goes in for that Lunar Rush and gets that. The Baron does go over to this my name, though. So, really, really smart plan to call for that Baron when they saw Hopeful all the way back at base. So, super, super smart. And it was it was very well played by two towers, maybe two towers. Tomkins is right there, and Rexai is right on his tail. For sure, for sure. And look at that two turrets coming from that huge Baron play. And it might actually be three. They have a big wave pushing top lane. If they wanted to, they could force that wave top. For and sure. And try to push that one, but nope. Looks like they're just gonna back out. So have a huge advantage now. Six K ahead. Let's let's look at this. There's a three three one Lucian with two hundred and forty CS at twenty minutes in game. He is playing very well. He is positioning correctly. He knows how he knows how to use it. and uh, I am not I am not surprised to see any uh, mechanics coming out from any of these players. Any, like wrongly, they all have tier four, tier five players, uh, champions with um, players with these champions. So mechanically I'm not surprised to see yeah, and look at this. Um, this name though is gonna start off that split push. This is the <coughs> this is the Godby strat where you start split pushing with that with that TP because you have that Nash's tooth, and this is what you're gonna do. You're, because you're so you're so good at taking out that turrets with your passive. That's what he's gonna do. But Spiro's gonna go and defend that. Looks like he's gonna try and fight under the turret though. But find my light is gonna come out making it rain. Gonna get that slow. Looks like they still want to fight. Gets that slow. No, it looks like they're just gonna push off this my this name though. And yeah, they're gonna, are gonna get the hook on a Spreel. Spreel's gonna go over. And look at that. Wolverine doing so much damage. <laughs> Unnecessary call, but you know what? It's just gonna go with that oh. rotation towards bottom side. And Zagutara. This. They have Wukong at the top just trying to push mm. that turret. Yeah. Classic split push strategy right here. This name, though, isn't a part of anything, though. He's gonna rush towards uh, the bottom side. Possibly claim that blue. That blue is up. So we just want to see how hopeful can defend this. The Baron empowered minions is going to take a little bit. The TP comes t comes up from this name though. No, it's actually from Zakutara. I apologize. And looks like they are going to claim that the Castor comes out. Hopeful has his armor, but he's by himself. He looks like he's going to be going down right here. The hook comes on a wolf. Wolf devours, and looks like they're both going to be going down. The bullet time comes out, Ooh. and this name though kills kills S and Wolf, and the the hourglass comes out. And but Sir Wolverine is going to take that tower aggro. Find my like gets the claim gets the kill on him. And Tango Reaper looks like he was DC'd. He was just standing there, so don't really know what happened there. And yeah, look at that. Tango Reaper did DC. Butthole Sniffer is going to go down. This name, though, is going to kill him. And this name's also going to get the shutdown onto Hopeful. So, a little bit awkward. I wonder, surprised how we didn't see a pause yet. Yeah, no, it's, uh, they, he came back. Oh, there you go. It There's was, a reconnection. Yeah, it was confirmed into uh, chat that he did DC, but it was the Lucian that just reconnected. Okay, all right, and Randall, getting a lot of kills from that skirmish, four, five, and four now. Spear's gonna go in for that chase. He's looking for this name though. Throws it out, comes in for the charge, and oh my oh. God, this name! Holy cow! The Q into the Lunar Rush, huge. Press the strike into Lunar Rush. So much damage. Unexpected. Even I didn't expect that. Man. This name, though. You obviously know how to play your Diana. 7, 4, and 7. Huge. Um, what is it? Very little MR build. It just now got a, um... He just now got a Spectre's Cow. He just now got some MR. Diana, since they started winning their team fights. Ever since that ban... Ever since the team fight before ban, they got big. For sure, and he needs to be able to build some MR. He's the, only and yeah. they need to start building against the Diana because she is becoming very first heavy. She just hundred to zero that Rexi. That was insane. 
and the, with the way that uh, the way that they've been fighting lately, they, uh, they need to be able to force uh, the chaos storm, and then bullet time. They need to be able to have combined ultimates. And look at that, the one on one from this this name though onto Rando. Rando, can he get the damage? He's getting that. Look at that, Rando's actually winning the duel. Gets the grand challenge off, but the hourglass comes out. Damn, fight's gonna be having out on the drag side. Wolflex is gonna be going down. The shutdown. Rando gets the shutdown on this name though, and the bullet time comes out. Five mile eight. Zakuchar is gonna activate the cyclone. Gets it onto the back line. TP comes final from Rando. And Spiel's gonna go down from Wolverine. And no, Tangy Ruby's gonna claim that claim that kill. But look at that, Rando's off to the side. Hopeful is is off. Didn't even didn't even participate in that fight for a little bit. So, man, unfortunate. Quick pick up on a wolf, too. So, honestly, really well played from, from I just want to play League. So, they are just playing League. They're just, yeah, they're trying to win. That's all they're doing is just playing League. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Looks like they're gonna be going to be pushing this bottom tier. Randall has to be. It's only Hopeful. Can Hopeful defend this? Wolf is up. And Randall is on his way to defend this, this turret. But it is going to be claimed... War comes out, Death Ray comes flying, he's not gonna hit anyone, and they're just gonna back away with a 10k, with a 9k gold lead now. Oh, that, that, is an, that is huge, that is a huge gold lead. But let's let's see what they'll do, because Baron is up in 40, 45 seconds. Baron's gonna spawn, let's see if they're gonna try to risk the, um, if they're gonna try to risk the throws by going for another Baron, or if they're gonna try to bait it out. Um, for sure. I think, I think honestly, Red Team needs this Baron. They need it. They need to be able to have control. They need um, to have vision of where the Wukong is before the spice starts. Because if they have vision of that, and if they have vision of that Diana, the two people who can access to that backline, Supernova has a chance. But if they don't have, if they don't see their flanks, if they don't see that coming, I just want to play LOL is going to take this game. Supernova definitely have a great team fight ability with the with the gravity field, with the bullet time. They have everything. But Wukong, Wukong. Guardian Angel. Yeah, that Guardian Angel is huge, even if he were to die in the back lane. He can just go in there and die, but as long as he gets the Cyclone off, he'll be fine. He'll win that team. And look at this, the split pushing coming out. The split push is coming out from Diana. Randall is going to be reacting from this name, though. They're just going to and pressure the Baron. But look at this, Butthole Sniffers looking for a hook. Going to get the hook, misses the hook, doesn't get anything. <laughs> And and this name though, respecting Randall Spior's dueling potential, <clears throat> not gonna fight him in that. Just gonna try and poke. Spior's is gonna clear some wards, and they have their, they just rotated right down to the mid lane. And this name though, slowly chipping at this inhibitor um, turret. Are they gonna react? Look at that! The rotation's coming in from the yeah, they, bottom they're side. Gonna, they're gonna react, but both teams. Spear's gonna be going on to this name though. This name's gonna get it's gonna get a little bit damaged. The hook comes out. Zagatar's on the back line. Look at the damage from Zagatar. He has that GA, so it's not gonna be happening. Zagatar is gonna ki kill Five My Light. The coin comes out. Zagatar is gonna go down, but he has that GA. He's active. I just wanna play LOL. It's gonna be pushing up. Spear's gonna go up, and Zagatar is gonna go down from Hopeful. Hopeful is gonna get that shunt down. Spear's gonna. Uh, Wolf is, is going to eat Devour Spear, but uh, Hook comes on a Hopeful. This name, though, is going to Lunar Rush and oh. kill him. And Tango Reaper is going to kill Wolf as well. Looks like it's a four or more up. Only Randall and Spear is going to be defending. Can they defend this? It's only two. The exhaust comes on to Randall. Randall's going to repost. And look at this. Spear just wants to get in, but he cannot. He has to get into all of them if he wants to defend this. And this name is going to go into Spear. Randall's going to go try and do Wolverine. Wolverine's going to get the Grand Challenge. And Randall's going to go down. Sir Wolverine's still alive. It's only Spear left. Can he defend this? Looks like they cannot, all four of them are still alive. So Wolverine is going to do some damage. going to try and pull him off from that fountain. That's and look crazy. at this. It looks like this is GG. Flash is coming out from Tengu Reaper. Flash comes from this name, though. And this game goes over to I Just Want to Play LOL. That was a beautiful game. Very well very well played by the Diana to come back, to not get tilted, to be able to have the confidence to know their team is going to come back and help win it in 5-9. For sure. For sure. And... And she was getting dominated and lame by that big day. It was very, it was a very hard thing to watch, but um, they ended up coming out on top. They ended up doing what they needed to do, and they came back and won. I want to play LOL. Came back and won that game for sure. Honestly, Zakutara, I think Zakutara, huge playmaker for that team. Going, finding the right opportunities to get to that backline and cyclone both, hopeful and this uh, and find my light. Right there, huge play from Zagutaro in that. Yeah, um, it, it was definitely a great game to watch. Um, 
Now we're just waiting on the key for the next one. Yeah, for sure. I just want to take a little bit more about that game too. So, if you look at uh, so, um, so let's see. I will be right back. I need to get some more water. Give okay. me one moment, please. All right. Yeah. So I just want to take a look. Look. Take a look a little bit in that game. So, so you see here in the early game, Fiora won CS against Wu Kong, but Wu Kong he actually farmed a little bit of the jungle. Took a uh, counter jungle a little bit from that Rek'Sai, and he came back with that. And also Tengu provided a little bit of jungle pressure for for uh, Zakutar as well on his Wukong. So that's actually how he came back. And then just there was just one duel where he had against Fiora, and he straight up won just because he played the clone so well that Fiora lunged and attacked that and, and attacked that while Wukong was getting ready to Cyclone. So honestly, really well played by that Wukong in that duel to get him ahead. And then even that CS, eventually winning that CS. And also Diana just picking picking up, playing that playing the mid game so well. Diana does have a poor week Poor early game, so Diana really, really good job to pick up that playing the mid game very, very well. Starting off that split push as well, and and credits to the bot lane for essentially winning that lane. As you can see, Misfortune and Tom Kench are one and six and one and five. Even with that Tom Kench pick, Lucian and Thresh played that level two so well that literally won them the lane. Gave them a good 10 at 15 CS lead. And then just snowballed from there. Got that rapid fire. The only hiccup was that the only hiccup from from I just want to play LOL was a couple fights in the early game where Lucian wasn't a part of that. Where because because Lucian got uh, got almost 100 to zero from hopeful hope from hopeful's victor. So honestly, well played by both. But I just want to play LOL played their team comp perfectly. They knew their game plan. They knew their win condition was Wukong and Diana gets that back line. And then Lee Sin, Thresh, and Lucian just just stay front. If, Lu if Lee Sin has to kick Fiora away, he will. As long as they don't get too close onto that victor, they'll be fine. And that's where Wukong and Diana come in. They try and they try and soak up the damage. And also Wukong built GA so early that he was allowed to die. If he did die, it doesn't matter because he, as long as he got off that cycling, as long as he got off the knockout, maybe even claim a kill, which he did in that last fight. That's what won him the game. Victor didn't have a chance at Hourglass. So huge play, and also Misfortune's bullet time wasn't even effective just because she was so behind in CS and in kills. So definitely, definitely, I just want to play LO. Played to their win conditions very, very well. And now we're just going to be waiting here. And now we're just going to be going into the next game. All right. All right, and I'm back. All right. Let's take a look here. In the lobby? Yep, we are in lobby. It's nice. gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be a uh, supernova. Oh, look here. It's it's. This is ow. Oh, this is supernova. Sis. It looks like it's gonna be the other team from supernova. Let's see here. So that was. Uh, so this team was. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Uh, supernova Scorpio. So this. Uh, so this is supernova. Super, so this is Supernova Ares. Supernova Ares trying to get that revenge on to I just want to play LOL. We'll see how well they do. <laughs> let's see if Supernova will go for let's see if Supernova will go for the revenge on their sister team. Man, I really want. I really how I want to see how S and A a Supernova uh, Ares revenge against Supernova Scorpio. It's gonna be. I just want to see what happens here. Hmm. <laughs> and we're just reading in chat here. They, I don't know, man. If, if Ares have that confidence to take that revenge onto, I just want to play LOL. They definitely can't. It's all. They're all just a bunch of diamond players. So, really want to see what they do. <clears throat> I'm going to expect a Wukong ban. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Possibly, yeah. yeah. You definitely see that coming out. On to Lord Zakutara. And let's see here. So, super, so just taking a look at uh, what Supernova... <laughs> so I just want to see what Supernova had on their bans. They banned uh, Supernova Scorpio, sorry. They banned Rengar, Kindred, and Callista. 
So I just want to see if Super Yeah, very Nova, yeah. very strange bands. It's it's okay. The Callista was the one that is a little bit uh, odd. I don't know if Sir Wolverine actually plays that. If, if, if uh, Sir Wolverine plays that and is really great at it, that could be a pocket pick that they want to ban. But, yeah. If they want to ban out that Lucian, if they want to ban out Zagutara, the only thing was that, even with, so the reason why, the reason why uh, I just want to play LOL 1 was because they played their team, they played to their team wins really well. Zagutara got onto that backline really well. Same with this name though. And the thing is that, the thing is that uh, Supernova Scorpio just didn't have enough peel. They only had the they only had Tom Kitch, but Tom Kitch can only eat one of them. So that is the only reason. That is the reason why this played well to the team composition. Yeah, that was that was really well played by them. All right, are you ready to are you ready to start going to pick a band? Oh, never mind. Silver, yes, I am ready. Not yet. It looks like Silver Silver Wolverine is gonna have a little bit of a break here. <clears throat> Definitely want to see how these pick and bands are doing so let's see here hmm. so I'm just gonna go and take a look at all of these players here I'm assuming Gunslinger is the AD because his name is Gunslinger. It'd be weird if he was the mm -hmm. mid laner, but we'll see what happens. I want to see what these role what they're going to be playing here and what champions they have. Mm. All right, beautiful. So I believe we're in what the quarters. It does, yeah, I'm pretty sure we are in the war in the quarters now. So definitely want to see how well this team does. Man, it'd be it'd be a great story if Ares <coughs> manages to revenge revenge win against. I just want to play LOL because because Scorpio lost. <coughs> we are ready. So they are ready. Are you ready as well, Crip? Yes, I am ready. All right, perfect. Casters are ready. All right, just gonna be waiting once they go ahead and start that game. <laughs> Lord Zagutara, we're waiting on you to start that game here into Champion Select. <clears throat> All right. Can you hear? Let's see, you guys have a room leader. We're, <laughs> we're just waiting. Alright, there you go. Champion Select is going to get started. Let's see the bands here. So, I just want to play LOL on the blue side. Supernova <coughs> Aries on the red side. So, first band comes out. Are we going to see the Mundo band from the blue side? It is going to be rare, but let's see what their first band is. The LeBlanc immediately coming at the Diana getting banned immediately from Supernova Aries. They are afraid. They apparently are afraid from this name, though, is Diana. He was a huge impact at, at the mid-game. His, his early game was a little bit lacking, but he did definitely pick it up in that mid -game, in those mid-game fights to help his team to victory. The Irelia, and then the Wukong gets banned right after. Supernova Aries are target banning the crap are out of, a, <clears throat> out of I just want to play LOL. Looks, Supernova Aries literally do not want them to play LOL, looks like. And there's a Mundo ban. Looks like, ban. Yeah, it looks like uh, I just want to play LOL. Doesn't want to pick up that Mundo in the first rotation, so... <clears throat> Let's see here. The LeBlanc ban. Depending, I just want to see here. So the mid laner is from Supernova Aries. Looks like their mid laner is Ventrix. Ventrix is the last pick, so they are sending that counter pick for him. <coughs> and yeah, Ventrix does have. The, I see that ban now. Ventrix has a 60% win rate on that LeBlanc with 397 games. That is a really, really smart ban. Coming wow. On, yeah, coming in from that. But let's see here. The, the Malphite getting banned. The Kalissa. This is what they want. It not, looks like this is what they want to prioritize. The Callista first pick. This is a huge flex pick for the jungle, the mid, and then the AD carry position. So, if they pick this up, Supernova Aries definitely has to react to what they want to do against this Callista. 
Of 100%, and look at this, a Kindred. Yeah. Would Kindred be a nice uh, outplay to the Callisto? This is a, yeah, this is actually, this is a huge pick, huge pickup for for uh, the blue team here. This is such mm -hmm. a strong flex pick. We can see, we can see at uh, this name, they'll pull it out in the mid lane. We can see, we can see uh, Sir Wolverine pull it out in the bottom lane. And then we can also see a Tinker Reaper pull on the jungle, but look at this purple side picks up the Gragas and the Lulu. Ooh. We haven't seen Gragas uh, in, we haven't seen Gragas uh, so far yet, but he's still there. He does take a little bit, does have that really strong early game pressure. But I think here's a Lulu pickup. That's really, really strong. And then the Callista hover. Sir Wolverine, there's a reason why they banned it last time. Is Sir, is Sir Wolverine, is this his best play champion? Can he pull it out? And will he want to? Hmm. I don't know, man. That Lucian was still pretty well. So Lucian even if, was, his Lucian even was excellent. He, so even if the Callista does get banned in future games just because of how he does on this one, doesn't mean that he's limited. Yeah, let's hear And Zagutara going on the Nar. We haven't seen that in forever as well. Nar isn't that great in the preseason so far, but Zagutara is going to lock that in. Sir Wolverine looks like he's going to be locking mm -hmm. that Callista. We get to see Sir Wolverine's Callista, the reason why <laughs> uh, Scorpio banned him, banned him last game. So definitely want to see how Wolverine plays it out. And Purple Team. Oh, okay. Let's see how Purple Team... I can't wait to see how they, what they choose for the rest yeah. of the and I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. And we also want to see where the Lulu goes to. Lulu could go mid or top, depending on how um, Ares wants to play this. The Blitz Hover, Cat Ears, wants to play with that Blitz Hook. That is a nasty thing to see. If you get pulled by Blitz, it's almost like you're, um, it's almost like you're Ash. For sure. And you don't really have that escape. Yeah, she can dance away with her passive. But still, she's like Ash, and she just cut, gets caught right there, gets knocked up, ulted, and done. And look at this gunslinger hovering over that Lucian. <laughs> gunslinger looks like he just wants to show up, show up Wolverine who's the better Lucian is. And Cat Ears getting that Morgana too. Morgana gets locked in. Morgana does get locked in. Gunslinger definitely is going to be playing the Gunslinger in League today. This is going to be huge. This is this is looking like the revenge game so far. Gunslinger picking up that Lucian, what Wolverine played. It's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great bottom lane. I just want to see what happens in this matchup. Now now we have Will the snake. Lucian dominate the player who played him last. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. And this name though, the mid laner for I just want to play LOL. Hoping over that Ari. They don't know who that that mid lane oh, is. Oh, the Donger. The Donger hover. I haven't seen a donger in forever either. Yeah. This, so I'm actually, I'm actually liking um, how uh, how uh, Supernova dra drafted <coughs> a little bit just because they have that Lulu, Excuse me. and then they have that Morgana, so they can definitely flex who they want to go top, mid, and and support. But look at that, the Brom gets locked in with that Callista. Definitely gonna help out just because they have three auto attack heavy champions. They have the Kindred, they have the they have the Callista, and they have the they have the Nar. And uh, looks like Gnar. Gnar. Yeah, like, the Gnar. The Gnar. The Gnar. The Gnar is going to go into the top lane. Um, Ari in the mid lane, so very <laughs> standard mid lane pickup from this name, though. Let's see what Ventrix wants to do. He is their mid laner, so he essentially gets to decide how the Lou, the Morgana, and the mid lane is going to be going as. I foresee either a Syndra. Oh! Or a Zed? And what? Are we going to see Zed? Oh no, the talent! Oh man, I'm a huge Zed fan. I just want to see. AD. Can can Ventrix does Ventrix want to channel his inner faker and and win? Looks like he might. He's hovering over. So I think he's gonna lock in Zed. I think yeah. Zed would be a much better pick. Definitely, just because they have the Lulu, they have the Lulu top lane too. Definitely want to see what this Supposed does. Supposed Lulu top lane. Supposed Lulu top lane. It could be Morgana top. We haven't seen that in forever as well. So. That could be really interesting if they send that Morgana top into the into the Nar. And look at that. Looks like Zeta is going to be locked in. Ventrix is going to try and channel his inner Bjergsen, inner Faker. Or is he going to look like Ryu and fail at it? I apologize. <laughs> uh, but yeah, looks like... So let's just gonna take a look at, the, look at the team comp here. So the only thing I'm afraid of with uh, I just want to play LOL is that they don't have a primary, initi they don't have a primary initiation on their side. 
They do though. They actually no, they actually don't. They don't have actually have a short a short cooldown initiation versus where Ares have a Gragas where he could just body slam into one and then start a fight. Body slam flash or just even a body slam. So that's the thing I'm a little bit afraid of. Blue team has to either rely on the on the Nar. They have to um, Mega. And it's They risk. have Ares taunt. Yeah, they have Ares taunt to, to pick someone. To straight up start a five on five though, Greg's is a lot better just because he can just body slam right in, throws out the explosive cask, and just separate everyone. So that's the only thing I'm just a little bit afraid of regarding um, I want to play LOL. And it all just comes down to how how each team um, wants to play the game, whether they want to go for the full on uh, team fight or whether they want to go. With with the combination from uh, I want to play LOL though mm -hmm. I, I like their combination a lot better. They have the Callista load into Brom knocking them up into Brom another knock up and then Nar just all over the place going with a mega Nar you know um, hitting them into a wall. They just have a lot of CC chain coming on the team. Whereas uh, Red Team have a lot of uh, CC chain as well, but mostly just uh, utility. Rather than that, they have two shields with a Lulu and a Morgana. Um, the black shield negating any CC that happens to a champion. Uh, the Lulu follow up with the Zed ult. I mean, it, it's just it just comes down to how well they mechanically go into these uh, team fights. I don't know. I actually think that I actually think that a Ares actually has an edge because if you look at blue team, they're very kite focused. They have the Nar for the boomerangs. They have the Ari with the orb, of, the orb and her charm. They have Kindred with their Q, and they also have uh, Braum for the slows, and they it just feels like I just, I just want to play LOL wants to kite back. The only time they can fight is when they have Meganar ready, or if they land a charm and they catch someone out. With with T, with uh, Supernova Ares, they have the flank potential from the Zed, so that that is how you win against a kite, a kite camp. You, you flank him, you outflank him with that Morgana, with that Lulu, with that Zed. And and then also with Lulu speed up, Lulu can just speed up Morgana, can speed up Zed to catch up, can even speed up Gragas if you will, and just to rush at the front line and throw that explosive shot. So it's I think I think this is, I think this game for so the win condition for I just want to play LOL is how well they poke, how well they siege, and how well they can kite against Supernova Ares. And for Supernova Ares, I think their win condition is how is how they flank and how they engage with a Kaipo on that Gragas. So. For for LOL, uh, for I want to play LOL. It comes the ability to kite. Mm -hmm, for for uh, for uh, Supernova Ares, it comes down to their communication. Yep, their communication and, the dives. and flanking. Yep, their communication and flanking and um, how Lulu plays around her, her whimsy. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I want to see. It's it. going to be a very interesting yeah. game. I want to see the. Uh, this is like this is the first time we see Kindred being played uh, while while we're casting. And this is this is the first time we've seen we've seen we haven't seen Nar in forever. <clears throat> Nar was a huge pickup back then before the preseason, but man, just want to see how uh, well not a huge pickup before the preseason just because there was Darius and Fiora. Before that, Nar was a, a counter match into Darius, so definitely want to see how this Nar, how um, Zakutara plays out this Nar. <clears throat> I can't wait to see how Zakutara handles the Lulu. For sure, because Lulu top lane is something we haven't seen in a while yeah. too. And Lulu's always Lulu's so. always known as a huge lane bully, so definitely want to see how well he handles that. This mid lane is gonna be fun though. I want to watch. I want to watch um, Ventrix against this name though, because this name though had a really strong Diana in the mid game. Early game was a little bit weak. I want to see how how um, this name though plays around against or plays around uh, Zed Zed and his death mark because uh, she didn't she didn't run exhaust. She still ran ignite. So. She isn't looking to negate that death mark. She's looking to outplay it. So there's gonna be a lot of you, outplay. You know in the what? Lane. Uh, you know what I think would have made. Uh, I want to play LOL for the team fight. Yeah. Um, instead of the Ari pick, I think an Azir would have been really nice. Yeah, Azir does have really great kite potential. I think another thing too, if they wanted more of a mid game, is if they swapped Ari for an Oriana. Very safe mid lane. A very safe pick as well. But does have that uh, does have that <clears throat> shockwave to turn a team fight around when Nar goes in or even when Brom goes in. So <clears throat> Azir. Oh yeah, that yeah. shockwave yeah. dissonance. Yeah, if they wanted to go Azir for more kiting and more for that late game and for more of that siege 
definitely. But if you want to go for that mid-game team fight, Oriana would also would have been a better pickup, just because how Ari is a little bit weak and does require a little bit more of that snowballing versus Oriana and Azir, where they'll just naturally scale with gold. That is a magnificent Callista skin. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I I'm in love with that Callista skin. Championship Callista. Oh yes, <clears throat> that is amazing. I have actually not seen that skin. All right. This will be. The oh, looks like we might go for an invade here from. Uh, I want. Yeah, look at that. They're pathing down into the river. They do have. Um, Supernova does have that ward though. So if they do, they are gonna spot him out. I think Zed. Look at I that. They just Zed picked out the wards. Him. They just picked out the wards. They have complete vision of this. <clears throat> Let's see what they're gonna do. They have, they're all they're all on top of ward. They can definitely react to that, but they also have that ward right there. Just gonna throw down the tormented soils, throw that barrels, and it's gonna deter Morgana that Morgana with an easy extra twenty four gold. Yeah. <laughs> that extra twenty four. Oh, I gold. think that is, I think that is so broken. The fact that uh Thunderlord's procs off of Morgana, Morgana's tormented soil. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right, look at that. I think she may have just picked up another pot. Looks like. So let's see. Another here. another pot. It looks like Morgana. she just picked up another what? pot. Yeah, she's at three pots now. No, wait. No, she's not. She's still at three. Nope, she's a, she's just at 24 gold. Never mind. She hasn't picked up another pot. <laughs> looks like she's going to be a standard start, though. I remember the days when pots were cheap. Pots went through, was, what, 35 gold? Yeah, dude. Definitely. All right. Looks like it's just going to be pretty basic here. Ventrix. Ooh, gonna Thunderlord's take, already. Yeah, I already the proc, so... This name though, playing around this Ari really well. Oh, and uh, Ari, Ari seems to have the mastery. Whenever she kills, um, an a minion or a monster, she gets uh, some give... health back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look at that. And this name, this name though is pulling out Ventrix, but does have that mana. So. Yeah, that's the only bad thing about Ari is that the fact she's in, she's in a lane. Match up against somebody with energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather, rather, so she has to be conservative of her mana and also try to get down the poke. So, mm -hmm. it's it's going to be very hard for uh, this name though for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Zagatar has that level two, early level two, but not going to take do anything too crazy with that. Look at that, this name though is just kind of punishing. <clears throat> and look, but they do have vision. The jungles have vision of each other. They are going to be fighting over this scuttle buff. <laughs> But you never want to fight Kindred level uh, level two. She has really strong belief potential. Akaipo is level three though. Let's see what Akaipo wants to do. And look at this—the charm misses from this name though. Uh, Nothing's too crazy. Looks like he's gonna be catching. Uh, the bind lands on Reaper though. Reaper looks like he's gonna be going down. The Gunslinger's going. Nope. Nothing too crazy. No flash comes out. But Gunslinger is going solo from Tengu Reaper. Tengu Reaper. He goes down. Tengu Reaper is gonna take first blood. Onto oh, Supernova. Akaipo has to flash away. This name though is reacting. Wolverine flashes over the wall. Gets the third hit. The Wind Sprite activates. Nothing too crazy. They're on the turret. Cat Ears is gonna get stunned as well. The flash comes out from Cat Ears. Can he get the, the charm? Misses. Wolverine is under the turret. Gets it one. Cat Ears takes him down. Tengu Reaper is also under the turret. He's also gonna go down. Double kill goes over Gosh. for Cat Ears. Man, that was that was so great for it. I just wanna play Elo, but they were way too greedy. They wanted that cat. They wanted Cat Ears so bad, but they just gave two kills away. Really, really greedy play. And two kills and a red buff. And a red buff. <laughs> and a red buff on a Morgana, dude. Look at look how much damage she's about. Red buff added on to it. Oh man. That's gonna He's stop gonna that whole sniper if really he... hard. Oh yeah, that's gonna set him back for a little bit, and Lucian has all that CS now. Yeah, did die. Uh, Tengu Tengu Reaper did take that kill. So this is so since because Tengu Reaper has a kill, it's all about how he uses that gold. If you use that gold efficiently, and just keeps on ganging, looks like Cavell wants to disrupt that. Does doesn't know he's at the blue, puts the ward has vision of the blue getting started. Cavell is going to be dueling on Zagutar a little bit. Zagutar is going to get that third proc with that Thunderlords. But look at that. The Glitterland is doing a lot of damage. Equal trade coming out from both sides. Mid. Jungle. ADC support. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Are you just reorganizing that? I just... Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was just like looking at it. I, was, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um... But yeah, the, yeah, oh, but yeah, they're lands. really they're doing. Oh, the charm, Thunderlords as well. The true damage, half health, so with a full combo. 
For look sure. how much mana that takes from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she's gonna have to build that Morella Namicon. Yep. She actually went she actually went uh spell edge first for that early gold. So actually she may not she so what you do is that if you don't go Morella Namicon and you go Spell Thieves, Spell Thieves is essentially gonna be your mana I you're gonna be uh your mana item because it does have that um oh. that fairy charm with it. It's just not gonna be it's gonna be very gold efficient and gets that vision control, the vision game in. The thing is that it's not gonna provide as much cooldown, it's not gonna provide uh, as much combat stats. So that's just that's the the trade off between um, between Frost Queen's claim and Morello Namicon. Gold efficient. Think about it. Yeah. Th this, but but when it comes to champions like Ari, LeBlanc, people who usually do take who uh, do usually take the spell three. Um, I actually just thought about this. That is actually a better item to take just because of the fact they are assassins. Yeah, um, it helps them. It helps them out a and lot. It helps them a lot. Uh, it's just insane. Like. I never understood why they would take the gold advantage over the statistics, yeah, it's but just, yeah. the chase. It's uh, so when you look at uh, what, how much gold spell thief does, it gives just it's so gold efficient as an item itself, regard with its stats, and the gold, and also because of how vision is played right now. Uh, people essentially start getting blue trinkets. And look at this, Icabo's gonna be going in for the turret. Gets the barrel. And look at that, the Glitter Lance gonna be coming. Can he get the Glitter Lance? And it does! Cap oh. Capel plays that! Plays the Glitter Lance so well. Waits for that flash and throws it out to kill him. So well done. One more second and Nara would have had Mega and, and went back into that fight. Oh man. Oh. Really, really well played by, by Cavell right there, up in that top side. And look at this though. Tango Reaper. Is gonna be coming. No, they do. They do have vision oh, of them. Looks like they might force it. Gunslinger does go in for the trade though, but they but they just saw Tango Reaper. The TA. Oh, they planned for the TP. The TP is coming in. Wolverine's gonna get a little bit low. The exhaust comes out, and the double TP. Zagutar uh, is six, but Cavella Cavella is low. Ventrix slays Sir Wolverine. Goes on to butt whole sniffer. Is he gonna go down the ignite ticks, and the double kill comes out, and the Cavella. Takes down Tango Reaper. Zarkatire is by himself. He's going to try and go for cat ears. It looks like he's going to be going down as well. Double kill goes over. And look at this. The revenge story is coming out for Supernova. One and seven here. They're taking They're taking control. They're getting revenge <laughs> for their sister team. This is going to be huge for Supernova. Now we know why they're called Aries. They are the god. They are the god. <laughs> they are the god of League but of Legends here, that, guys. But that was very that was a very good job by uh, Supernova. Aries. You saw whenever we saw uh, Zakatara down bottom trying to get those kills, he missed two uh, two passives off of his W to secure the kill on Lucian, and he missed the boomerang from the from the third proc as well on Morgana. Both of those would have been very important, and that would have turned the fight completely around just because they wouldn't have been able to turn on him near as fast. For sure, for sure. All right, and the gold lead is 10, 10 to 13 and a half, so 3k, 3.5k up ahead. Really, really strong play coming in. This, look at the Sea of Difference from this name, though, onto Ventrix. Looks like the Diana ban and the Wukong ban is coming in strong. Sumernova did play that banning, that play that ban phase really, really well to target ban those two. It's all based on how Wolverine performs on this. He he was banned by, by Scorpio. And there's a reason for it, so we definitely have to see what Wolverine can do with this Callista. Definitely, and not only that, whenever it comes down to team fight, I think that uh, they're gonna have the ultimate on um, onto Supernova, just because of the fact that Callista, during the time that uh, they're in the fight, and when Kendra drops old, she's gonna have time to just get all those stacks onto the enemy champions. When it drops, win. Mm -hmm. And look at this Ventrix that looks like. No, but look at this cat here goes in for the for the binding. And he's gonna get the stun. Wolverine gets stunned out. He's so low. The shield on him is blocking him. The shield is just a little bit, but there's so much fight going on in the mid lane. Akaibo is gonna go down by this name though. And Wolverine does survive. Can Gunslinger pull it off? He cannot. Well, it looks like he's gonna be going. Oh my god! The Ooh. piercing light! He played that so well! He got that piercing light right off onto Sir Wolverine. Huge pickup on that kill. He needed that. Man, Gunslinger, you are showing who is boss on this Lucian. Cat here is pulling off the level 5 mastery as well. Man, Super Nova Ares. I don't know what you guys were saying about you guys not being as good as Scorpio, but you guys are pulling it off today. And Super Nova Ares actually saying that whenever uh, Gunslinger got the kill onto uh, Callista, said that was for Super Nova Wolf. <laughs> that was for a so super noble. So the payback wolf. is definitely real. <laughs>
<laughs> that was, the payback is definitely real. For sure, they're having fun. They're having a blast. Definitely want to see what Ares is going to do here. Cavell is going to take a little bit of damage. Zagatar is about to turn Mega, but they're going to stop that fight. But yeah, this mid lane matchup, Ventrix making a really good domination. <clears throat> really playing that map pressure over to this name, though. They're not having a lot of 1v1s, which I kind of miss, but, you know, they are they are rotating well. They are impacting the map, so definitely want to see how uh, Ventrix's Z hold, holds up in this mid and late game. Oh, yeah, th this is definitely... Um... This is definitely going to be interesting. I'm still liking how Supernova Cavill is going about uh, taking this Nard. The Glitter Lance is doing a lot of damage. Really kicking with post. Okay, is there a Cat Ear with actually... the Rumble on the top side? Rumble on the bunny. It looks like Zagtar oh, is going to go down. Cat Ears is on a killing spree. Wow, what a great roam from Cat Ears to go all the way to the top side. Didn't even expect it. Cat Ears playing the map so well right now. That was a very unfortunate hop. Um, trying to trying to get over that little bit of the wall, but was not able to do it, and he got stuck. And then Morgano got an easy binding. It looks so like Ventrix is going to be going for that kill. Yeah. Those are, he's, he is going to go down, but that but the Kindred's ultimate is going to miss. And look at that, the shutdown is going to go over to Ooh. Tengu Reaper. Tengu Reaper played that ultimate so well to stop this Nando from dying from the death mark. So honestly, really well played. Gunslinger is going to get three procs from that Winter's Bite. Nothing too crazy. Gunslinger is taking. Uh, it's like an unfortunate trade, but nothing, nothing too devastating. Man, Tengu Reaper on top of, on top of that. A little bit greedy for Ventrix to go in on that, because of the vision. But you know, I was a, I was a little bit surprised to see uh, after Ari, after the mark had went off, Ari didn't even stay. In. She ulted, um, out of, out of the heal, while Ignite was on her. I thought Ignite wasn't, uh, was still had a couple ticks in it. Oh, yeah. So I was like worried that the knight was gonna finish her off. I was like, um, that that was that was a good idea, but if it would have turned bad. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that's what Caddy's coming in. The TP coming in from Cavello. Wolverine's by himself on the other side. The binding misses, but Wolverine looks like he's gonna be going down. Cavello's on a rampage. Four zero and three. But man, the TP from Cavello. Zagutar didn't even react to that. Really smart well, play. I mean, he was to, he was Zagutar. Um, Necessarily couldn't do anything more. If if he would have TP down, it, it would have probably just been a ways and just ran with less than sure. half health. For sure. They, looks... they they're really down right now and they just need to be smart. For sure. And looks like Spooky Ghost comes up, but nothing too crazy. Zogtar is gonna try and get that push on going. Charm lands onto Ventrix though. Nothing too crazy. Throws out the shadow Shurikins. And Zogtar is gonna keep up this split push. Tango Reaper is off to the side, waiting for something to happen onto the mid lane. But Ping's going on Akaipo, knowing that if there was a gank, there would be a counter right here. Wards are coming out. A lot of action coming in from this mid lane. Cavell looks like he's going to be trying to catch out Zagutaro. But he comes out, lands! Zagutaro looks like he's going to be going down! Who's going to take it? Cat Ears is on a rampage! Cat Ears! 4 0 oh, 6 Cat Ears with the roams on those Nikes. Yeah, the cat is just definitely uh, being a little bit sneaky this game. Um, doing really good job for her team, landing the bindings when they needed, and just roaming like a good support. Uh, very well played. Akaipo's by himself though. Akaipo, a little bit, a little bit too heavy. Goes right back in, misses the body slam. Gonna get sniped, but Akaipo taking a lot of damage. The knockout comes out. The TP comes out from Zagutara. Can Zagutara come in? Gunslinger's gonna get winches by Akaipo taking so much damage. Look at the Rand. What well, how's Rand gonna do? Wolverine slays him. Gunslinger's gonna get stunned a little bit, and the button Gunslinger is gonna claim him. Ventrix's gonna get pushed out, but Butthole Sniffer is gonna go in with that Fate's call. Not Man, and then Ventrix has to flash away. This name though is coming up with a chase. Tango Reaper is coming up as well. Ventrix has to go in for the trade on Tango Reaper. He's going to go in, but this name though is going to claim him. And even after that death mark, finding comes out, misses, and man, one for two trade over, over to. Oh, I just want to play LOL. So smart fight right there. Oh yeah, LOL. I want to play LOL. Needs to be able to pick these fights out better. They're doing a really good job right now. I know they lost top, and they need to be able to push it to it soon. I think Akaipo was just a little bit. I, it was it was weird because Akaipo was there. They had they had vision there, and he, and there was no one else to back him up. So it was kind of weird to him just to chuck out that explosive cast for no reason. Uh, yeah, I I don't know either. I don't know about that. Play it off well, trying to bait, 
um, Wolverine and Sniffer into a fight, but in, in all in all reality, he didn't land the body slam, and I think that's what uh, I think that could have went differently if he would have been able to win that. Definitely. Oh, Lucian trying to stop the. Sir Wolverine's by himself gets spooky ghosted. Cat ears throws out the Benny. The flash body lands, and Sir Wolverine's gonna go down. Gunslinger's gonna pick up that kill. Gunslinger showing who's boss on this Lucian. Definitely showing his skill and talent on this champion. Sir Wolverine was banned last game because of his Kalissa, but not really performing. One and five right now, and same with Zakutara, zero and five as well. So definitely want to see what is Even what has stopped him. Well, even though that he still like has so many deaths, he's keeping up with the CS really well. Mm -hmm. He still has 109 CS to 112 on Lucian. You know, he's he's not doing anything bad mechanically. It's just the fights that they're choosing to do are not the best in their favor. For sure, for sure. And it looks like a dragon. And looks like Supernova is having their sights on dragon. Blue buff is gonna go over to this name though. I don't think Dragon's up for another three minutes. Yeah, they were, I guess they were just waiting right there. See if, see if. Uh, uh, I just want to play. Well, pushes a little bit up, but nothing, look at Cat Ears. He's on the other side. Binding onto this name though. This name's gonna go down. He does. Binding over the wall by Cat Ears. Huge play coming in. Set four zero and nine, setting up his team for greatness. And Re and Supernova is gonna take out the middle first tier turret, and they're just gonna go and rotate bottom. That was huge. Uh, might be a call for Rift Herald. Possibly. That was a huge. That was a great play from Cat Ears. To just bind over the wall. Supernova, uh, and then uh, Meganar is going to be coming up, coming up now. So try to look for a ways in. Cavell not looking for anything too crazy, but definitely R Supernova does have the momentum in this game right now. Coming up with a 7K lead in 17 minutes. This is this is definitely in the favor. It's five to fourteen, three turrets to none in favor of uh, Supernova Ares. Only one dragon apiece, but the kills most spread out mostly four on Lulu, two on Zed, two assists on Gragas, four on Lotion Lucian. I want to say Lux for some reason, <laughs> and uh, four on Morgana with nine assists, four, oh, and nine Morgana. Yeah, dude, they're, kill they're, they're actually distributing their kills very, very well. The only thing is that there's a little bit too much on Morgana, but Morga Cat Ears is utilizing uh, that gold really, really well. Oh, 100%, and she's actually building into uh, that Zonius. For sure, that's gonna be a huge, huge team fight presence when Cat Ears goes in. Cat Ears has been playing, is being a huge initiator in these fights too, looking for those bindings, looking for those opportunities. They are going for the Rift Herald and Baron up is in two and Baron is up in two minutes. Look at Cat Ears. She's waiting. Cat Ears is just waiting. waiting. Throws out the throws out the waiting. really soil. Gonna take out that waiting, lurking, waiting, lurking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See right here. So but. this is this is the weakness I was talking about in regards to uh I just want to play LOL. They don't have a way to initiate. They have to land a charm. They have to either throw Brum right into the middle and and start the uh, start the uh, glacial the not glacial prison. Her, his the ultimate. Uh, glacial fissure. Yeah, the glacial fissure, and that's how they that's how they have to start a fight. So it's really hard for that to start a fight. All all it has to be is, is mean, a charm. E either that or. Magnar Either that in. or they can just misplay. Yep. Or they can just misplay off of it, engage like a miss body slam. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's pretty much it. But that's the thing though, they're playing so reactively. They're not playing proactively compared to Supernova. Supernova's playing so well, they're playing so proactively. Cat Ears looking for all these bindings. And it's just huge. I think what's gonna happen is Supernova's just gonna bait their time. And they're just gonna keep, uh, they're just gonna keep, I wanna play LOL or Bay. And then whenever Baron spawns, they might force a Baron. Because they know that I can't, I want to play LOL is weak. Yeah, they know look at this behind. though. Vectra's going to catch Wolverine out. Those are the Bork. This, the Shuriken is up. But man, look at that. Ventrix did get the kill, buddy. But Wolverine did dish out a good amount of damage back to it. And look at this. This name is going to get caught up by Cat Ears. Cat Ears going to throw out the charm. Doesn't, I guess that Black Shield also. Charm isn't going to affect anything. Spell immune from Zagutara's boomerang slow. 
But man. Did he miss the boomerang? No, he landed just that the the black shield blocked the uh, the slow. No, like on the like on the uh, backtrack. Oh, I don't think so. Uncap. Oh, very nice low. though. That was a really nice charm from Ari to land on. Cavell. Yes, yeah. thank you. To land on Cavell. <laughs> And it did, a, it did a really good damage from uh, Kindred as well. Yeah. So, but, so. But the way that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, with the way that uh, this this is going so far, look at the warding, man. Look at look at all two, three, four, five, six, seven wards. Eight wards. And I believe that, um, I believe that little ghost ward that, that you get from Wolves is also in favor. Uh, no, that's actually four. I'm gonna play low, but they have seven wards right around Baron. They are prepared for that. Dragon is up. They're gonna go for that, and if they can force a fight, they might even go for Baron after this. And dragon does go over to Supernova. Gonna claim that their second dragon for the game. Spooky ghosts are gonna come out, but man, I just want to play LOL. They're playing so reactively. They need to find a way to start a fight. They just can't. They can't depend on Akaipo missing a body slam. So, so Crip, my question to you: What is the win condition for blue team? For uh, I just want to play LL right now. How do they have to win? They have to get a mega. They have to get a good Naro. They, they, if they don't, then their team is just gonna be shut down because they have way too much shield. Um, they have to get a mega Naro, and they have to be able to burst down the right person. So, like, um, if they get the Nar, but they don't focus the, the Zed or the Lucian, they will get insta bursted after the Naro ult is done. And after that, also, whatever it carries left, they have to either focus the Zed, Lucian, or the Lulu. Mm -hmm. Because without the Lulu, they don't have a, they don't have... Without the Zed, uh, they don't have Assassinate. Without Lucian, they don't have the extra AD in the fight. So whenever it comes down to it, they just need to focus the right person for the situation they're in and be able to um, overcome whatever obstacles they have left, whoever they, whoever they didn't choose. Mm -hmm. Like um, but Nar has to land a three plus man ult mm -hmm. into a wall. Oh my god, look at that binding through so much. But Caterpillars is caught out. This name though is gonna catch him and gets the shutdown gold onto Cat Ears. Cat Ears just didn't see where this name though was at, so unfortunate. Look at Cavell. Cavell doing so much damage. The clone comes out from Gunslinger. Zagatar is a little bit low. Cavell's gonna take a turret shot. But Gunslinger does take that second tier mid in mid turret, so. Man. I, th I think the only way for blue team to slowly get back is with picks because they do have a really good pick comp with uh, Brom, Brom, and his Q, and and we'll, and uh, and Ario on her charm. So definitely have to try and look for those picks in the jungle. Oh, 100%. But still, if they can force a fight mm -hmm. and force that Mega Nar get a three plus, and they can kill some people before they get turned on. That that would be the best situation to me because not only would they get all the shutdown gold, like for Lulu still hasn't died, Lucian hasn't died in a while, Zed and um, Gragas haven't died in a while. That's a lot of gold. Mm -hmm, for sure. That's a lot of gold that could be spread on the team. Not only that, but they can also follow up with objectives. They only have they have no towers taken. Yeah. None. Definitely. They need to be able to push some towers. They need to be able to win it's one fight. Because still 4v5, depending on who they kill, they still they are still out damaged. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. But sure. Let, let's go ahead. Let, let's look at this. So Zed, uh, being the mid laner for, um, being the mid laner for Supernova Ares, he has the black cleaver. He has Yomu's, and now he's working into EF, which I believe is gonna is gonna go into a bloodthirster. Mm -hmm. Ari has Illudens, has the spell thieves. But she doesn't have a lot of pin. She needs to be able to get more, more. Uh, I'm sorry, not pin. Flat a, uh, flat AP and uh, sustain and fight. She needs to be able to get something a little bit tanky, like a Riley's, do a little bit more damage because her, her damage is actual the most that they have on the team. They need to protect her. Yep. Yeah. She's three and one, and Binding goes out on Zakutara. Nothing too crazy. Zakutara took a, took roughly. 30% of his health from that binding and, and tormented soil from cat ears. So cat ears have that hourglass built. And I think I think another thing is that Zagatar built very, very greedily. He went with the black cleaver's first item, which is which you know, which is good, but he was in a losing lane already. 
Right, and that's not gonna help him any. He needs to be a little bit more tanky. I think he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna go for a banshee. Uh, right here, I do believe. And he, um, he needs to be able to sustain a little bit more. He, he, the flat damage, he needs some armor for the Zed, for the Lucian. Other than that, he needs to build a little bit more. He needs a uh, banshee's, a spear visage, and like a randuin and a sunfire. That would like be the perfect build for him this game. For sure, for sure. And look at Ventrix. He's he's trying to he's doing the split push strategy. He has that Yomus. He doesn't have Bork for the dueling, but Yomus is going to be enough. But look at this three man Baron. Yeah, three man Baron's going off right now. <laughs> Cat ears is is defending. Look at the vision control. The vision control is huge for Supernova. Look, they have cover all over the 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 bottom, uh, the the left and the right side of the map. Their pings are coming out. They're guessing they're doing Baron. They're just guessing. They don't even know yet. Look at that. They're collapsing onto uh, Ventrix. Can Ventrix get out? Baron is going over to Supernova right under their mouths just because the vision control is huge for Supernova. 14, one, two, three, and look at that. The gold they, they have just four go pink woods. They have four pink woods for um, Supernova Aries right now. Four pinks. Three now because uh, Kinder just took one out. Other than that, they have 11 woods total on the map. Oh my god, that is huge for that vision control. And look at this, Ventrix is just free to free to just uh, push. He has that Baron buff, he has the Baron Power minions. So just, he's just free to do this. They're all just, looks like they're going to be doing a 1-3-1 one, one, soon. Not yet. But man, they're just keeping all the pressure up. I think, I think that what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to, uh, I think they're going to try to force a mid, and then... Ventrix will work his way up to mid and make it a 4v5 because they're gonna have one person defend it. It all it all just comes down to rotates on this point because if um if I want to play LOL doesn't make the right rotation when they need to make it. Look at that. Then they're, then they're gonna lose a turret. They're gonna lose that uh, inhibitor turret. I I think and that I actually think that Supernova can just start a fight. Look, they could probably just start a fight whenever they want to at this point because that very buff. Look at this. Though. Look no, at this. They don't want to. The rotation. <laughs> Wolverine! Because of that rotation, they went Oh, Cat Ears gets caught out! Looks like Zangshar is going to go in for the fight, though. Good gonna get Gnarl. Stunned. The Gnarl, Zangshar is going to get so low, but, but also the uh, Sniffer is going to go in with that face call. Get, and then look at that! This Nano is getting a double kill! Brom gets a shutdown, throws out the throws out the Q, but misses! Onto Cavell, not going to get anything. But man, Cat Ears gets caught out. Ventrix wasn't even part of the fight. And Zangshar had Mega Gnarl. And Supernova didn't respect that. Huge, huge proper decision making from that. And look at that, the slow comes out from Butthole. Sniffer, Sniffer, so low. But looks like they're going to claim their second dragon now. Man, really? Cat Ears, from doing so well in the early mid game, just made a little bit few of mistakes for those two kills. Even, even if the mistakes were made by Cat Ears, it's, it's what happened to the team. Because Cadiz was in there, which means they didn't have a black shit on Lucian, which means when Nar got in there, he ulted Lucian into the wall, which gave his team the upper hand. Mm -hmm. It was automatically a 5v3, just sure. because uh, the Zed was down in bottom, and he wasn't even part of the fight. Ventri Ventrix was nowhere to be seen, and that is really huge for the team. That gave them a little bit. They knocked down the gold lead from, I believe, that 10k lead they had to 7 or 8. Yeah, it's going to help it out. It's going to help them out. 5, 1, and 6, this name, though. This name though, always playing the, the landing phase a little bit weak, but just comes back during the during the team fight phase. So I guess this is how he likes to play his game. By oh yeah, now so. look at this Morgana, Morgana and Lulu. They're gonna try to contest for this blue. For sure. But all five Ventrix are there, still bottom. Ventrix is still bottom. I don't know if they can fight this. Do they want to? Is a force gonna be fought? Nope, this name the biting comes on. Oh look at that! Cat Ears takes it! Cat Ears takes the blue buff away from this name! Huge! Rip. Rip, Rip indeed. Uh, this name, though, you are feeling pretty sad from losing that blue buff. <laughs> and man, uh, that's gonna be a little bit devastating mm. right there. I would feel pretty bad from losing that blue buff, dude. That that was that was a five-man blue buff, and you lost it. Yeah. Oh my God. It'd be even crazier if that was a I, blind. Blue, that was a blind snipe. They had oh, that, that, that would be insane. Yeah, they had that, they had that blue trinket there, so they so Cadiers did have vision of, of that. Man, looks like the siege is going on. But I don't know, I think that Supernova can just force a fight. They have such a strong gold lead. I think they can just force a fight as long as it's not under turret. If they can just if they can just pull uh, one of the squishies uh, towards them, I think they got this. But I guess they just want to play a split push strategy for now. 
I honestly think that um, as long as I want to play LOL keeps that Mega Nar form, and he's and he's able to force it whenever he wants to, like yeah. he's keeping really good control of it right now. He's letting it throws a boomerang, lets it get back up to where it's almost full, mm -hmm. and then he can he can just go in whenever. So it's that Nar, yep. um, the Mega Nar old save. Yep. They will be good. I I think that they're gonna have a hard time trying to put. Oh, the. And then look at that Ventrix goes in. Look at that though! He's gonna go down! No, he doesn't! Look at that! Tanku Reaper throws out the ultimate just well, but the Meganar goes in. The slam onto Gunslinger. Gunslinger is gonna get stunned up. Oh, the explosive stats beautiful. goes on to Zagutara. Gunslinger is going a little bit though, but Zagutara throws out the boulder, not gonna do enough damage. And Gunslinger is gonna pick up the kill with the Cullen Cat Ears is on the other side of, of the map. Does get stunned over the wall. Tanku Reaper is gonna come in for the collapse. Can Cat Ears go down? The body comes off! Onto Tanku Reaper! Oh, this oh. is gonna pick up. It's gonna pick up Cat Ears, but I don't know if that's not—I don't know if that's gonna be enough. They're gonna claim this. The charm lands onto Cavell, and the and the Q lands on from Butthole Sniffer, but that's not gonna be enough. It was only Sakutara on that collapse onto Gunslinger, so just not enough damage. It's that is definitely that is definitely um, what I want to play. Lol did not want, but that was a really good Naro. He just did not have the follow up from his team. Yeah. Um, he got the Lucian, he got the Lucian, he got the Gragas. Um, he just did not have the follow-up. That's that's what they need uh, NAR to do, to yeah, be able to stay in this game. And I think another huge thing, too, is that is that Zed forced Tengu to use Yub's Lamb's Respite onto uh, onto uh, this name, though. Because this name was going to die if, if it wasn't for that. So that was actually a huge thing to force that, because once that was gone, Supernova can just go all in because they know they have it. They have more damage and more gold over their opponents so and and look at it and look at this map right now they still have 12 wards huge map control okay. on the map yep and the kaipo by himself for a bit I want to take out this pink ward Cavell's gonna back Seven, him up eight, nine, 10, 31 minutes 11. in though 31 31 minutes in and this is they need they need this time. Callista is now having the chance to come back. She has her ruinings. She has Bork. She has two hundred seconds. Uh, I believe she's yes. gonna go for. Yeah, she is definitely coming back. Our ruinings, our ruinings and wind, are are huge with the uh, CSing ability. She's she's come back hard with that. Mm -hmm. Almost caught up with Zed. Um, now I believe she's going for an I edge. Yeah, she's she just got that pickaxe. She's gonna be going for an I edge, and she's gonna start trying to do massive amounts of damage in team fights. She's no longer just building for her win. Yeah, they're just looking for the sights on Baron. This is the only way Supernova uh, wants to try and win. They're trying to get this Baron. Cavell is by itself. Can, can, is Cavell going to get caught or has to flash away? The Binding Gun's going to land on Butthole Sniffer, but he's going to throw out that Unbreakable. Not going to take in too much damage. The Cullen comes up from Gunslinger, though. He's going to try and poke him off so they can get ready for this Baron. And But look at this. Ventral is split pushing for the bottom side. Someone has to react to him. And Cat Ears is setting up the mid wave, too. Cat Ears is going to rotate down. But look at this. Can he get caught out? Gets the Q onto Cat Ears. Not going to be enough, though. That's uh, a three-man Baron again. What's going to happen with... Uh, I just want to play LOL. They don't even have any vision of that. They have every vision from from the blue base all the way to Baron. They're going to know if they are going to check it. And this is going to be a clean Baron again for Supernova. They just have to utilize what this Baron buff does to make them win. Yeah, they already have the middle inhibitor down, so... Is just give Ventress to stay bottom, push the top one. They can get a clean sweep of not only inhibitor turrets, but also inhibs, or even force a fight and win the tank and win the game itself. Yeah, this is so this is so unfortunate because, uh oh, Deathmark goes in, throws out the Q, the Shuriken comes out, the stun on their turret though. Is Ventress gonna go down? He does. He does not! I'm sorry! Ventrix slays him just barely! He's blinking red right now! But Akaibo's gonna start the fight, throws the explosive cast to knock him way back, but he's gonna go down with the turret. The turret is gonna get taken down from Supernova, and they're gonna go and try and retreat away from here. Wolverine's gonna go in, but the Glitter Lance gonna get, is gonna get him. The coin does so much damage onto Wolverine! Cat Ears is gonna throw out the ultimate. Tengu Reaper is gonna throw out Lazar Fight. Gunslinger's gonna go down, gets the shutdown onto, onto it. Gunslinger is gonna solo. Tengu Reaper's gonna go down as well. The double kill comes out. The triple kill! No, not the triple kill! <coughs> and then to Wolverine! Gets the kill onto Gunslinger, but the ace comes out for Supernova. They're looking like they're going to be trying to end the game. It's only two. It's only two of them left. Ven Ventrix is is Ventrix. going to be trying to go down to the mid lane. Cavell doing enough damage to that. They have that Baron, but Katia is going to take a little bit aggro for a bit. Throws out the torment so onto her herself. And look at this. Thirty seconds left. Two seconds onto Zagatara. Can Zagatara make it to defend? Looks like he cannot. And look at this. Supernova is going to take the game. They're going to get the revenge story that they wanted. For Scorpio 
and they're going to get it <laughs> even then. Ventrix, style points, gets the last kill onto Zagar Tower as well. Really, really point. clean play from Supernova, dominating it with that map. Two clean barons. And, and, I don't know. I just think that, I just think, I think Supernova, but the only thing, the flaw that I think is that Supernova, I think they could have ended a lot earlier with that Gragas and the clean initiation that Gragas has. With how much gold lead they had. Okay. Uh, okay, guys, this is the last, this is the last game. We are now in the finals. All right. Let's go and take a look here. That was a huge All right, guys. play. And again, these tournaments are hosted every every week, Friday and Saturday, um, by River Game Esports. Come join them, guys. Have fun. Come get uh, if you want to. Come get them shoutcasted. Also, guys, if you like what we've done tonight, if you uh, if you like our shoutcasting ability, or if you want to become a shoutcaster yourself, uh, go like us, guys. We are Casters Caravan. We're on Twitch, Facebook. Please, uh, please, the support is the support is very welcome. Without further ado, let's go and jump into this right here. There you go. So what are these two teams? So we have Supernova, Supernova Aries, who just won the semis into the finals. And now what team is this? Ryan DeFranco, Amki, Lucian, we have not cast these guys before. Diamond? Nope. Yeah, we have not. So now I'm just going to go and look him up right here. Honestly, Supernova played super well against, uh, I just want to play LOL. Very clean, very clean pickup band too. Don Cheadle. Oh, that is their team name, it sounds like. Don, Don Cheadle. Cheadle. Wait, play for play fun. For oh, fun. never mind, that's their team. Play for fun. I remember I saw that somewhere. I was, I was like, huh? <laughs> Don Cheadle. That's a, Don Cheadle is their team name. Alright, let's go and take a look at these. Choi, choi Vu Toy mean play for fun. Supernova Watermelon, that's our team name. Supernova Watermelon, alright. Apparently they're not Supernova Aries anymore. Supernova Watermelon. Alright, let's go and take a look here. I got a sherbet in my home, made out of watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if Supernova, I, I think that if Supernova can keep, can, can keep that cleanliness in how they played that game, Yes, it was a little bit long. I think they could have ended it a lot earlier with that Gragas. But if they play that clean of a game, they can't take this. I haven't seen anything from Play for Fun yet. They are in the final, so they are talented. I want to see this matchup. Is it going to be a super tough game between these two? Or is it just going to be a clean stop from one of these two teams? I don't know. It's going to be a fun game. This is the final. You know what I find ironic? Every team that, we've, uh, every team that we have uh, streamed tonight... Mm-hmm. We have watched one team, then we go watch then we go watch them into the next game, and then that team that we just watched ends up getting destroyed. Oh yeah, so, for sure. And then we and then we move on to the new team that and we, that we just watched and we just watch their second game for the new team and the new team gets destroyed. For sure, for sure. So we're on a trend tonight. Let's see. If we're on a trend, man. Whoever we cast and wins, they lose the next game. So Supernova this is literally on you guys to not lose. <laughs> this is on you guys. This has nothing to do with us. Yeah. This, is, this has nothing to do with karma. And I, and I apologize. <laughs> it's a kaipo, not a kipo. A kaipo. Gotta memorize that now. A kaipo. Don Cheadle is bay for sure. War. Oh, what? War Machine? SM Kipo Pride. S and a keepo. S and keepo pride. All right, so everyone's everyone is in the lobby. We're getting ready. We're almost ready to go here into champion select. Man, Bertel Hoover. So I'm actually going to be taking a look here. So, so according to how we're playing, so Ryan DeFranco looks like. Oh, Ryan DeFranco does play a lot of a lot of random things. He plays like has grapes, has an Evelyn and an Irelia. 
so I can't really see what lane he's going, but Omnia does look like he is going to be the support. Ha plays the Blitzcrank, the Thrush, the Braum, the Janna, and the Bran. So Omnia is going to be that support. Lil Shen plays Graves, plays Twisted Fate, and Caitlyn. Could be a Twisted Fate eating carry, so that would be, that'd be something to pull off. If that would be that. very That would be super fun to watch if they pull off that Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate with Rapid Fire can it's so funny. Because people, because people, when they see T Twisted Fate, they don't see the range of that, of the rapid fire cannon. So they're like, you know what? I'm not gonna get stunned. But he just chucks it out, gets the stun. So if Lil Shen pulls up that Twisted Fate in the AD carry position with rapid fire cannon, that will be something to look out for. And then a uh, yeah, that would yeah. that would definitely be great. Mm -hmm. Lil Shen's not that many games plays plays a lot of random things. Lee Sin, Vayne, Jinx, and Ezreal could uh could be. Little sh shins and shin, shins and shin. I gotta remember that. So little shins looks like he plays the AD position. So so definitely want to see how well they do that. All right, they are ready. We're we're also ready as well. Whenever they are ready to go. Went on Bertolt Hoover to start that game. Bertolt also looks like an AD carry main, so, and yeah, so um, it's actually really interesting taking a look at uh, on um, play for fun because they play all these different roles. They've never had a they never had a straight. Yeah, it just looks like the only person I know is Omni up is most likely going to be the support because they uh, Omni up plays the Brom, the Janna, the Thrush, the Blitz rank. So most likely Omni up is going to be the support. Shin and Shins, I can't really determine, but we're going right into champion select right here, guys. So, play for fun on the blue side, Supernova on the red side. Supernova did a really good pick and ban, so we have to see how uh, how play for fun handles this pick and ban. If they were watching the last game, they may know. The Raka ban coming out, pretty standard from solo queue. Raka with that wind colors uh, blessing, doing a lot of heals, so smart. About 100%. Let's see what Supernova wants to ban out. They're thinking. The Wukong ban coming out too. Guess they do not want to see a Wukong come out and uh, de decimate the back line. Interesting ban. Hmm. Yeah, Wukong, uh, I can definitely see. I, mean, I, I, I can definitely see the Wukong ban. Alright, there's a Mundo, standard Mundo ban. We haven't seen a Mundo get pulled off. And also, the funny thing is that Blue Team's always been banning it. There's the Lulu as well. Really smart bans coming in. The Wukong, I don't, I'm not too sure because if they do play Wukong, and if they succeeded, then yes, but I am taking a look here. Not a lot of people play Wukong from this, from Play for Fun, so. Unless they've been playing it in the tournament, which is, would be hilarious. And there's the Irelia ban. Ooh, Lulu. I'm still, I'm still like confused about the Lulu. Lulu, Lulu's a smart band just because Lulu is so dominant in the lane, and also she provides so much utility. She helps save someone. She provides a lot. She provides so much CC, the whimsy. So I can see why. Ooh, no. Okay, so you mentioned earlier that there was a and support, and Brand is not banned here. Yeah, let's see if Brand gets picked up by Play for Fun. It looks like he's gonna be a Thresh pickup. Next week, it's going to be the third Thresh pickup of the games we've casted so far. Yeah, I'm telling you, Thresh, I told you like before we started casting these things, that Thresh is uh, like has a 90% pick rate. I know. It, Thresh is, he's, he's such a, the thing is, he's, he's, he's the, like, he's the support if you don't play support, essentially. <laughs> so that's, that's literally what I think, like, like, if you can't play support, you either play Gianna or you play Thrush. If you want to be a playmaker, you play Je you play Thrush. If you want to be like, you know, I'm just going to be playing fast, I'll play Janna. So, Thrush, not nah, hey so common Hey man, Janna can be a playmaker too. Janna can, but Thrush has better playmaking potential. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, the disengage is real. Unless you're Afro Moon, you could flash Monsoon. That'd be a great play. Alright, so Thrush... <laughs> <laughs> so, Thrush gets picked up for... Um, for play for fun. Supernova, let's see what they want to react with. Kindred's still up. They can't pick up the Kindred for the jungle, but they did win against that. 
Brent is also up too, and the Trundle. So they may want to go Trundle in here if they want to and pull off a lane swap. Oh my Timo. god, it's a Cumber. They're, they're summoning Lucifer today, it looks like. Are they no, gonna be... don't you dare, Gunslinger. Are they gonna pull off the Lucifer? Six, is this four seconds left, guys. No way. Oh, Taboo. nope, there you go, okay. there it is. Gunslinger pulled okay. off the main. The okay. so they so 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 happy. Yeah. So they picked off their bottom lane. It's an okay bottom lane just because Tomkins can save Bane. But it is a it is your your blind picking Bane and they can counter with the Caitlyn, so Well I mean just because Caitlyn has higher range doesn't mean she necessarily can uh, if she, if Caitlyn can't hit a peacemaker or if uh, she can't like put her traps down successfully then Vayne still has the upper hand. Yeah. And even look at this, that Jarvan hover. If oh. that is a Jarvan jungle, next thing you know, Vayne can also tumble out of Jarvan's ult. So she's not she's not confined to Jarvan's uh, space. And even then- She can tumble out of his ult and she can also use his ult as a wall. Yeah, yeah. To condemn. Looks like it's not gonna be the Lux. Lux gets hovered, there it is. Mm. It looks like it's gonna be a Lux mid. And at least in general. Oh, Rengar! Uh, Rengar didn't get banned. We completely forgot about that. Rengar's a huge pickup. Oh, but no. But Lee Sin. But they want to go Lee Sin. They should have gone Rengar. They totally should have gone Rengar. Because Rengar is such a strong jungler right now because of the Thunderlord's decree. But I see why they picked Lee Sin because Lee Sin is a super strong counter in the jungle matchup against, against Rengar. So that is smart for them to pick up that Lee Sin in case if that... But you never know if Lee Sin doesn't play well, Rengar can get away with it and punish any squishy. Is, is that a Shin? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a Shen top. Looks like That's funny, be a... cause Lil Shin ain't playing Shin. Yeah. Uh... Oh, look at that, there's a Jace. They're playing around with us, man. They're playing around with all these picks, man. Dude, they're, they're messing with our feels, dude. Uh, yeah. Why are you messing Shen. with the fields? <laughs> There's Cavell with that Shen. Is he gonna lock in? Cat ears, also hovering over that Kindred too. Cat ears locks in Morgana last minute. Let's get. Yeah. Let's see here. What what are they gonna do? Looks like they're saving the mid lane pick again for that counter. They want Ventrix to get that counter pick matchup. They looks like they are relying on that. Look at that. The na the Nami. So nope. Can't be Nami there. So the, what they need is they need an 80 carry and their top laner. Hmm. Haven't seen a Swain top lane in a while. There's a Victor hover. The Yasuo. I haven't seen a Yasuo as well. Unless you're faker and you can pull off a least in mid, that'd be great too. Twisted fate. That's a really strong global, so if they want to play off the globals. Because they also have a Shen on their side too, so. There's a Tristana getting locked in. You talk about Tristana being a stable, being a very stable a AD carry. But and yet, there's... this is the first time we've seen her all night. Yeah, and then there's that Renekton. More ha ha ha. <laughs> there's that Renekton coming in the top side. Try get... So they're looking to bully Shen in the matchup. Tristana does outrange and does play well into that. And look at this little Blanc Hopper onto Ventrix. That, that right there is also a skilled matchup just because uh, if Lux wanted to, she could bring a barrier and she automatically has a shield with her W. Mm -hmm. So that that could nullify most of uh, LeBlanc's burst, especially early on. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and then Lux would automatically have the upper hand Yeah, Lux just does, because of that. Yeah, Lux outranges LeBlanc very, very, very well. So, so that, that again is a skilled matchup that he would have to really try... As, if, as long as the block can dodge Lux's uh, Lucid Singularity, should be okay uh, for, the, for, the, for the early levels. No. And it looks like LeBlanc is going to get locked in here for Ventrix. Let's go ahead and look at this right quick. So, um, so for the first place, uh, for the prize pool, the first place winners one of these two teams will have first or second place. First place gets 1600 RP, a four win IP boost, and the Rise skin. Nice. Second place gets 1200 RP, four win, and a four win IP boost as well. Third place gets 800 RP, the four win IP boost. 
fourth gets the 400 RP and a four win IP boost, and then fifth just gets a four win IP boost. All right. So no matter what, you get an IP boost, boys. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. So I'm just taking a look at these matchups. So, so uh, Supernova, <clears throat> Supernova does have a really pretty, pretty good peel and decent frontline Tom Kench can, but you'd rather have Tom Kench with either the Kindred or the Vayne. But you do have Kindred too, so Kindred can save Vayne from from execution. So I just want to see how, see how they do. Shen, okay initiation is just not. The taunt is just so is such a short range, so it can't really start a fight unless he taunt flashes. Leeson can start a fight from a distance. That's the thing. So, and also thresh. So, definitely. This is this is this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing. I'm seeing a team fight breakdown. Uh, minion. I'm seeing a five v five mid lane, middle of the lane. Um, Lux landing. Oh, Lux is also gonna bring heal. Sure, heal. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, so I'm seeing Lux land her QE combo into ult onto the Vayne, the LeBlanc, Kindred, and then that's a lot of damage just coming out from Lux, especially if she does get fed in lane. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, that's a, that a, that's a lot of CC, and then the follow-up with the Lee Sin, the hook from Thresh, Renekton just to be out there to bully the lane, and Tristana from the backfield. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's all I'm seeing. But the way the red team is, they're very upfront. Tom Kinch is a uh, melee. Shin is a melee. Kindred and Vayne have very short range auto attacks, and same with LeBlanc. They're very up in your face. Mm -hmm, for sure. So it all depends on how um, they are able to kite uh, CC abilities such as Lux Q and W, such as Lux Q and E, Thresh Hook, Lee Sin with his insect. And a possible Renekton coming for a flank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then for uh, for the blue team, uh, play for fun, they have to be able to dodge a Tom Kinch, uh, engage with possible Shin uh, devoured with his ult. Mm -hmm. So they have to look out. That That is probably the best engage I can see. Um, Supernova Ares is the... Is whenever Tom Kinch ult, he eats he eats Shen, go to the backfield, taunt, and then Vayne, Kindred, and LeBlanc will just have their way. Mm -hmm, for sure. I think another thing too is that uh, with with how uh, with how play for fun is set, if it does get late game, your late game is essentially Lux and Tristan, just because uh, Thresh is always going to be there, be there, but Lee Sin and Renekton are going to scale off. But Tristan and Lux does have that range over over uh, Supernova, so. If it does hit that late game scenario all over 35 40, 35, 40 minutes, it's all going to be based on how how um, how play for fun utilizes that range in that late game, and if and if Van can get close enough to join the same with LeBlanc. If LeBlanc can also burst a, a carry early, uh, before a fight happens, that's also going to be very key as well. So, I also want to say that most of the games that we have played have not been past 30 minutes. Yeah. They have not. So it, it, it is going to have to for that late game to kick in. Otherwise, Leeson will not fall. Fornecton will not fall off. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to buy time. If not, they're just going to get pushed through, and they, they have, uh, they're have just going to get dominated this game. Yep. Because if Leeson is able to make his uh, early game presence like we know Leeson can, um, then uh, Supernova Ares has a problem. Yep. They have to be able to be wary of that Lee Sin. Yeah, let's see here. So, so on the blue side, we have we have Bertolt Hover on Deep Terror, Thresh Omni up on Lux, Lil Shin on Muay Thai, Lee Sin, Little Shins on Tristana, Ryan DeFranco on Renekton, a a Kaipo on Kindred, Gunslinger on Vayne, Cat Ears on Kench, and Cavell on Shen, and then last but not least, Ventrix in the mid lane with LeBlanc. We'll definitely want to see how these games play out. Honestly, I think these comps I I think these comps are actually pretty darn balanced in regards to how they picked and how they drafted. Nothing is too over the top in regards to the overall win. Just how they play off these strategies in regards to their win conditions. So this is gonna be a really close game if if it does go that way. Um <clears throat> I'm sitting here looking at these platinum and diamond borders. <laughs> uh, and look at this Shin's accidentally DC'd. And let's Ripperino. That's Ripperino. gonna be unfortunate. Hope the game does start off soon. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and just fix my direct camera. <laughs> well, I can. So, top lane. Mm -hmm. Protection is going to be here. They're Jimmy, chatting it easy. up. Play with what you got. No excuses. <laughs> Some taunts going in from Supernova onto play for fun in regards to the DC on Tristana. But not going to okay, be too crazy. And Please excuse me. Give me like, give me like a minute. I have to be right back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh... All right. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the comps happening here. So, like I said, I think these comps are actually very balanced in regards to how they picked. Uh, nothing too crazy. Not not a lot of flex picks going on. Uh, Lux was probably like the only flex, and also Kindred too. But I don't know if they did want to play Kindred in the mid lane or Kindred in the eighty carry position, considering that uh, a Kaipo and Gunslinger pick there too immediately right off the bat. <coughs> Cat ears on that Tom Kench. Want to see how Tom Kench utilizes? They do have a lot of single targets, so like Lux can assassinate a backline, but that's where Cat ears can come in, depending on how Cat ears plays the Devour. And game is going to be resuming soon. We'll see how the level one games start. And it looks like another pause is coming in here for unnecessary reasons, I guess. We'll see what happens. Time is for us both. All right. So yeah, I think that if it hits mid game, mid game, I honestly, I think early game, it's all based on how what they do. And then at mid game is all based on what they do in the early game. So if Leeson does get ganks off and does start snowballing his team, That'd be really great, but if but if a but if a capo can get uh, enough early stacks and also get some early games, and also if Gunslinger doesn't die in lane, that'd be really great too. If Gunslinger dies in lane, that's gonna put that's gonna put a Supernova back pretty far, just because of how Tristana can easily siege turrets. Once they take out, once they kill Vayne, they kill Vayne again. They take out the turret and they just transition right to the mid lane. So Tristana, best tower taker in the game right now. And look at this, all five are going towards bot side. Looks like they might be going for an invade down there too. <coughs> all five are down there. Let's look at how play play for fun paths. They're going to be pathing up into the river brush, not through try. But there is a warder so they can get spotted here. Looks like it, oh, looks good. Does get spotted a little bit. Pink's, Pink's going to come flying out. They know Omni up is in that bush. Omni just comes out, walks out again a second time. They know they're there. They they they're assuming someone is there as well. Look at cat ears going up for the flank. Goes out for the binding. Lance is not away. He's not away. He's gonna go on to gunsling. Gunsling is gonna go on. Activate his tumble. He's gonna get a little bit of a trade right there. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, may have to force gunslinger back to to heal as minions are coming up fairly soon right now. So yep, gunslinger did have to back. Might be a little bit late. It looks like it's going to be a snare. So no, Gunslinger doesn't actually camp back because he has to peel. And as, as you can see here, Cat Ears did ward the Krug, so they do have vision of where they will be starting. Looks like... And I am back. Hey, Crypt. Looks like, uh, looks like Cat Ears does want to mess them for a bit. You can see here. Adventure is going for that early level 1 trade. Look at that. He's trying to go in. Throws it, and he gets it! He gets the big crack! He steals it! Great play from Caddy to try and take that early ward. And look at this, Lilshin isn't even going to get that level level 2. Huge play from Caddy. Well played on that. It looks like Cabell's just going to be frozen in the top lane. It's going to be a CS battle right here. Ryan DeFranco can bully that lane out. So I don't know if you saw a crit, but Cat Ears managed to take the big Krug away from Lil Shin on the first camp, so he's not even going to be level 2. He's going to be very far behind in this early game right now. And look at this cat. You're starting no, level I, two, I was, two. I was actually... Look at this. going to be going in. Cat Ears is oh, level 2, though. Threshold. Yeah, Cat Ears is level 2. Let's see what we can do with it. Gunsinger is also level 2. But look at that. Lil Shin's trading very, very effectively onto that... Mm -hmm. onto Gunslinger's vein. And Lil Shin's is level 2. Bertolt Hoover is still only level 1. Yeah, the the, uh, the damage from uh, Tristana with her explosive charge is insane. Especially she's able to just sit there and get autos and get it stacked. Vayne cannot keep up in damage early on. With For sure. Look at this. Body misses up. Omni. Omni. Lands the chain. Look at the Ventrix. Gets the chain. Well traded by Ventrix. With that, also has that CS 
a CS uh, lead as well. And look at this, the jump oh, goes on to Gunslinger. Like Gunslinger's gonna take a little bit of damage. Cat Ears gets, gets hooked and gets played. Lucian flashes with a Tempest. Cat Ears eats his fellow buddy and, po and uh, what, shoots him out. Gunslinger's gonna go in for Lucian. Lucian's oh. going super low. Exhaust comes out. Bro, Hoover's gonna go try and go for Gunslinger. Cat Ears going super low. Lucian has to flash forward but doesn't get the kill. Sonic Wave comes flying out and misses. It looks like Little Shin could not connect that Sonic Wave. Man, no, he, a lot he, of flashes he, he being burned out. He was just not. Two flashes, two flashes, a heal and exhaust gets burned for only a flash and exhaust. Look at that. So many summer spells blew, blew from play for fun while Gunslinger didn't even, didn't even blow his flash or heal. So, honestly, good trade going over to Supernova with summer spells. Look at that. Oh, Ventrix playing so well. Dodges a binding too. Really well played. Cavell going in for that trade with that taunt. Goes in for that. Has un Oh, that made him win that trade. For sure. Even through that minion field, too. Oh, the heal coming in from yeah, Cult of the Meek. The, the heal I from Renekton is just. Akaipo's coming in, though. Akaipo's gonna go in. Flashes from Ryan DeFranco. Burns it up. And 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 a flash from Cavell. So, flash for flash. Honestly, I think Cavell could have saved that. <laughs> yeah, the, this is. That was, uh, that was definitely a really. Uh, top lane uh, battle that we saw between Renekton and Shin. The Force Flash was really good from Kendra to go ahead and try to get that. Gives Shin a little bit of the upper hand just because Shin uh, not only has a uh, dash just as long as Renekton's, but he still, um, he does actually not have Flash, which is sad. Yeah, he, he blew his he Flash as well flash. with Renetti, with uh, Ren Renekton, so that's unfortunate. Look at Ventrix yeah, that pulling is very it unfortunate. out. Yeah, Ventrix is pulling Omni up. Out very well. I thought I honestly thought Omni up was gonna be the support because of how much how much he's played. And look here. Looks like Yoshin's going in. The Ethereal Chains is gonna land, he's gonna prog off the mimic of the sigil of malice right there as well. Oh cat ears though. Yeah, look at cat ears, waiting for it. He's at full health too, he has no idea. He's gonna go in, catch Lil Shen out, Lil Shen is by himself. Look at this! Is he's gonna get down first blood goes over to 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 what? Ventrix. Ventrix is going to get that. And Ryan, and Ryan DeFranco is going to duel Cavell. Cavell is actually winning the trade here with that. But man, Cat Ears making huge plays for his team with these roams. Cat Ears, you are being a god right now. Look at this. The dive is also coming in from Akaipo and Cat Ears. Are you going to do it? Tongue Lash misses out. Akaipo does take two turn shots. And Akaipo cannot stick around for any longer. Throws out the binding and throws out the loose singularity. Not going to do anything though. As he guessed wrong way. Ryan DeFranco is really, really low. 39 to 29, though, so CS differential is over to Ryan DeFranco, and he has hit 6. So yeah, but whenever it comes down to it, the ultimate uh, the ultimate is in Renekton's favor. And look at this Ventric. Look at this. Cat Ears goes in, East Ventrico, and Kaipo throws out. And look at this. The, the double the double distortion kill is going to go into Lil Shen. Lil Shen's going to go solo. Kaipo is going to get the stand united from, from Cavell on that. And man, Ventrix being a strong, super strong playmaker in this mid lane. Throws out the hook. Hook's going to go wide. And whew. A lot of action coming up here. Yeah, and then Renekton up top, he saw the TE. He saw the, uh, they, they uh, communicated the Shin ult. But he was not going to dive under the tower to be able to get the stun on Shin. That would not have been his favor. And Shin would have just taunted him. Um, oh. and then, oh my gosh, but Thresh, oh, I thought it was under tower. No, that man, was right out Ventrix, of tower range. you are playing so well today. This is the true playmaker right now. He got one kill and he's snowballing that so quickly. He's not even going, he's not even going for the, uh, for the Spell Thieves, uh, Spell Thieves Edge. He just wanted those comments that's super early and he, and this is the reason why. He wanted those, that orange ring to snowball himself super quickly. Oh yeah, look at the, look at the CS difference. It's almost, it's doubled uh, the CS of Lux. He's at 59 to 28, and down in bot lane, it's 57 CS to 36 in Vayne's favor. This should not even happen in this bottom lane. Vayne that should that should not. Vayne should be losing to this Tristana because Tristana has range, and Tristana has has explosive, and so Tristana can keep on pushing that lane up. So Vayne should be denying CS. But man, uh, little shins. Just losing out. I don't know. Oh my god. Ryan DeFranco gets that. Calls to the meek heel. Looks like there's going to be a brawl in the top lane. Cavell's going to get pretty low. Throws out for that stun. Ryan DeFranco's going to be getting this kill. Looks like 
And the passive is going to get it. Cavell is so low. Just one more auto throws out the feint. And he's going to take a turret shot. And Ryan DeFrey is going to go down. Exhaust comes out from the bottom lane, though. Bert, oh. Bert Hoover oh, plays. Gets the exhaust on the Paquette. He's going to devour his teammate. May. Akaipo is going to go in for Lucian. Lucian is going to get. Uh, Lucian is going to be so. Akaipo gets played. But look, look Lucian is so low. Gunslinger takes a turret shot. And look at the. And look at that, Ryan Frago comes in and turns out level 6. Lambs Respite is going to come out to save Akaipo. Akaipo is going to be so low. The sun comes out from Caddy. Lotion is just going to jump in. Throws it on Akaipo. Akaipo has a flash out. Is he going to get a die from the explosive shot? Is he? And he does! He's going to get die from Little Shin's explosive shot. He goes down. But Cat Ears does take revenge on Little Shin's. But man, a 1 for 2 trade over to that. And looks like more fights going to be coming out. Cat Ears go is going to go and devour. Ryan DeFranco, Ryan DeFranco is going to get Ethereal Chain, throws out, and the distortion! No, the, the hook stops the first distortion, but he's still going to go down. Ventrix is going to take him down, and the double kill. Cat Ears! Oh, Scumbag Cat, Cat Ears is taking so many kills! <laughs> 3-0-2, oh, Cat Ears, you are being the playmaker as well! Is he going to devour? He's going to go and devour! Because he's going to chuck it over to Ventrix, can he do it? Throws out the chain, and the ultimate comes out! Uh, but man, a little bit too greedy, Little Shin is already back up here. Man, so much havoc coming in from that bot lane. How many kills was that? That was so many. Dude, that was five kills. That was five kills. <laughs> five kills down in bot lane. And only 10 has happened in this game. Oh, man. So that, many that kills. Was, that was very insane. Um, so, Cat Ears, again, playing big, taking all these kills, going to carry his team to another victory. For sure. <laughs> As Tom Kim support. For oh sure. Oh, my gosh. Fun fact. Um, fun fact. Tom Kench is a catfish. Hence, cat ears. I don't know. Could be. But look at this. <laughs> throws out the Sonic. Well, he gets the kick. Throws it out. Goes in for the Q. Stain Knight comes out. But look at the damage grab from yeah. Ventrix. Ventrix is going to get snared. And the Cavell with the Stain Knight saves his teammate and gets the kill on Lil Shins. Meanwhile, Bottomate is going to get pushed up. Oh, man. Shin actually, like, KS that kill so hard. <laughs> with the top. Um, oh, yeah. He didn't even have to touch him. Nothing. Ult was there, Look he was, this, he was trapped in the tower, but he's just like, you know what, I'm just going to do my shadow dash. And yeah, now. look at this though, Gunslinger against Lo Shiz. Lo oh, Shiz is going to go for the jump, Gunslinger! You cannot fight him right now, you do not have that much damage in the mid game. Explosion is doing so much damage. Man, poor decision coming out from from Gunslinger for, to go in for that trade. Not optimal, even with a 20, 25 CS differential. Right, and, and the item difference right here. He's going for that rapid fire cannon off bat, which and honestly isn't bad, but it gives no it gives the crit damage and the trimmer W, but it gives no actual AD damage, and that's what I think they need. A Bork, in my opinion, uh, is it, just a better item to start off with, it, just in my opinion, um, just because she is ahead in CS like that, and you can get away with the Bork. She, she can, right? You can get away with the Bork. Um, but I, I guess since she has two kills, Tristana has two kills now. Yeah. Um, I, I think rapid fire cannon is going to help overall. Yep. But I mean, look look at what Tristana is doing. Tristana has um, the pickaxe and the BF sword. That's that's 65 AD that you don't have. And look at this though, Cavell's gonna be collapsed on the talents away, can Lil Shin land the Sonic Wave? Kick, gives him the kick to the wall, throws on the Sonic Wave, and it that! It connects through the flash, and Lil Shin is gonna take, no, Ryan DeFranco actually takes Akaipo, is gonna come in for that revenge kill, Lil Shin is by himself. And Ventrix is gonna look for the collapse, the is gonna take two tower shots, can Lil Shin get out, takes two, takes three, is gonna get to, get stopped, and yes he does, he does get that execute, Akaipo cannot claim that kill, really well played from Lil Shin to stop that, and not giving the gold over to the enemy right there. I thought it was a keepo. I know, I thought so too, but he actually correct us in lobby. It was a keepo. Mm. Look at the damage! Oh, oh my, my god. god, Ventrix, you are just killing it. You're looking like Bjergsen right now. And Gunslinger is gonna find Bertolt <laughs> Hoover. Lotions is no wonder there. Cutie Pie didn't want to play in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Cutie Pie didn't want to play. And look at this though. Even with all, even with all these kills, uh, Supernova is only a, ahead in one and a half k gold. So definitely want to see. Is going to show a little bit more respect to Lil Shins and Tristan though, because of that flat BF and pickaxe. So definitely want to see how how it is. Trades going over to either side. Throws out that tongue lash. Nothing too crazy. 
Hmm. Caddyers does want to fight though. Gets the second one. Can he get the third one? Throws out the explosion on him. Gunslinger is going to try and get it. And then the hook comes out though. And it's going to eat him up. Oh, the so not made The box though. The box burned from Berthold Hoover. He thought he was going to get the hook onto Gunslinger into that box, but no. Cat Ears just go ahead and devours his teammate for safety. And look at that. Now the Cat Ears is, Cat Ears is literally controlling this lane by himself. That's all Tom Kinch has to do, man. Tom Kinch is the licky tongue. The Kaipo's gonna come in. And, and Lil Shin's gonna take the kill. And look at that! Clean kill from on Lil Shin's onto a Kaipo. Kaipo should have, shouldn't have done that. It, he should have checked it. Didn't he have a. Didn't have a red trinket up, and look at this gun exhaust on Gunslinger. Lil Shin's gonna go in, stay in United comes, it's gonna come out, Lynch is gonna get super low, Lil Shin is on a rampage! Shin is unable to join the fight, Cat is getting super low, but look at this, Ben. Trick's coming in, the flash distortion is gonna miss, and Bertal Hoover is gonna get solo, the, the ethereal train is gonna hit. Ben Trix, oh, easy triple kill, but didn't land it, he's getting solo, red buff is burning! Can he get the tongue lash comes out, can Lil Shin get it? Uses the clone, get the clone dodge, but the, no, the shutdown goes over to Omni up with that Lucent Singularity. Man, that was that was such a, that was honestly well played by Bertolt Hoover to flay. I'm pretty sure he flayed one of the distortions off, I'm assuming, because man, mm. that was pretty I don't, I don't know if he did that, but I'm really glad that looks, but that's, that was on bot lane's fault. Uh, bot lane, I mean, the, uh, their jungler got caught. Kindred got caught in a uh, by dragon right there, and bot lane did nothing. They didn't help. They didn't come up. Whereas you saw Tristana and Thresh go up to help the jungle and made a good play. And then not only that, uh -oh, but forced then, wow. the engage down bottom and forced the Shinold as well. Yeah, look at that. Akaipo just comes in, helps out the kill right there, gets an assist. Yeah, I guess not enough respect came in right there. Just didn't have vision of Akaipo because Akaipo did die in the bottom side dragon. But looks like they they do have their eyes set on the Rift Herald. They are going to be doing some damage to it. Yep, they are going to start that. <clears throat> and look at this. Early Abyssal Scepter picked up from Ventrix. Look at the damage onto Lil Shins. He's going to go down? But look at that. The trade goes on. Dude, does Lil Shins know who this is? They have the ward on the Ventrix. Can Ventrix make it out? Ventrix distortions out. No kill. Either way, they're both blinking red. The taunt onto Lil Shins. Lil Shins is going to take so much damage from Kindred. Akaipo He's going to get that kill. And the TP coming in from Ryan DeFranco. Ryan DeFranco is going to go going for the fight. Has to get the stun on the Cat Ears. Cat Ears is going to try and peel away. He's going to get the three stacks on it. Does devour, but Omni Up is going to go and bind him. Throws out the smooth signal early. Ryan DeFranco is going to get that damage. Cat Ears is going to get exploded. Lucian is unstoppable right now. And a Kaipo gets bursted down from Ryan DeFranco. And look at that. Red Buff is going to be picking up. They traded two for two. Traded two for two. No, actually one for two. In favor of play for fun. This is a really really close game right now so what what so what happened right there was whenever Tom Kinch devoured uh, Renekton in his ult Tom <sighs> Kinch is don't take into consideration the fact oh, oh there's that yeah oh Omni up um, you landed that so hard yeah that was that was beautiful but Tom Kinch is don't take in consideration as of applied damage such as Renekton's old uh, Nasus is old whenever Mundo has his W on Shivana when she has her speed buff on, you know, they don't take in consideration the damage over time. They're still taking that damage, even though that the person devoured, they're still taking that damage. Mm -hmm. And um, Tom Kinch went face toward uh, face toward his team. As he died, he got uh, Renekton got spit out toward the team. So sure. as soon as Tom Kinch devoured, he should have spit him right back out and slowed the enemy team. Mm, for sure. Just a little bit of a misplay from Cat Ears then. To not chuck Ryan DeFranco away from the team. And taking a lot of unnecessary damage just by devouring uh Supernova has to be super <laughs> afraid of the of Lil Shins right now. Five one and two. So much gold ahead. Let's look at here. Six point nine K against five point six. One point three K ahead in the matchup. Just gonna do a lot in this mid game with that explosive shot. And already has that infinity edge built up too. It's all based on how Ventrix oh can gosh. assassinate. <laughs> Look at that. Ventrix just took a crit to the back as well. The binding goes up. Oh yeah. Doesn't land. Oh, looks like it's gonna be stable. Looks like they're looking for a fight though. Cabell, let's go and taunt away. Bertolt oh. did try to play. Bertolt. No, actually the the uh, Omni up has that spooky ghost. This the frost screen claim on there is gonna spot out Ryan DeFranco.
Try to get that fight, but look at this. This is where Tristana's gonna dominate. Trying to siege these turrets. Oh, 100%. Dom she she's a very hard pusher. Um, she she can, it's actually she's the hardest champion to get a lane to freeze with. And here's another 100%, thing. 100 just because of the passive on her E. And here's another thing. Red team doesn't doesn't have any sort of wave clear, so they can literally just siege all day. This is blue team's win condition. is siege because the only way to wave clear is a Ventrix double distortions away. And that's all of her burst right there. So, honestly, if they just keep this, if they just want to keep up the siege, they can. Oh my gosh! And then that's gonna happen all day. Lux is just gonna fire from a far back, wait for him to push up, and then fire her Q, fire her E. And if she's lucky and she gets a carry, her ultimate is gonna go down as well. And that final spark is just gonna make everything ignite. Oh, Akapo's gets snared. Akapo's like gonna take right turret damage. Has to throw the Lance for Sprite. Lance for Sprite is gonna, is gonna go down. Not gonna get killed yet, but Abel to Hoover is gonna go down from Ventrix. Ventrix does make it out. Cavell also taunts away from the turret. And man, that was a great snare on Akapo, but Lance for Sprite negating the kill right there from Omni up. This is what they have to do there. It looks like they just have to look for the picks. The quick and easy picks with LeBlanc. See what what was curious to me right there was after the fact of the uh after the fact of that fight. Cool. LeBlanc is gonna go down? Okay. After the fact of that fight, uh the kindred backed in the bush right there, right right uh, on the upper side bush and mid. Mm -hmm. Um they have a ward. Blue side has a ward in there. Play for fun has a ward in that top side bush. And they didn't and capitalize. one EQ right, one EQ combo from Lux dead. Easy. Yeah, looks like and Dragon. red side would have had no vision of that. Looks like Dragon is live though. Ryan DeFrey will take a lot of damage. Is he gonna go down? He's so low, Ignite comes out, but does oh. get in the TP comes out. But blue team does take the dragon. Little Shins is dueling against Akaipo. Akaipo does go down from that crit damage. Little Shins is dominating right now. Throws off the sun and wave. Hook misses. Cavell has a taunt away to dodge that. And man, Dragon goes over and they take Akaipo down as well. But Gunslinger is on the top side doing his split push. They have to defend. Look at Ventress though, what is he gonna do? He's gonna go in. He does! He gets the shutdown onto Omni up! Oh. And Omni up's gonna get snared! But but Lotion is gonna take down Ventrix as well. The return gets the Sonic Wave onto Kobe. The flag stops the taunt, has to flash away. They're looking like they could be going in. But while this is happening, Gunslinger is still pushing down that top turret. Is he gonna get it? Cavell is trying to stop the backs, trying to stop those ports. No, it looks like yeah, no, they, no one's they, able to go back. They do have it. Cadios, oh, and he just makes it out in the nick of time. Even after taking that tongue lash, he's not going to be able to stop that port. But Gunslinger did take that turret, so not uh, all is not lost. Did gain, did get some gold. Just down one turret. But man, I'm not seeing the value of this vein pickup right now. This is this is definitely no the value of the vein pickup. Yeah, they you'll see the value of the vein pickup in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, once she completes her second item. Definitely. She's she's getting that Bork now. She has she has the distance arc. She has the attack range to be able to do that. She's getting the Bork. Now all she needs to do after that is to get, either get a static shield or she needs to get uh, more damage, like a Bloodthirster. For sure. It all depends on how she's coming out in team fights. Mm -hmm. we, have, we actually haven't seen a team fight yet, so we can't tell what she needs to do. Um, but in, in the opinion of... In, in my opinion right now, um, she needs to go for either... Um, a last whisper just to do extra damage to that Renekton, be able to do extra crit damage as well Looks to bad. completely shut them down. Or well, it's gonna be starting here though. Ooh. This is Ryan DeFrey, he's gonna get taunted a little bit. He's gonna take a lot of this. Akaipo gets hooked in though, has to flash away. Explosion shot is on. You're gonna get really low. And Ventrix is looking, they're trying to kite away. Ryan DeFrey is on that chase. Looks like they're trying to go on a little shin though. They are split. Virtual Hoover is gonna get that. <clears throat> Is, is gonna get that tasty treat right there. He's gonna try and go for the eat. But look at that, Ryan DeFranco is split off. Can they capitalize? No, they are not. No kills going off. Lotions is gonna try and do some damage with that stack ship and the affinity edge right there. But look at this. Look at what they're look at what Supernova's doing. They're trying to buy time for Gunslinger to build up his items. That is what they're preying on right now. And look at that! The Ventrix gets so low! He's not dead yet! Oh! And the Lucid Singularity takes him down. They get the turret. Ryan DeFranco's gonna be pushed up, gets taunted out. And it's going to slice and dice away right there. And look at that, they have their eyes on the mid in hip turret. Man, they're just not fighting with Vayne. Oh, and Yeah, cat they're, they're, ears. they're definitely not fighting with Vayne. That's what they need. And Cat Ears just goes down. Heal look for at Vayne. That. The crit, 306 damage on that crit. Huge. Ridiculous. 
Honestly, we, I think we should yeah. give credit to how Play for Fun is playing. They picked up that Tristana, and Gunslinger is going to get caught out. Stan United gets caught, is coming down. Turns on the final. Oh, the taunt comes up. The Omni up flashes reactively. Gets the condemn because he condemned into a wall. Omni up is going to go down. Gets that shutdown gold. Finally gets his first kill onto that, onto Gunslinger. But man, uh, honestly, uh, play for fun is definitely playing to their win condition right now in regards to utilizing Tristana, knowing that Supernova, Supernova does not have any wave clear in their, in their uh, repertoire and just sieging. Looks like they're going to be starting Baron though. Is they, you're right, they definitely don't have much wave clear, but you know what they do have? They have dive capability, 100%. They, 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 that's all they need is a dive capability. They, they have Tomkins, they have Shin, they have LeBlanc, they have uh, Vayne in the back lines, and they also have Kindred with their old. They have so much dive capability. Oh, Ventrix gets flayed! Can Ventrix make it out? Distortion's all the way back away. She looks like he's going to oh make it out. Oh my gosh. The dead man's plate is active though. Can they catch Ventrix? Throws out the hook. Nope, just gonna be a little bit too short. That's actually a really big throw from Play for Fun because because they didn't have vision. Yeah, yes, uh, Supernova is down in gold, but look at they're still playing that vision game super well. Definitely got to give him credits for that too. Yeah, they, they're playing vision control really well. I mean, look at the six wards, seven wards on the map, and whereas um, Play for Fun has like two. And they're both in the Baron pit. <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure. Oh, they have three. I'm sorry. They do have a pink ward right there in that uh, four now. Mm -hmm. So they're catching up. They're catching up. They just need a little bit of time. Just a little but bit. They're with Vayne joining the team fights, we'll see if it's uh, too late. Yeah. This to shine is being is is right now a, currently at most seven two and three, on her way to a to a uh, Bork too. Look at that. Look at yeah, but Tris. Look at the damage! Ventress! Literally pushing out little shins out of the fight. That's what I was actually looking for. Can Ventress get close enough to do her. to, to get close enough with her resource to do a mimic. A, no, a sigil of mouse and then a mimic sigil. Because that does a with, lot of with damage. With the way. With, with the way that um, Supernova is actually bursting her right now, she doesn't need a board. She needs to go 100%. Um, Bloodthirst, she needs to go for that Bloodthirst, she needs Looks to like extra damage, in, and she needs that high percentage yeah. life still. Gunslinger is going to get exhausted, what comes on to Gunslinger though, Murta Hoover is going to go down from Makaipo, Makaipo is going to get snared right there, no it's actually Cavell, Cavell gets snared, and look at that, the push is going to be going on, Murta Hoover is down, they look like they're going to be keeping on the siege, Akaipo is half half HP, Cavell can take a little bit of damage, they are split though, and look at Gunslinger, he is going to be doing some damage onto that Renekton on that front line, but look at the rotation, they're rotating down here. And look at this, they look like they're going to be claiming this bottom lane turret as well. Yeah, and they're just going to try to catch them out when they try to rotate down the bottom. They're, sure. they're either forced to go uh, the, he's forced to go that way, or they have to try to force a fight. And Renekton looks like he's trying to force a fight. Shin, to, to target Shin is not the best idea. Can Ignite take if off? Shin Does he get the first part? He, oh man, Lux, you missed the shield! Did you see that? Lux missed the shield onto, on her teammate? So he didn't get that to stop the ignite. And look at the triple man taunt coming from Cavell. Cavell gets the triple man taunt. Lucius gets condemned to the wall. Lucius has to jump away. And and look at this though. Gunslinger is going to take a lot of damage. Is he going to get popped? Oh, oh just so oh. close. So close. Macadius is on the backside. Lucius gets taunted out. The fight is still continuing. Shin is so low. Bertel Hoover is trying to peel for the team. But look at Ventress. Tries goes in. Throws out the sigil. The sigil is going to take it. But Explosion is going to come out. Is Ventress going to stay alive? Ventra does go down, he has another rocket jump, and, but no, look at that, the the range from Gunslinger is going to get that, the hook comes onto Cat Ears, Cat Ears is even going to take the turret damage off, but look at the huge turnaround coming in from Supernova, coming from behind, getting those kills, getting the tier 3, and now they're on their, on, now they're on the way to the inhip, no, they're just going to back away. So, I, I see, I see the problem right now, with, uh, Play for Fun's, uh, way of, uh, trying to force these fights, Leeson is not building tank. He is going straight damage, and that's and that's why they're having as much trouble as they are right now. Because if he was going straight damage, he would have. I mean, uh, if he was going tanky, he would have no problem living in fights, and he would have no problem engaging them as well. Being right into the uh, Vayne's phase, being right into Kindred's phase, the Blanc's phase even. Um, For sure. He he would have no problem with it because he already knows that they're going to have a Tom and a Shin right in theirs. Mm -hmm. For sure. And that, he needs to be able to get that back line to stop doing damage to them. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. A little bit of a greedy itemization. 
I, I don't necessarily think it's greedy. I think he was. I think he thought he was the, uh, that his team was ahead enough to be able to build like that and oh, could yeah. afford to build like that. But with with a vein on the other team, um, knowing that she is very late game, uh, very strong late game, and a LeBlanc that's already fed, you know, it's it just did not work out in his favor. Yeah, I kind of just bit him in the butt. Cat ears just gonna get hooked up from from Bertal Tuber on his thresh, but nothing too crazy. Hey, look at me! I done did caught a catfish. <laughs> he done did caught a catfish. Definitely. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Playing a little bit of a western role <laughs> here. Oh, of course, yeah, Crip, you dude. are from you are down from Louisiana, so you probably know a lot about catfish. I assume. Yes, sir. For sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. And looks I like... I know nothing about getting catfished. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, got him! All right, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's like a supernova, a supernova is going to go and try and siege up the bottom side, and they're going to have Shen go and start that split push here. Um, Looks like he can definitely be able to handle the duel, but Ryan Franco does have a, mm. a really good amount of wave clear, so... Yeah. Is it going to be it's, unable it's to not, do it's... Yeah, Shen versus Renekton. Renekton, I believe, has the duel... Just because Shin did not build a Thornmail. If he, if Shin had a Thornmail on him, he could easily one v one Renekton. Just because Renekton is melee and auto attack dependent. Look at that Cavell and Ryan DeFranco is gonna be dueling it out. I think it's all based on Ryan DeFranco. Look, look at that Cavell is actually winning. Has that Spirit Visage and has that Sunfire Cape. So Ryan DeFranco is winning. It's all where's, based on Ryan DeFranco. The that, there's that Cult of the Meek though. So man, Ryan DeFranco yeah, is actually winning. Yeah, definitely not using a Dominus. Yeah, he doesn't want to use a Dominus. He doesn't want to burn it yet. It looks like. No, like he, he definitely does not want to burn the team fights. Looks like Inhib is going to be going over to Supernova, though. Looks like Collapse comes in, hooks onto Cat Ears, but if your chance is onto Bertal Hoover. Gunslinger is by himself, so does, does two hot hits on this Super Bowl. But look at that low shit's going super low from Ventrix. Ventrix did see that opening. Stand United hasn't come out yet. They already oh. got the Inhib. There's no need to Stand United yet. They've got what they wanted. They got the Inhib. They're going to be looking down for that mid lane. Mid lane is pushing towards them, and Cavell is on that zero. Look at that. No, Caddy is just going to tank it for a little bit. Yeah, man. He, he's that tanky where he can just go do as he pleases. He's, all, he's almost like a he's almost like a seawater moon, though. Yeah, not that dead man's head. play doing a lot of work. Oh, yeah. 100%, dude. Especially off his auto attacks. They're ridiculous. Tom Kinch is a very strong support. And he, in my eyes, is very ban worthy. For sure. For sure. All right. Looks like they have their sights on Baron. It looks like it's a two-man bear right now. Caters is just hanging the entire thing. Has that Aegis and has that dead man. Let's see what they can do. A Kaipo does have a lot of percent health damage. Cavell is trying to turn off. That, they have no idea. This is what that Super is a two man Baron. This is Supernova. This has been Supernova's game plan. They always sneak these Barons. They always try to find a way with that vision control to get these Barons back into the game. We've seen this time and time again. This is their third game with a snuck Baron. Under the enemy team at roughly around the same time too, roughly around 31 minutes. So definitely need, definitely people who are playing at Supernova Aries. You have to capitalize your vision game against them if you guys want to handle that. They are just winning. Their macro play is so well. They're doing so well right now. And can't hear uh -oh. Pause. No, is that just quick reconnect right there? Yeah. Oh, there's a pause. <laughs> All right, there's Crypt. A pause. Crypt, take over. Go ahead and analyze what has been going on right now. All right. So so far in this game, it's it's been it was all in play for Fun's hands. Like they had control of this game 100%. They were winning fights. They were making the right moves. And then all of a sudden, um, the Vayne came into the fight. The Vayne got the CS. They came in the fights and they started working as a team. Uh, whenever you see Play for Fun actually go into these team fights versus um, versus. I cannot I I cannot remember the name. I don't know why I had the worst time. Supernova Ares. Um, that they would always be in a 5v4 situation and they would always have the advantage but when Vayne got the CS she got her rapid fire cannon she got she was able to get her board she started coming into fights and she started making a big difference mm -hmm. the only thing is is that they're not able they have too much burst coming from uh, Supernova that they can no longer go into these fights confidently yeah. and with the way Lee Sin is still building they're not able to go into fights at all he has a ravenous a Skirmish's Blade, a Black Cleaver, he still is not building tank. He needs to be able to get a Randuins because that is nothing but AD damage except for the Blanc. They yeah. have Kindred, they have Bane, they have Tom Kinch, and they have Shin. 
everything but the uh, the Blanc and the Shin are is is AD damage. He needs to be able to get that uh, Dead Man's Plate. He needs to be able to get um, either the Dead Man's Plate. He needs to get a War Mogs or something, and then uh, so SPO versus on top. Though, Ryan DeFrago gets taken out. Cat Ears taking another kill. Come on, man. These catfish, but look at Gunslinger. Gunslinger's gonna go down. The Lucifer Lady is gonna oh. take out Gunslinger, but look at that. The trade is going over. Supernova is gonna take is gonna get that turret. They are taking they are have the win. Akaibo gets taken down from the Lucifer Singularity and the binding. Just snuck in, threading the needle onto that. Two for two trade going on so far, yeah, but just... who comes out? Supernova. And Puerto Catars takes out takes out his Ventrix goes down. Ventrix just going down from Lisa. This is where the Lisa damage comes in, but Cavell, 1v1ing Lil Shins is also getting 1v1ing Cat Ears. Cavell is trying to wait for the taunt to come over. T does, gets devoured in there. Cat Ears does have the Sonic Resident. The exhaust comes out, Lil Shin. No, and Omni Up is going to take down Cat Ears. Cavell is by himself, dueling it 1v2, gets the Sonic Resident Dude, Strike. Cavell He's dueling, he gets Cavell it, he gets one kill. This. One more kill, gets the taunt, misses the biting. Omni Up is one on one. He takes it down. Cavell, you are a. Beast, get taking that, securing the ace after a bad t turnaround from that fight. Holy cow, Cavell, you are stepping up for your team right now. He just pulled a stop and free. He just pulled a uh, Ricky Bobby stop, pose for the frame kind of thing <laughs> after he got that last kill. Just very that well, Ricky Bobby. very well played. Yeah, he just pulled that Ricky Bobby. Very well played by Cavell. Great job. He, way to uh, get the taunt off and miss the uh, miss the binding from Lux. Otherwise, that could have been a different fight. For sure. Um, so, very well played. Good mechanics. Um, but they, you need to keep that up. And I was about to say, before um, before I keep, before Kaipo got uh, bursted by Lux, that uh, even though that they do kill Vayne, they still have a Kindred. Yeah. They still have that ranged marksman to do damage. Right. And that is vital. Because if they kill Kindred, they have Vayne. If they if they uh, kill Vayne, they have Kindred. No matter what, they're still going to have that output of damage coming in the back. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think another key thing too is how Ventrix how Ventrix flanks to burst one of the squishies out of the fight. Because if they do, that's that's almost an objective if they play that right. So keep an eye on how Ventrix plays that too. If he busts if he bursts out Lotions to make sure Lotions goes back to base, that's that's Lotions essentially out of the out of the fight if they were to start it. Right, and and that's and that's in, and that's insanely big, how Venture can just uh, 100 somebody like that. It's it's insane. You think they would be building more MR than they are? But Leeson no. just got his Spectre's cowl. Finally, just got it. But even then, and he's going to be building into a Banshee's. I mean, I I just don't know. I just don't know how he's gonna wait that long. I mean, this LeBlanc has been deadly for so long. I mean, if he does enter a dueling dueling scenario and with one of these one with one of these opponents, he can definitely win. But it's 35 minutes in, not at this stage of the game, you need to tank up. Right, it's it's without a doubt because your only real tank right now is the Renekton, like Re Renekton and Thresh. That is the only real tanks, and even uh Thresh, Thresh hasn't even really built any tanky items. You know, he, he has face in the mountain. And you see that though. He doesn't even have a one mark. And look at that, Ryan DeFrago goes in. No, look at that. Bust Lucy Singularity does bust hit on Gunslinger, but Beltran Hoover is going to do it. Akaipo takes down Berto Hoover, actually. Lee Sin is going to take down Akaipo. Lil Shiz is by on the side. Gets a double kill on Lil Shiz. Lil Shiz's damage is coming out. Gunslinger is by himself. He's trying to kite. He's so close. Then Binding comes up, misses. Omni Up is trying to get that. Lil Shiz is on the follow up. But look at here. Cavell is. On the other side, it's super low. Where is Cat Ears? Cat Ears is all the way back at base. Where is Cat Ears going? The Condemn comes up! Can he get it? It gets a shutdown. Is he gonna go for the Omni Up? Omni Up is so close! Silver Ball comes in. Silver Ball takes it. Double kill comes out. Gunslinger with that vision play. Gets the Condemn onto the little Shin. Greatly played by Gunslinger. And it looks like he's gonna be able to take out this turret. Or he's gonna have that one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like it might be. Shin does have TP. Shin does have TP. Let's see what he does with it. There's so many places where he can TP right now if he does want to. <laughs> oh yeah, look, look right above Tristana, he can he can uh, TP right by that. Yeah. Come right behind her. Mm -hmm. Baron, but the yeah. death timers are spawning. I mean, there's only ten more on Renekton. It would have been very worth it, honestly. I think they could have got that double kill on Tristana and Thresh and maybe got that inhib. Yeah, but maybe. But still, mm -hmm. Baron is in 40 seconds. Why risk it? Yeah.
for sure, for sure. And knowing how Supernova loves to play around Baron, loves to use that vision control around that and just sneak these Barons over and over again. This is how they're coming up on top, in my opinion. Like, even with individual play, this vision control over Baron is helping out so much. I mean, because look what Thresh just did. Thresh just took his sight zone and put all his uh, wards on the bottom side. Oh. All of his wards, and one of them just got cleared. So they, he needs to be able to ward that Baron because they already have six wards in front of Baron. Another thing too. For, uh, Another thing too. For, yeah. for Supernova. Yeah. Another thing to point out: Little Shins doesn't have a sight stone. That's huge. And a pause is going to come up. He does not have a sight stone. He does his smite his uh, his uh, scavenging weapon isn't the one that gives him a ward either. So. Honestly, Lil Shins that is that is huge. Lil Shins can't even insect right now. He has no wards in his inventory. That is the, I think that is one of the reasons why they couldn't force a fight because Lil Shin couldn't insect anyone because he has no sight stone. He has no wards from the scavenging item, and he and his trinket is the scanning trinket. Huge. Right. That that is a big thing, especially only in Baron's in one second. Shin is bottom. They know that the enemy jungle is also bot. They could force another Baron. For sure. But it appears Tom Kinch is DC. Tom Kinch is still DC'd. We're waiting on him to get back into the game. <clears throat> yeah. But, I mean, if look, he's right there. If he goes down and he ults to Baron, they could easily do a three-man Baron with Vayne, Kindred, and burst it down, force another fight, and that's that. All they really got to do is just push top. They have a minion weight pushing top. Mm -hmm. Burst the Baron, go top, force that, push mid, go for the other inhib, or even if they force a fight on you, finish. For sure, for sure. And, and yeah, and also Supernova, they love to play this. They love to play a Baron control, and they love to play the split pushing comp. They always want to have someone on the bot side while they're doing Baron, just in case. And they also, <laughs> and even then, they always have like someone else in the mid lane to not even like think about them doing Baron. So honestly, and yeah. the thing about that is, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. And the thing about that is, is that it it might be the enemy jungle that's in bot lane or in vending. Mm -hmm. And they have full vision of that, and they can see that, and they know that it's an easy ban. Mm -hmm. They do have vision of Ventrix though. Ventrix looks like they're gonna be trying to. They so this is the good thing. This is what you have to do. You have to try and get vision of the Baron. <clears throat> there is no. It looks like there isn't any wards onto. On to Bertolt Hoover, though. Like you said, he used all the wards on the bot side, so they need vision of that. Supernova knows that they, they don't have any vision. There's only two blue trinkets on to play for fun side. This is going to be really tense. 6k. And now, gold. look, yeah. now that they've gone, Shen could actually be pushing that in here. Yeah, Shen is going to push. Let's see what Kappa does. Kappa does get Sun Wave. He's going to get kicked. And he low. Shen picks up the kill. Oh. A little bit of that's the that's their jungle. Yeah, a little bit of a bad bad pathing right there, and look at that—they're gonna be defending this just fine. And the taunt, oh, the taunt's nice gonna taunt. dodge over the taunt, uh, dodge over that was the a great shadow right dash. There. Yep. And man, that's just gonna slow it down. But look at that Lucian so oh. low. Whoa, that's a distortion, and I think I think Gunslinger actually created a uh, little shins too. That definitely okay, looks so like a Tom Kinch and Bane can actually push. They can actually force Baron. They know Tristan has the back. They see Renekton in there. They see Lee in mid. They looks could like force this Baron. Looks it like doesn't look like they have any wards. No, it looks like they're just gonna be rotating top. To no, clear they, this. they just pinged it. Yeah, they don't want to risk it. They don't want to risk it just because Kindred is still down for another 15 seconds. So which is smart. Which is smart. They're, either that, or they're just waiting for someone to go bottom lane and have vision of. of uh, not Renekton because Ren ha Renny has TP, but someone else. Looks like Lucian is going to be going to the, the 2 on 2 coming in there. Kavada R comes out. The Lucian Sigler comes out, but misses! Devar comes out. There's only two of here. Four more down. Gunslinger is by himself. Ryan DeFranco is going to try and collapse onto Gunslinger. Cat Ears has to flash away over the wall. Oh. Lucian is going to rocket jump over. Cat Ears activates his great health. And a Gunslinger has to close. Oh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver Slash comes out. Stan United is going to come out. Cavell is, on, is with a fight now. They're still waiting for Kindred. Are they still going to keep it up? The hook comes out. Virtual Hoover is getting so low. Gunslinger gets on a rampage. Lucian gets taunted out. Cat Ears is going to do, do that. And the, and the Condemn is going to go back. But look at that. Cat Ears. Double kill comes out from, from Gunslinger. Vert, Vertrix is going to try and get into that. But no. Looks like Cat Ears is going to try and deter him. He's going to try and stop the ports while everyone else is doing Baron. And man, what a great play coming from Supernova in that fight. Yeah, that that was that was very beautiful. Great job to the uh, Cat Ears for doing what doing what Cat Ears does best. All game has been doing nothing but uh, 
devouring that Vayne, getting her out of tough predicaments, and that was a great job on Vayne's part to build that uh, Mercury Scimitar and force a quick silver sash. Otherwise, she would have been caught out, and that could, and that team fight would have went completely different. Very yeah. well played. Great job to have the, uh, the game knowledge. Yeah, it looks like that three are down. Only two left. Bertel Hoover is up in five seconds. Inhip is going to go towards uh, Supernova and looks like they have their sights on the bottom side. It's only Lil Shins and Ryan DeFranco to defend. They're going to take their second Inhib. And look at that. The Baron is up. They're going to try to throw out the hook. Barely misses Cat Ears. But looks like they're going to back. They're also going to try to take that Dragon as well and rotate towards the red buff. If it is up. And it is. Man, huge swing from Supernova. They allocated resources to Gunslinger, so he so she can come back into the game. They played they played it well enough to stall, but also let's point out like the mistakes from playing for fun. Little Shin didn't get a sight stone. If he got a sight stone, I can see why he built he built damage because he can just go in the back and assassinate someone, but he didn't. So honestly, definitely have to see how well this this is gonna turn out for play for fun. Oh, definite. Um. Also, what I really like to see that both of these AD carry have is regards. Which, uh, the reason I like to see that item built, especially in a game like this, is because it does extra damage. It does up to 15 extra damage to a uh, person with greater health than you, greater maximum health than you. And with the way that it's set up so far, look at look at the team against Tristana. Uh, Supernova. They have a Shin. They have a Tom Kinch. Um... They, those are both really high maximum champions that are on top of Tristana. Mm -hmm. And then along with that, for Vayne, they have a Renekton. They have a uh, Lee, supposed, Lee Sin supposed to be there, but I know Thresh also has a higher maximum health as well. So it, it just does a lot of damage overall. But in the Vayne's condition, the proc off of her Silver Bolt is doing magic for her team. And look at her. She even went... Uh, she even sold her rapid fire cannon and went into a Triforce. Whew. Definitely going, definitely going to increase her damage by a lot. And just, let's take a look at the gold difference here since we are on pause. Top lane differential in gold is roughly 1,000. So not that, not that big at this time of the game, 42 minutes in. Jungle, 1,000 gold. Mid lane, 2,000, roughly 2,000 gold. But this is, the, I think this is the biggest disparity in the AD carry position. Because Vayne was so far behind, but they allocated so many resources to Vayne, and Vayne picked up kills. She is now 2,000. She's now at 20.4k, while Tristan is barely touching 18. So, 2.5k ahead at she, this. She point. has almost three. Yeah, she almost has 2.5 to 3k above, and that is that is astronomical, especially in the fact that she was losing lane and doing, and she was behind so early, uh, so much. Because Tristan, I believe, had four kills above her at one point. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. was actually ridiculous, and then she came back not only those four kills, but topped it another kill. Mm -hmm. She's actually above Tristana by another kill. Same deaths, two less assists, but she's doing phenomenal. And and the way team fighter are going out, they're playing really communicative. They're really focusing who needs to be where. And look at this, all five, right now. Look at the map. All five of play for fun are down and bottom and yes I did forget this is a best of three. Oh yeah alright so this is only the first game so we still have two games left hopefully they do adapt the game is taking a little bit longer but uh, Cat Ears is coming back there is Cat Ears I think we gotta point out what what Cat Ears has been doing for the team if you compare how Bertolt Hoover is playing for his team and how, how Cat Ears is playing for his Cat Ears is making so many bigger plays for his team. Cat Ears is extending himself to help his team. Sitting right by Gunslinger having amazing synergy with that. And Cat Ears, scumbag Cat Ears taking 5 kills as well. So honestly I think we gotta give a lot of props to, to Cat Ears and his support play. And his vision game and what he's doing. The team's vision game overall. If Cat Ears is a shot caller, he's doing a, tr a phenomenal do job in leading it. Oh 100%. Whoever is the shot caller for that team is doing absolutely amazing. They're making the right moves. They're making the right decisions. And look, all five of, um, gosh, I lose their names so much. Supernova? Supernova. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. But <laughs> all five of Supernovas except for LeBlanc are headed toward top. And they can easily push that other turret in. Why they have supers in bottom and mid? Because they have to defend that. Otherwise, it's going to be a massive push that just comes all at once. Yep. 
Really standard game plan when two inhibs are down, just focus on the last lane. Lucy Celia is gonna miss Gunslinger. She is gonna take a little bit of that turret aggro though. Play for fun does have to deter off this, but look at that two siege minions is taking damage, but Tristana has that range. She is level 18, so she can definitely handle those uh Baron empowered siege minions in regards to that. Hook comes out. But now look at bot. Yes, yeah, but look at this. Ventrix is on the backside. He's looking to pull someone out of the fight. He's either pulling out Omni up out of the fight or pulling off Lil Shins out of the fight. So that's how I see that is. But look at this, Lil Shin is trying to do all Ventrix and the ultimate comes out. And the top top flash comes on to Lil Shins! That's but no follow-up! Shadow. No follow-up though on Ka Ka on Cavell Shadow Dash. So unfortunate. That was so, so beautiful, but man, Supernosa just didn't communicate enough in regards to that. Gunslayer just gonna life steal this. The blue buff up. Ventrix is gonna do it. Decent amount of damage, but ha has that hexer stringer. So Lotion has that hexer stringer to deal with Ventrix. They, they, they could honestly just yep. force this. They can honestly just tank it, have Tom Kent or Shin tank it, and then just roll with it. Because they they, they in Hazard ultimate. Oh man, that auto from from uh, Akaipo onto Lotion's 500 health down. They're just keeping Lotion off to start a fight. If Bertha Hoover can land it. Land a hook onto a squishy, or even a, or even a, a hook. Ventrix flashes behind. Lotion is gonna get the Ethereal Chain. Two chains comes in. The kick comes out from Ventrix. The Stain Unite comes out for Lotion. Can Lotion capitalize? The tongue comes out, and look at that. Lotion is gonna go down. Ventrix is, is gonna nice. take him down. They're down one man. Ventrix is super low though. And that's a tower. And a tower gets taken from. Go oh, no! The final spark that's from a one a Omni up takes it down. Gunslinger is going to go for the dual full. Lotion is doing a lot of damage. He's going to take a lot of damage. Gunslinger is going to get eaten up. Devar from Cat Ears, but no, it's going to get spinning right back out. Man, those two crits. One more would have taken him out. Oh, 100%. And now Vayne doesn't have all, but still has that massive cat. And Cavella's gonna get there. Uh, and get look at up. that and damage. And takes out Ryan DeFranco. Cavella's still on the front line trying to zone him out. Lil Shins is gonna take. No, it's not. Cavella's gonna go down from. And Akaipo gets the kill onto Bertel Hoover. Lil Shins is gonna rocket jump in. But look at that. The Lambs for Spidey is on. As Lil Shins is just by himself. Gets devoured. He's gonna get spin out. And, he's, and Cat Ears takes him out. One Omni up. He's gonna flash and throws out to the final spark. But he's gonna miss. Cat Ears gonna go oh, for the top flash. Gets a second nom one. He's gonna devour. He's gonna spit it back out to Akaipo and Gunslinger, and Omni up is gonna go down. The ace comes That's out from game. Gunslinger. This is gonna be game here. 82, 80.2k 80, oh, 80 to 98, 91.k, 27 to 37. Game one goes over. Oh, one more. Lil Shins tries to go for, for Akaipo, but misses the Sonic Wave just barely. And 27 to 38. Rough start from Supernova, but man, they picked it up with those Baron buffs, with <clears throat> allocating resources to Gunslinger. And just holding off enough from their early mid game, so that so that Lil Shins Tristana cannot dominate and this, and uh, continue the siege. All right, yeah, that that was awesome. Um, that was really great gameplay from Supernova. Did a great job having ward control, ha having vision and ward control around Baron, keeping um, keeping play for fun. Very curious and very unknowing to uh, what they're doing and what they're up to. They took two Barons without uh, playing for fun knowing. They uh, kept they kept control. The the fact of Ventrix being bottom with the LeBlanc, with uh, finishing the Lee Sin was huge. Was able to get the damage off. Sin, Shin saw that he needed help. So he ulted down. That forced members of the team to go help out because Shin was now bottom. And, now, and they had killed Lee Sin. So that forced another person to go down and have to defend. Well, that was a four. That's a four v three situation on top of top tower. That was the last remaining inhibitor tower. Once they did that, they just rolled right through. They took the tower, took the inhib, and did what they wanted. It, it, it was almost they they were the pulling out their inner mundo. I go where I please. <laughs> All right, that's game one. So one game over to Supernova Aries. Can claim that if one more win goes over to them, they will take first place in this tournament, in Reverie Esports Tournament number 27. So it's all on how Play for Fun is going to adapt to this. Would they? Will they ban out the vein? Will they stop that? Definitely want to see how well it works out. All right. Where do I set this? Chicken. All right.
right. So it looks like there. It looks like uh, Supernova. Supernova actually looks like they want to take the same side. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> what? What? Play for fun is gonna look like they're gonna be taking the blue side again since they did lose. Yeah, the code. The code's the same. Actually, it's here. Oot. Oh no! It looks like they want to. I think it depends who won the coin flip. So they're trying to figure out who gets on the side. It looks like Supernova is going to get on blue side now. It should be whoever wins uh, picks the side. I think it was whoever loses. I don't know. I'm not too sure. That's all based on whatever rules uh, Reverie Esports placed on in regards to the finals. But they'll figure it out. They shall discuss amongst themselves. Yeah, it looks like Supernova is going to be on the blue side for the for game two of the series. Definitely want to see how well Supernova can, if they can keep up this role, keep up those barren, sneaky barons with that vision control. And also see if play by play by uh, play for fun. Sorry, play for fun can adapt to that vision control and make sure they don't take those barons because Supernova is playing around that baron so well. They place a bunch of wards around that 20, 25, 30 minute mark, and when they have pressure on the bot side, they start they just start doing it. It's really really well done from Supernova in regards to that. Definitely a hiccup on that early game though. Oh yeah, the the vein was having such a hard, especially with the pressure that the Tristana was having with the uh, with the proc of her E, it was just really dominant. But I was really surprised that Vayne was ahead in CS at one point. That was astonishing to me, um, that she was actually able to keep up in CS and be ahead of Tristana, even though that she wasn't doing, she wasn't dying a lot. She still wasn't being there whenever she needed to be to get kills. So because of the reaction time from the bot lane. They, they definitely need to pick that up and hopefully help their jungle out a little bit more, especially if somebody gets caught in a uh, river. So uh, that that's something that really needs to happen. Definitely. But let's let's go ahead and talk about play for fun. Play for fun needs to get that warning down. They need to be able to team communication. They need to keep the warning. They they, they just really need to focus objective right than focus on these one-for-one -one lane matchups. That's what really got them, was Renekton was trying to 1v1 the Shin all the time. And um, they were just trying to force these fights that just were not in their favor. So they they really need to fix that. For sure. Um, especially whenever the fact that Shin has two TPs. Shin had the ultimate to go to right to his teammate, and he had a TP to force back the lane. So even if he would have used his old down bottom to save his teammate and they came out on top that would have gave you time to push the what push the wave and then back and then he tps pushes the wave back more and there's still a 4v3 bottom and it's a 1v1 top yeah definitely so we're just they, they need to they need to think about getting the rotations down to where it's not going to be in the negative way they either need to get champions that have more poke and burst that way they don't really have the opportunity to be able to push on them as much as they do. Or they just need to be able to get champions that have map presence like like Shin. For sure. Like a TF mid would have been perfect right there. Yeah, definitely want to see how Play for Fun adapts to uh, how uh, what Supernova plays. But we are on the best of three, uh, the second game of best of three, and we're hoping to see another exciting game come out, hopefully just as eventful as the first one. It was amazing to watch, play for fun, uh, try their hardest, and the turnaround happened. Uh, Supernova really have come back to get avenge for their sister team, even though their sister team might have got third or fourth place. Let, it, it'd really be something to see them get first place just because of that fact. Mm -hmm, for sure. I just want to see how how Lil Shin, the jungler, adapts it. Because when he went Lee Sin, he didn't go that side stone. He he did. He built. He built very very offensively, which would have paid off if 
he was able to get to that backline and it's forced fights, but he wasn't able to because he didn't have a sight or he didn't have a war to jump to. Or if not that, they could have just kept up the siege as well. So, so I don't know. They just, I, either they have to adapt and identify their game plan, a game plan in the middle of it, if they want to win, and also maintain, like you said, that vision control against Supernova, because these guys are beast at these at this vision control right now. Oh, they are. They're they're insane with it. Not only are they awesome with keeping up the ward, they're in all. They're awesome with clearing as well. They have they have really good ideas of where the to them, and they know how to get to the wards safely. They never go alone, which is a key factor in how their team fights have been. They never go alone. Mm -hmm, definitely. Unless it's unless it's LeBlanc, you know. Then then LeBlanc is like has a clone, so she always goes alone. I want to see how uh, I want to see how Play for Fun is going to be drafting this time because they they got that early Lux draft, got punished very very hard from Ventrix's LeBlanc. So I don't know. They might want to save that mid lane pick for a little bit later because revealing that pick very very early against Ventrix, where Supernova wants to save that comp pick for him in the mid lane, definitely want to play around that. Maybe do some flex picks in that top of mid. Tr maybe try to secure that Lulu so they know. And also Lulu is a very safe laner too. It's very hard to kill because of her ultimate, so definitely have to see what they want to do in regards to that mid lane match because that is a pretty big disparity when watching Ventrix against Omni up when he was playing LeBlanc into Lux. Oh, 100%. It's 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 very it's it's something very good to see. Um, even though Lux uh, had a very hard time in lane, LeBlanc uh, she was able to come back into the game. Do a do insane burst damage, pick up some important kills, nullify their ability to push, only for a short while though. It was it was still a very well played game. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I'm excited to see what else this next game will bring to us. I am I am just awesome. Yeah, and I wanna see so so right now, uh, Supernova, they might be swapping the support just because the support did DC a good amount of times previously in game one. So so we are just waiting on what on what Cat Ears wants to do. Supernova support on how they should approach it in regards to this. They may have a support. They might have Cat Ears just keep on playing through the lag. So we'll give you, keep you guys updated on that. So we'll just have to see what they're going to be doing with Cat Ears and how they're going to be approaching it. Yeah, Kaipo, Jungler, Cavell, Top Laner, Gunslinger, 80, Ventrips, Mid Lane, and Cat here support. I want to see this Bard. I want to see if Bard comes out in these in the next next game or next two games. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm totally zoning out right now. Oh, no, you're fine. Um... Ah. So right now we're just right now they're just discussing in regards to what they want to do for Supernova support because Supernova support is lagging a little bit. Is restarting this router right now, so we will, we will get an update soon. I guess right now we can just take a little bit of a break while while they get things figured out and get things situated. So, so we'll just touch base in the next couple minutes. I'm just gonna grab a drink of water and be right back. Uh, Crypt, you can go and take a break as well if you'd like. We can stay online and just talk a little bit about the team comps. Awesome. I will be right back.
Hey guys, I'm back. Let's see how well they are coming along here. Nothing too crazy. They're just waiting on if Cat here can play or not for Supernova. Alright, I'm back. Hello? Yes. We are just waiting. It looks like Sadu has stepped into the lobby here. Sadu 234. Might be the separate cat ears in this game. How do you pronounce his name? Su Sadu. Sudo? I was gonna pronounce Sadu. 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 Will Sadu. Sadu. Will Sadu. Sadu in the support. Be the sub for Supernova Aries. Yeah. Alright, yeah, it looks like Sadu <laughs> will be stepping in for Cat Ears. Yeah, and there and unfortunately Cat Ears, even though how even though Cat Ears is playing phenomenally in the last two games. Unfortunately, he has internet issues, so they're going to be bringing their su sub to do, and to do will be su will be the remaining support for Supernova. And once they get him into chat, they are good to go. And we're going to get this started in Champion Select Game Two. Let's see if Sadu can hold its weight versus Cat Ears. Cat Ears was played phenomenally in the last two games. We were shoutcasting, and Cat Ears made huge plays for Supernova, for Supernova, and had a tremendous vision control for them. <coughs> Definitely want to see how this bot lane matchup because when we were watching Gunslinger and Gunslinger and uh, Cat Ears did have really good synergy. So, who are you thinking? What do you think about Sadu so far after taking a look at his stats real quick? Uh, I've actually had not a chance to look at him. I'm about to actually scope out what he's got. Um, Definitely a support main. Um, what is it? Yeah, def definitely support main. Um, plays a lot of threat. Oh my gosh! All these are in rank game, and he does he does nothing but support really, except for maybe a couple times. But overall, big thresh player plays bard, plays brom. Oh dude, I would love to see a bard. Oh Please. yeah, I totally, I really want to see a bard here. But looks like Supernova is on the blue side. The first ban will be coming out. Let's see what they decide to ban here. And it looks like the first ban is a Wukong. They really do not like the Wukong. I really wonder why. Um, and tell me if that, do you hear that noise? Which noise? Um, that. Yeah? You breathing? Okay, I'm gonna try to. You breathing? No, I'm gonna try to come back. No, um, 
I've been I've been trying to get off of of smoking. Like oh, okay. Smoking now. And, <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the, the 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 pin. It's like high. It's like high end stuff, but okay. it, the the turbo on it makes it like a rattle noise. Mm, okay. I hate it. <laughs> for but, sure. Uh, um, right. Wukong Malphite for the blue team, along the with the Callista. Inch. The Callista. I really want to wear the Vanity Callista. Mundo and Tom Catcher Raka. Pretty standard bands right there. Tom Catcher, of course. Cat ears did play it. Mean Tom Catcher. I'm assuming they're afraid of what Sadu can pull off. Sadu. Really well, but look at that Lulu pickup. Really strong pickup. Super strong flex pick. So Lulu can go top lane, can go middle, can go support. They have no idea where this Lulu wants to go and where to go. So honestly, pick and draft. And yeah, pick, uh, pick band is going definitely in favor of um, in favor of Supernova right now. And we are definitely going to be seeing um, possibly even a pickup of the support, considering the support is now last pick. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, that Lulu can go anywhere. I don't know. I would love to see. Ooh, a cow! A cow! A cow, a cow comes cow. out. <laughs> that cow. So, so, so Crip, you you were getting super excited about the cow getting coming out. So, tell me a little bit more about the cow. Okay, so the way um the way that the cow is such a beneficial factor in this game, he is so strong early game, especially if they don't really have that necessary um CC to knock away a champion. And then, because the, he has sustain, he has bully, he is everything that I love in a support. I'm an ABC main, and I love that in support. I love um, Alistair, I love Braum, I love Tarek. Dude, I love any support that has the healing ability with the tankiness. It's ridiculous. And not only that, but he has a headbutt pull combo that just makes him so much more beautiful. Um, especially in with that Jarvan right there, that is such a great engage coming over from Play for Fun. Amazing engage. Followed up by, uh, followed up by the Rek'Sai Teemo hover over here coming on, um, Supernova Ares. Mm -hmm. And look at this, Ka Cavell? No, no, the Urgot. Come on, your Urgot's be kidding me. Definitely want to see a little bit of Ventrix pulling off his inner keen here, but no, it looks like it's just going to be a standard pickup of Rek'Sai, possibly. It's going to stay hovered. Yeah, it's going to get locked in here, and Gunslinger always hovering over that Teemo. See what he wants to pick up here. Please. And he's going to go with that Vayne again. Back with Vayne again. Yeah, Lulu, Lulu Vayne. It's actually going to be a very devastating combo just because it's going to be very hard to get to Lulu, get to Vayne because of the PLS loop can provide. But we do not know if that is actual support Lulu yet. Yeah, we got to see. We don't know. Um. So I, I just I just already love the engage map. Is that Vayne still has that tumble? Vayne can still tumble out of the J fold and still uh, not be stuck into a weird predicament. But look at this Irelia talent. They're looking for this team fight. They're looking for the assassination and the burst. All they're going to get is Jarvan Cataclysm, EQ combo Cataclysm, Irelia talent backup. Alice is going to be there just to get the back line off of them. They, that's, that's all that's going to happen. They really want to get onto Gunslinger as soon as they can. They they know that with the vein they need he needs to be shut down early even in mid game still needs to be shut down cannot let him come back and get CS they can't let him come back and get kills no matter what in a oh. fizz even better than Irelia fizz that, top that lane perfect because the fact that he picked fizz that now gives them AP and they were really AD heavy now that gives them follow up with the J4 Cataclysm not only that but fizz also fizz's ultimate makes such a great thing. When Jarvan goes in for that Cataclysm, not not only are they going to be stuck, but now they're going to have a Fizzle to worry about. A for Fizz, sure. a Talon, and look at this, Lissandra Thresh picked up right here. They're going to go for a strong team fight as well, with Lissandra lie down, Thresh lie down, Rek'Sai in the backfield to do whatever, and then Overgrowth to go on top of Vayne whenever she gets picked off. So it's, it's all going to be about how well Supernova can stay together, and I love that about this team. They stick together very well. They have very well communication. They ward exceedingly well as well. So, I, I just cannot. I'm I'm uber excited for this. I cannot wait. Yeah. To see and, how this is going to go down. Yeah. And this is also when Ventrix has to blind pick his mid lane into someone else. Well, he knows who the mid lane is. It looks like he's going to be a talent in the mid lane. Is he going to lock in? He knows the matchup, so he's going to be. He is going to go for that Lissandra. And look at this. There is. Remember, I mentioned the Caitlyn counter. So if Lil Shins can play this Caitlyn well into Gunslinger, he did it well. He did it well last time. He can definitely do well again with this Caitlyn. So definitely want to see okay. if this would work out. But this this is what I'm seeing right now. 
Kay you know Caitlyn's who Caitlyn counters uh, counters hardest in this game? Sivir, I'm assuming. She, no, <laughs> she. Oh, Sivir is the hardest counter for Caitlyn. Oh Caitlyn yeah. Caitlyn counters uh, Corky the hardest in this game. Just the reason for that being is because Corky, when he uses his Valkyrie or when he uses his package, he he will go over and he will go over try to get that extra AOE damage. Caitlyn can dodge rockets with her uh, 50 with her uh, 50 caliber bolt net. Also, she can get out of the uh, Valkyrie with her net as well. Plus this, uh, the plus the extra CC ability when he does Valkyrie. If he goes over trap, it does apply to him. It's extra, it's extra damage right there. So for me, um, Caitlyn is not necessarily the strongest pick against Vayne, just because Vayne has a extra mobility above Caitlyn, especially when it comes to um, like level level 10, 10 up. For sure. Just because, just because by that time Vayne's gonna have that tumble she's gonna have that tumble leveled mm -hmm. and she's going to be able to spit out tumbles every like two or three seconds yeah definitely i'm definitely want to see this matchup lissandra into lissandra into uh talent and also lulu into fizz lulu can bully out to fizz fizz still has those weaknesses of the, those early games but yeah they so of course we know that lulu is going to be there to stop assassinations but lissandra is also a really smart pickup in regards to uh, it's in regards to stopping Fizz from Playful Trickster after he lands, stopping Talon once, he's, once he finishes and he gets out of stealth. So this is a very smart team, very strong burst, but they are relying on Gunslinger to carry for this in the late game. So that's going to be a little bit difficult, especially if especially if Sh Lil Shin Talon can can come out of the laning phase ahead and has and have that instant assassination potential on a squishy. All right, now we're just waiting here. We still have another three minutes. So, Crypt, are you still there? Looks like Crypt isn't there for anyone for some reason. Let's see here. All right, I do apologize. Looks like Crypt is a little bit disconnected right now. But yeah, just gonna go a little bit more more about oh. the team comps. I don't know if you were Crypt. Are you still there? Yeah, I don't know what just happened, dude. It just like went. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. I was just gonna go a little bit more, more about the team comp. So, in regards to Super Supernova, they have that vision control. They'll they'll always have that. Then they, they know how to play around Baron. Mid game, mid game, uh, Lulu sh Lulu shouldn't be able to die against Fizz in the top lane because Lulu is a sh pretty strong lane bully. She she can definitely pressure the wave, and she can uh, definitely stop Fizz from getting a kill onto her. Lissandra into Talon. I'm actually not too sure in regards to the knowledge of that. Lissandra. Can stop the assassination of Talon. The question is, can can Lissandra get 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 on Talon quick enough before Talon can go invisible and Lissandra can get can, can get kill pressure on that Talon? And the way I see it, if it hits late game, I, the, when it, if it, it does hit late game, I definitely see it favoring a little bit, just a little bit more towards play for fun because they do have two strong assassins. If they get ahead and have Caitlyn, Caitlyn does have a mid game drop, but late game she is very she is pretty strong, not as strong as Vayne, but pretty decently strong just because of her uh, range and also with the Alistar and the ultimate and J4 creating zones so definitely want to see how play for fun plays against supernova in this game of two here and we have 20 seconds left we're about to jump into it Ventrix I haven't seen Ventrix on the list of yet he's been favoring assassins more maybe building Lissandra as that kind of player too so definitely want to see how that turns out and yeah, let's see here. So do going on that thresh. Uh, when we take a look at his stats real quick, he is known for that thresh play. So definitely want to see what he does with it. Uh, maybe he may have some better synergy in regards to that with the I'm thresh back. vein. Hey, Crypt. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why, but it kept disconnecting me from the voice chat. So I just decided to just restart Discord. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that works completely fine. <laughs> All right. So, um, other than that, I'm. Uh, let's see. So it's a, a Lulu into a um, Lulu. Fizz. It's a Fizz. Okay. So this is this is all gonna be Lulu's gonna win this lane. I'm sorry. For sure. For sure. Um, I agree. Lulu's gonna win this lane. Hundred percent. Reason being is because not only does she have the poke advantage, but she also has a shield. So if he all ends her. He, she has a shield, and then and then post six she has overgrowth. 
So wild we can growth. no longer dive. So wild yeah, growth. Oh, okay. Connecting. Wild growth. Wild growth. I call it overgrowth <laughs> because it makes somebody huge. Okay? So um, she does – she has her wild growth, and that's going to just nullify anything. As, as long as he jumps in on her, on her tower, he, he's done. Um, when it comes to mid lane, Lissandra versus Talent, Lissandra – is in my favor for this one just because the fact that she has that heavy burst damage and lockdown. It's ridiculous how much lockdown she has. Talon only has the poke, so as long as she as long as she stays back and she's just able to get CS until post six, if he dives her, she has the advantage to come in and just turn everything. Not only that, but and she can turn things around in a two v one gank. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um so I will give her that. When it comes to bot lane, Vayne Thresh into a Alistair Caitlin. Um, it's all going to be about a skill matchup. It's going to be about mechanics, and it's going to be about positioning. Mm -hmm. it's, this isn't a certain who like going to win lane just because of the Caitlyn has longer range or Alistair's tanky or Thresh has a little bit more lockdown. Mm -hmm. Just because he is locked down lasts longer. He does a, he does his dissonance into a flay, mm -hmm. whereas Alistair's headbutt pulverizes a combination that you do at the same time. Or if they're trying, or if they're really in front of the tower, you can flash. He, uh, pulverize and then headbutt into tower mm -hmm. like that's the only way that his skills are going to be that much of a lockdown if, is if he does that but Thresh's lockdown and then Alistair's ultimate just makes him really tanky whereas Thresh's provides a CC slow yeah and I also actually and... want to see how Gunslinger plays into this so there's actually a little mechanic it's uh so if there's input and there's there's uh, uh offensive and defensive uh, input buffering so, so this is what uh, veins can do. This is very hard to do, but if you're a really good vein player, you can, if you read the Alistar correctly on his headbutt, you can condemn his headbutt away, and that can literally push the Alistar anywhere, as, but away from you, which is actually a very high, very high mechanical thing to do as a vein. But you can definitely condemn Alistar while on it, while during his uh, headbutt, headbutt uh, pathing. So I just want to see right. if Gunslinger can pull that off. And already right here, look at this. Lissandra already a hub, uh, already up in uh, CS and in health, just because of the fact that she's been dodging the rake from Talon. Look at that, Randy Franco goes in for the playful trickster, but Cavell starts off with that shield, just gonna nullify that damage. So this is how, so this is how Lo Lo Shins is gonna be playing this matchup. He's gonna have to try and zone out Gunslinger from CS and s s use those headshots. So definitely want to see if. Gunslinger can a Gunslinger can get some CS and edge his way in. Definitely want to see that. And look at that level two goes over to the bot lane. Right, um, definite. Uh, already have the headbutt pulverize combo. He did level the headbutt pulverize, so he he will have that combination to go ahead and be aggressive with the early on. But they're pushing really hard right now because the peacemakers from. Caitlyn, they are going to be pushing exceedingly well. They know Vayne can't farm that well in the tower, or especially early on. So they're going to try to use that as advantage, I guess, and try to get her to back off. And look at that. Uh, Ventry's taking a lot of damage from Lotion. The flash auto attack comes out. The ignite comes out. The potion is ticking. Can Ventry survive? It looks like he will be. Yes, he does. He does survive from that uh, flash burn. Fla uh, two flashes burn and ignite burn from Lotion. So Sunder's spell does go over towards... Uh, Ventrix's favor. However, Rek'Sai is gonna come in. Lucian gets hooked under turret though. Exile comes out. He's so low. And the flash pole, the flash headbutt. No, the flash pulverize actually goes onto both of them. And man, Lucian's stepping a little bit too far. And Ventrix can take a lot of damage. He's so low. The bleeding is gonna tick him a little bit. Lucian playing this lane, lane very, very well into Ventrix. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see how uh, Gunslinger is gonna react from having a new support. This is that's honestly something big. Um, especially whenever you're already so used to a certain support, um, you have to rebuild synergy. Mm, and for sure. so far, so far, um, Gunslinger and Sadu. Ah, oh gosh, no, not Sadu. Um, or Cadiers. Cadiers had really good synergy. They 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 were like really well together. So I can't wait to see how they're gonna adjust to this. Yeah, how Gunslinger Sadu works out. War comes out, but uh, look at this. This is kind of like an exact replica, uh, replica of game one. Little Shins dominating the, dominating the lane against Gunslinger. The only difference is that the mid lane now is actually a Little Shin, and Omni Up is back is in the jungle role. So a little bit of a role swap in here. So not playing the same matchup. And turns out Little Shin is working out, but Brian DeFranco does going on to Cavell. 
No, it's just gonna go and play by Trickster. We're gonna miss that. CS differential, yeah, that... yeah, CS differential is going towards the mid and top, mid and bottom side. While top lane is gonna go towards Cavell. That that's all that's gonna happen is that that's only that's Fizz's only option is to WQ and try to playful Trickster the uh, glitter lance mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, but this is the only time I've actually seen Ventrix start to lose lane from the games we saw. Hook comes out to Vancouver though. The the con the exhaust comes oh, out. Look at this! Omni up is down forward. the bot side. The f the flag and drag comes out. Gunslinger is getting super low. This is gonna stop. But Sadu gets gets headbutt oh, back to, to that. Game. And I keep what's coming down. The TP comes out. Sadu flashes away. Lucian's is so low. He gets it. But Lucian gets the first blood. And then uh, Sadu does go down. Omni up is gonna get it. He eats it. Gunslinger does take the kill. It does get it. Um, and it's gonna be a two for one so far. And look at this. He's making a run for it. Where's Bertolt gonna be coming? The flash, the glitter lance, is he gonna be? He's very low. Akaipo is gonna be coming down. Akaipo is gonna wow. take it, gets the knockup. The pulverize comes out. Akaipo is trying to get the chase on. Cavell is trying to get it. He's so low. The, the shield comes out. Gonna throw out a prey seeker, but not gonna take it down. Two for one trade. A really good turnaround from that. From that gank. Super well played by Supernova in that. So, you wanna know something magical that happened during that team fight? What happened? Um. For some reason, my speed dropped down to 0.5, so I saw it all in slow mo. <laughs> and I was watching, like the, uh, I was watching Gunslinger as he got trapped. I was like thinking, "Holy crud, dude, he's dead!" Next thing you know, Thunderlord is along with the third silver proc. It was glorious. <laughs> Just getting that last kill. I thought he was actually gonna be gone because he did eat a trap in that bush. Right. I yeah, I thought he, I thought he was gone just because he did do that, and mm -hmm. Jarvan could have easily got a Q off. Um, no problem, but. Overall, it just went into Gunslinger's favor, and now he's starting off in a good way. He has 1-0-1 with 29 CS, to Caitlyn's 41. Even though he's down in CS that much, he's still about even with her because he has that kill and assist. Mm -hmm. 300 gold below, actually, because Caitlyn did get that first blood gold, so... Ah, uh, she did. Yeah, she that, did get that, that, okay. yeah, she did get that first blood gold onto Sadu. No, onto... Onto Akaipo. No, actually, uh, onto Sadu. I'll make sure just, Yep, we got that first blood gold onto Sadu. Just... Barely Dude. getting it before before she went down, so. But that was a beautiful flash flay. You got three of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, very well played by Sadu. And, oh, well, looks like Kavala can get caught down. down. Has to. No, he's not. He's not even going to wild growth. He's just going to take it into the face, and Omniab's going to pick up that kill. Right. That, that was just a bad uh, That was just a bad use of uh, wild growth, and he knew that, and that was very well played. Uh, good job to keep it safe. Mm hmm. Look at this, Omni up is coming in. Ventrix is going solo. Throws the ultimate by itself, but look at that. Akaipo is on the bottom side too. Ventrix is oh. going to go down. Is he going to go down another hit? Is Ventrix going to get hit? Omni up has it, and he's going to smack him in the face, but Little Shins is also going to go down. This is where Gunslinger is actually winning the lane out and vain into the Caitlyn matchup. 2 0 oh, 1. Gunslinger is looking really, really well off. Looks like it's now Gunslinger's turn to carry this game in this early game I right now. I just want to point out if that was calculated by Alistair to like knock her into that trap. Well played, sir. <laughs> I commend you. <laughs> that was, dude. That's the only thing my eye caught was the Alistair headbutt went right onto the trap, and I was like, dude. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> M1. <laughs> Gonna get that assist onto that cupcake right there. <laughs> onto that cupcake. Onto that Amen, cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was glo I don't I don't know why, but I, I just I just stuck onto that <laughs> for sure, um, <laughs> for sure. I mean, you know, it's the small things as you're casting. So even even though that they have a new support and they have to work on their synergy, Sudo is doing a great job right now. This is a beautiful lantern into a, a flay, um, caused a, caused a kill onto Vayne as well. So it put it put Vayne up in up in kills and up in see and up in gold overall. I do believe so. Yeah, just a uh, little bit, a little bit. Just a. Hey, that little bit matters. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And Cavalli is going to take out that scuttle, defending that pink ward out here. Jungle, wait to see. Man. Looks like Ventrix is going to get that blue from a Kaipo. But man, this is so. I'm. This is where Ventrix is essentially playing as more of a supporter control mage mid lane instead of that assassin that we usually tend to see from his pool. Throws out help picks, gets the glitter lance oh. on it, so he's gonna connect that. But look at that, Lucian's going in, has to, has to back out, and little Shins is here. Throws out the peacemaker, throws out the ultimate, and he's gonna go down. He does it, just so close. 
blinking red on that the was... left side on your screen right there. So close, but look at this. They're sieging that... up mid lane. They grouped up. They want to take out this mid turret. Really proactive move right here. Ventrix does have to back out, and they are going to give up this turret. Really good rotation from this bottom lane. Oh, I don't know. Look at Lulu. Lulu and Thresh are coming down from the bottom and top side. Oh, flag and drag. Um, no. Turret is going to go down, though. Flag really and drag, you say. It looks like they are going to go to drag, and they do. Uh, looks like they are going to have ward coverage set up well enough to uh, oh. cover this dragon. So they will try to force dragon. Um, Vayne does have ultimate. They're playing very, very um, proactively, which is really good. This is this is how they like to play the early game. They've always they're always at it, but the hook comes up from Lil Shin. I'm gonna get that pretty secret in the face. We're trying to look for that. They have the ward. Is he's oh and god! He was about to eat that cupcake so close. Can he go through? Can he go through? No, he does not. And uh, and Jarvan does take that dragon right there. First dragon does go over there, and they are ahead in goal with one k. Valley is going to try and get some pressure on this top turret. See, you, you know what I've always wondered? Mm -hmm. um, I've always wondered why um, traps and stuff did so little damage. Because in real life, if you stepped on a bear trap like that, your your ankle would be like snapped. Yeah, I know. Well, actually, it's for Yorl, so it's actually a little bit different. <laughs> I mean, if, but, there, there should, there should, be, there should still, be a mechanic in the game where if you are a Yorl and you get on a snap trap, it does like 25% of your health. Oh, look at that! Look at Seduce pathing, though! He walks around, but Akaipo does get that. Gets the hook, does go wide, gets the oh. play, though! Gets the knock on Lil Shins! Looks like he's gonna be going down! And Ventrix gonna, is gonna get that snare, Gunslayer is gonna take that kill. Cataclysm comes out onto Ventrix. Ventrix is gonna get a flag drag. Sado is under the turret! Bertal Hoover is gonna get... Bertal Hoover is gonna slay Sado, and Ventrix is gonna throw that Glacial Prison onto herself. But Lil Shin is gonna pick it up with that ultimate right there. And look at that, 2 for one A little bit gritty from... From uh, Supernova to get get that little dive right there. Well, I mean they are behind now. They they're losing. They lost a dragon. They lost a mid turret. They they need to be uh, a little bit greedy, but they need to be safe while they're doing it. Yeah. Um, forcing forcing plays that work in their favor, not trying to dive, and they get turned on. Cause if they would have noticed the mid lane was Mia, and they don't know where the Jarvan is, dude. They had no idea where Jarvan was. Mm -hmm. So they they have to just be safe and think about things before they actually force them. Yeah. If not that, they may have played that a little bit cleaner too, if they wanted to. And the shark goes on to Cavalli. Cavalli's gonna get play with tricks on it, doing a lot of damage. Wild Girl comes out on Cavalli, throws off of that Earth Strike. Akaipo is right on the backside, but look at Little Shin, he's all there as well. The knock comes out from onto Little Shin. Little Shin is gonna get that little poison from that Gromp passive, but nothing's gonna happen. Ultimate traded back to each other. No harm done. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. But. Overall, this this is a really good game. Uh, they still know where the talent is. They know where Rek'Sai is as well. So Jarvan is at his buff, and I'm surprised that Balin isn't trying to be a little bit more aggressive right there. Net misses. Peace, uh, peacemaker misses. Um, I wonder why they call it a peacemaker. Uh, no, I think it's when you that shoot doesn't... it. When you shoot it, you go down and you bow and you. Oh wait. King might be coming on the little shit though. Lotion's gonna go up and gets knocked him. Does have the vision on that though. Cavalli's going to get solo Lotion turns shit. it around beautifully! Can he make it out? The Kaipo's gonna go for the knock and flash knocks up and gets a shutdown onto him as well. Honestly, beautifully played by Lil Shin in a 1v2 scenario. Yeah, that, that really was. It was a great job to go for the squishy. Go ahead and get the person that's already low bursted. And then just either try to get away with your life or just have it, eat, just eat it. But either sure. way, um, I think I think bot lane needs to be a little bit more priority because uh, Gunslinger is 3-0-1 right now with 73 CS, still a little bit behind Caitlyn and CS, but if they can just get Gunslinger fed, he will do so much damage. He he will be able to avoid the Jarvan, avoid the alley. The only thing that would have to be done is that uh, Thresh would have to keep the talent off of him, and even with that, they had wild growth. This is a protect the vein comp 100%. For sure. For sure. If Gunslinger cannot, so this is all on how Ryan DeFranco and Lotion plays onto Gunslinger. If they can get to the flank and get to Gunslinger and kill him before any support comes in, then a play for fun is gonna definitely gonna have the advantage. 
Look at this, and though. And look at this. Talon, Talon. Two-man roam. The condemn oh. comes out for Borla Hoover. Gets condemned. Throws out the Lancer. Lancer's gonna go for Aikaipo. Gets, uh, gets the activates final hour. Lotion's going for the die, though. Look at that. The shutdown goes over to Lotion. Lotion's gonna pick up Sado, too. Sado's gonna be so low. The Flag Drag comes out. Kavali is gonna pick up Lotion. But the exhaust comes out. Cataclysm comes out. The flash comes over from, from Kavali. Kaipo is just sitting in the bush by himself. No, oh, he just barely able to put the knife in the No Lotion catches him. And Kavali is gonna be running away. Ventrix, where are you? Where's the protection? No, Kavali is gonna look like he's gonna be going down, and he does! But Akaipo, the flag drag misses, the hook also misses as well. Akaipo is gonna be on a turret, but look at that! Omnia is oh, gonna go down too! Job. Omnia gets, gets down, but Lotion, the exhaust comes out! Kill. And look at that, the the ultimate, the Glacier Prince comes out. Ryan DeFrago solo, the Ignite ticks! One more auto! Can he get it? Gets it! And then oh, the Ring of Frost yeah. comes out, spikes come out, one more auto, done! Double kill, holy crap! Look at the, the drawn out. It was a two for four trade. Honestly, really well played by Supernova across the a, map and how they did it. It was a two for three. Two for three? Yeah, two for three. Vayne didn't die. Oh, Vayne didn't die? Vayne did. Oh, Vayne did die. Oh, yeah, two for three. Yeah. Two, for, two for three. Even still, uh, I believe that it was in... Um, it was in Supernova's favor. For sure. But the Vayne shut down on the Talon. Talon is now, what, 4-2-1? 4-2-1. Um, With that got that Got the Yomus, got the Tiamat, going for that Ravenous Hydra. He's going to do a lot of damage. But, like, right right as I said before uh, the Talon came down, the only thing that Thresh is going to have to do is keep the Talon off. Mm -hmm. That sure. is going to be the biggest problem for, uh, for Supernova, mm -hmm. especially considering the fact that he can go invisible. They're going to have to keep Pink Ward's zone on them all the time. If not Pink Ward's, sweepers. 100%. Sure. Mm -hmm. And if they see that, Kavala can just whims whimsy. And look at this, they're going to go to Lotion. Wild comes out, the boar comes out, the flash is away from the pulverized. Gets condemned into the wall and with the hook, Gunslinger is going to take out Lotion's. But look at that, two-man roll comes down. Black and Drag comes out, Lotion is looking for the Gunslinger. He's going to go down, the flake comes off, Gunslinger is so low for the 40%. It's going to take him down, Lotion is going to take it. Goes on to Sadu, activates his ultimate. Looks like Sadu is going to be going down as well. The Q barely hits, tickles from that. And look at that, Ryan Frigo is also going to go down. Just barely misses the Glitter Lance. Can he get it? The Whimsy, the Autos. Yeah, one more he's Auto. Got it. He's, he's got, got it. it. But man, Little Shin and Omni up. Working their rotations down in the bot lane. While Ventrix is just pushing the mid lane. So, I mean, two turret ahead over Supernova. It's about to be a one turret now. Uh, top lane is looking really low. So, honestly, they can get that. And then if Lassandra can finish off the mid turret, it'll, it'll still go into uh, Supernova's favor, but another dragon got to be lost here. Mid tower did fall. Top tower is going to go down as well. There, there's there no is. helping it. Two for two trade. Look at And look at that. The, the gold literally just equalized once they got the two turrets. That's huge. Yeah, that, that I mean, the kills are basically even just one more up on Supernova, and now they are actually tied in gold. Mm -hmm. Like, even the dragons aren't, aren't really helping anything. They're helping, like, maybe, like, point one. Yeah. You know, it's it's not making that much of a difference, but it's it's all about um, the CS ability and the towers. I mean, the way that they force that first tower isn't bad, but look at this. They're going to force Rift Herald right here, a two-man Rift Herald. Yeah, that's definitely going to help out this no push. vision. Mm -hmm. They're going to claim this Rift Herald. Really smart time to claim the Rift Herald at, at 17 minutes, right before Baron pops up, too. So nice time from Supernova to claim that. And looks like it is going to go over to... It looks like it went over to... Uh, Kav uh, Cavell on that. Yeah, looks like he did. But it looks like Ryan DeFranco is going to... It's not going to go in. Throws out the pink ward. But you can mm -hmm. see here... Uh, you can see here, Play for Fun is working on their vision game. They're getting more pinks. They're getting more wards out. And they're playing uh, They're playing with uh, Cavell in their vision game. And this. And look at the same shot no. again. They're giving resources to Gunslinger down the bottom lane now. They're having Gunslinger build up build up her farm again. And now, and now look at this. Uh, not only that, but now we have a Frost Fang on a Lulu. The Lulu is gonna go for the Frost Queen's claim, and that's just even more chase ability that she has. Oh, Ventrix getting that uh, getting that recall delayed. Stopping the ports. Oh, and she was right there too, like I know. right, right about to back, and then done. Mm -hmm. Nope, no more today. But look at this five man top. Five man rotation. All Shark lands on a Kavali. Has to go in. Wild grows up. Still gonna go down, but Akaipo is right there. The snipe goes in. Omni up is going to sling Cavalli, and Akaipo is going to take out Ryan DeFrango, but Lucian is going to take out, is going to get that shutdown, and it looks like they're going to take this turret as well. Supernova, I think they're okay with this. They, 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 they
I, I had to force the flash on Lil Shin. I feel like Supernova might be okay with this just because they know how to play the macro game and they know how to play when it hits towards that mid and late game as well. They've done that before. They they like playing. They 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 think they're probably thinking it's okay if they get a little behind because they have that vein and they have that loot to protect it. But we'll definitely have to see. Gold lead. Even just look at the gold lead. Once they equalize, it's only five. It's only five. Only what? Five hundred gold? No, fifty gold. It's only five hundred. It's 500 only five hundred gold. Sorry, gold yeah, five hundred gold. Not even that big of a difference right now, even with, even with their rotations, just because they've been farming all day. And even most of that gold is still onto like Caitlyn. There's no, like mid lane is up in CS, top lane is up in CS, ADC Caitlyn is up in CS. Even very, they're actually very even on supports. I'm very shocked about that. <laughs> um, but Jarvan is up on CS. Like, th there's no real big difference on who has higher gold. Um, right, right now, Caitlyn is up in gold by uh, like 200. Yep, just you know, 200. She's she's up in gold by 200. Um, so Jarvan, Jarvan and Rex are like right on top of each other. Even though Jarvan has a whole. Uh, like 12 CS, 11 CS, 13 CS on top. Um, oh, and Mr. Shins gets caught. Little Shins gets caught. Oh, gets killed. The shark comes onto oh, onto Ventrix. Ventrix gonna ulti herself. Is gonna dodge that. Kaipo is in the fight. Gets knocked up on Omni now. But Cavalli is gonna get taken down. Right to Franco. Takes him down. Little Shins is onto. Sadu is on the run. Flashes it over. And Omni up is gonna be following Ryan to Franco as well. A is gonna knock up. Alistar and Sadu is gonna go down. Here comes Gunslinger though. The cleanup yeah, is coming over. Him. You see Gunslinger is going to get the triple proc onto Bertolt Hoover. They're going to give the kill over to that. Right now it's a two for two trade. The, uh, Supernova is on that chase though. They have the vision on Omnia. Omnia is just going to want to flat drag over the wall. But look at that. Akaibo is on the other side. Can they stop it? Akaibo is by himself though. He's going to respect that Ryan DeFranco is right there. So two for two trade going even. Yeah, that that was still very good. But the only the only problem was is that Vayne wasn't there. If the Vayne would have been there at the start of the team fight, that would have went completely different. Vayne does a lot of damage. Go ahead and l let's look at her item so far. She has the board. She's going into that rapid fire cannon. And look what and they're doing again. She's gonna do so much. Look what they're doing again. They're 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 starting the Baron. But look at this. They oh play for fun has adapted their playstyle. They know when they want. They know how Supernova loves to play for these Barons, and they warded properly in regards to that. So definitely saw that coming. But look at Fizz. This just took a lot of damage from Baron. Oh man, ouch. Ow, oh, 50% health, ooh. Yeah, after after Caitlyn backed off, he went in in front of Baron and then got right around to uh, getting out of aggro when he noticed, hey, I'm at like 50%. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely, Lil Sh right now, Lil Shins, Caitlyn, is not doing so hot. 1, 6, and 6. Only has the IE, not even the second item yet. Vayne already has a rep fire cannon with that Blade of the Ruined King too, so... Honestly, this is where Caitlyn is actually going to be her weakest point, roughly around the 20 to 30 minute mark, because she hasn't hit uh, her, th her third item, and that's where she really takes off with that third item and with that range that she naturally has. So, well, let's go. Let's go ahead along with that process. So, Vayne, I mean, uh, Caitlyn spikes around this time. Okay, no, she's she's already she yeah she usually has a really good spike right now, but she has six assists, six, one kill six assists that is that is putting a huge deficit on her definitely right, that, that is probably the only reason that that Vayne and her are tied up right now mm, just those like assists. even Vayne is ahead of her by like 200 CS oh it looks like looks like Cavalli's gonna get caught out does throws out the wild growth the the st oh, snipe comes in nice. Lucian's actually connects it Ventrix is by himself throws out the glacial prison Lucian is very low and look at that Lucian gets Lucian gets gets the kill and Akaipo is going to claim that kill. The Gunslinger is super low going on to Ryan DeFranco. Goes up for the flag and drag. No, just throws out the flag. Gunslinger is super low though. Two first two trade again. Yeah. Akaipo is off to the two side. Two trade. But Gunslinger does have to back. Gunslinger is very, very low. Cannot be a part of this. Looks like the tower will be going over to play for fun. They're going to try and defend this the best they can. But Omni up the true map play. Gets knocked back to two. Look at that. The church trigger is on Lil Shins. Lil Shins is so low. But... Lucian is going to take us to do. Exhaust comes on on Kaipo. Kaipo looks like he's going to be going down. Omni up is going to go and take that. And, and Gunslinger is going to also going to take that. Oh. Take out Bertrand as well. Bertolt, sorry. Bertolt Hoover. But man. Very, very nice. Very good cleanup from Bane to be there. Yeah. Uh, already has the pickaxe for the last whisper. Oh man. Getting very, very far ahead. 6 2 and 3. 
definitely have with to find a way. Fifty CS. Definitely have to find a way to stop this gun, stop Gunslinger and his vein. It looks like they're all oh, having their sights on Dragon. Wait. Can they do it? Look at this. Lucian's going on to Gunslinger. Gunslinger's going to take so much damage. Wildro comes out. Look at that. That's where it comes out. Wow, Gunslinger is super low. Smite comes out from Omni up. But the Dragon Control is going to go over to Red Side. Can Ventrix stop this? They have the vision over across the wall. Ventrix is looking for that steal. He's looking for it. But nope. Not going to claim it. Gets picked up by Lil Shins on that Caitlyn. And three Wait. dragons. Only two more minutes left. They are playing to this dragon game. At 36 minutes, they have a chance for that five dragon play and start that team fighting. So, honestly, Supernova slacking off a little bit. They're not right, using their so let's, rewards. Let's go ahead and look at this. I just say Caitlyn was 1-6-6. Six, and six. She is now 4-6-7. and seven. She got three kills and an assist off that last couple team fights. Holy crow. She, she is now back, caught up with Vayne, and might even be ahead. She is at... Oh, no, she's still bot. Yeah, she's caught up gold. with Vayne. She's, she's essentially gold. even right now. She's mm -hmm. even with Vayne. But the only bad thing is, now she's going for a more expensive item than what Vayne is going. Vayne is going for the, um... For the, going the for Dominix. Mm -hmm. Um, for the Dominix, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's going for the Dominix. And then she is going to be going for a Bloodthirster. Yep, definitely looks that way. So that is a lot more expensive item. Than and look the at that, they're going on for a gunslinger, gunslinger's going to go down with that cataclysm. Omniab is going to take that kill, Snipe goes on to Cavalier the Shark, misses, but quick pickup on the gunslinger, and that's what we were talking about. How quick can ta can Lucian or Ryan DeFrico collapse onto gunslinger? Because if they do that, Supernova's team comp is essentially done. They can't protect who they're going to protect. Their DPS is, is already done. It looks like the other site's on Baron. Yeah. So they need to be able to fight with Vayne, not not have Vayne off to the side. She needs to be, have better positioning right now. Otherwise, they're they're going to lose this game, and it will go into a third. Match. And look at this! And so Ventrix think... goes in. Ventrix oh. is going so low. Glacial Prison by himself into that. Akaipo is going to go in. Ryan DeFranco is going to go up from Kavalika. Ventrix is going to go into the Hourglass. But Little Shins is getting ready for it. Takes a kill. Little Sh Talent is going to go down. Sadu is going to take it, but Akaipo is by himself, takes Kaylin one, taking, taking, the, the taking the Baron turret, who's going to take it? Akaipo is by himself, gets the shutdown, he's going to try to make a run for it, throws out the Prey Seeker, can he make it out? He's going for that tunnel, tunnel goes out, Smite goes down, but not going to do anything. Successful stop on the Baron though, from Supernova. Hey, but look at this, Gunslinger is back, and is working his way toward top. Yeah, he's going to get all that farm too, big bottom wave, big bottom wave from the red side is going on to it as well, so some, looks like Akaipo is going to react to that. But man, like I said, if Lil Shin Talon can get onto Gunslinger, that's gonna that's gonna impact how the team next team fights are gonna go. The Whoa, is Van gonna be going for an IE? Yeah, looks like. Looks like. What? Honestly, I'm very surprised. Okay. Yeah, I am too. I, I thought Van would definitely be going for that last whisper just because of the fact of Alistair and Jarvan. But it looks like she wants to go for that extra crit damage. Uh Rek'Sai is building tank, he does have a Thormel. Along with a dead man's play, Jarvin putting a little bit of extra damage, trying to get that Maw Mount Mortis for the Lissandra. Uh, Talon going pure damage, no kind of <laughs> no kind of defense at all, um, except for a Hex Drinker. He does have a Hex Drinker. We'll be building a Maw Mount Mortis as well. Um, Fizz has the Lich Bane, gonna be building the Zone. Oh, I'm gonna have Flagging Drags on the Cavalli. Cavalli's gonna go get a little bit of damage. Can they get it? And the Snipe comes out and doesn't get blocked. Cavalli is a little bit low though. Omniab is going to keep up the pressure. Cataclysm comes out onto Ventrix. Ventrix is going to go and dodge out. He's getting so low though. Can Ventrix survive? Throws out and the and the Glacier Prison comes out. Oh, Rito is going to get hooked under it. Little Shin is going to take a lot of damage. Shark comes out on Sadu. Can Little Shin get out? Little Shin does go down. Cavalli's still up. Ryan DeFranco is going to claim that kill with that Urchin Strike. But Gunslinger is, is on his butt getting that. And look at Akaipo. He's by himself. Has that Thorn Mill. He can duel. And Berto is going to get hooked as well. Ventrix is going to claim that kill. Akaipo's doing so much work against 1v2. He has that Thorn Mill. He has that damage. If you keep on all you're going to die but no he makes it out and gunslinger also takes a kill but look at how little low little shins is from his from the thorn mail built from a kaipo and look at that they have their sights on baron that's a baron they no longer care thresh is like i see that pink ward i no longer care yeah for sure they're trying to take it up let's see if they can do it vane is a really strong baron taker can no it looks like Looks like Lil Shins is just going to try and get this turret. Ventrix is so low. Gunslinger has to tank this. Can they do it? Gunslinger is taking the best he can. The TP comes out, though. They're oh, going to get TP, it. Cavalli is yeah. going to go and shake this. But look at that. Gunslinger is out. Look at that. Cavalli is doing this best. Gets knocked up. This is so close. Twin Shadows comes out. 
But, yep, looks like they are going to claim this Baron. Baron buff goes over to them. That's their play. They always want to look for that Baron as soon as they can. Whoever's calling this bar these Barons, they're not looking like Daniel Charles. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> the slow clap comes out from Crypt. <laughs> <laughs> very well played, sir. Very well played. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Looks like uh, let's get back into the game. Dank I'm, memes are coming out. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not playing this Blitzcrank, dude, because I'd be malfunctioning right now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, got him. The dank memes. <laughs> the dank memes. <laughs> the dank memes coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just um, let's let's try and focus. Let's try and get our heads back into the game here. All right, so gold, 25 to 25, even kills. Gold is so close right now. All the gold is on Rex, on Rexai, and on Vayne. While the enemy is all the gold is on Talon, so it's all on Talon goes. But looks like Bertolt is going to go on to the uh, flag drag goes on oh to Glitzer. Glitzer is taking a lot of damage from it. They do not have Lulu. Lulu cannot give them the wild growth. And look at the collapse onto uh, Supernova. Double kill comes out. Oh, the flash pulverite, flash combo doesn't work out. Akaipo is going to try and kite back. And man, they d they did not have Cavalli in that part of the fight. Unfortunate. They, they didn't have Cavalli. They didn't have Ventrix. Um, two two very high uh, high damage players that need to be in that fight, especially whenever it comes to wild growth onto Bane. Oh, they need the Lulu in that fight, without a doubt. That that is something that's going to cost them the game if they keep going into these three v fives and getting picked off like that. It's it's going to end. Yeah, and also look at this. They have four dragons. They are on their way for that fifth dragon play in the next six minutes. So 37 minutes in, Supernova has to fight for this for their first dragon. Oh, otherwise, and that was in. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say. Otherwise, you know, otherwise, red team is gonna have a huge swing in regards to damage and combat stats. So definitely, Supernova has to fight for this next dragon. I mean, the way that I see it, they've already had the swing. Look at it. Um, play for fun. I mean, uh, Supernova had Baron. All of them had Baron except for Rek'Sai. Thresh no longer has Baron. Vayne no longer has Baron. They only have two members with Baron. Yes, the push ability is nice, but it gives the stats away. And that is something that they needed crucially, especially on the Vayne right now. The Vayne is huge. They needed that, and they need to be able to uh, tank these fights better, these fights more. But look at here, Fl and Flank was about to come out. It looks like there might be a Flank here. No, they have vision of that, so no Flank coming out. Flank Strike goes over to Akaipo. Akaipo's gonna get split off a little bit. Gunslinger, they are in a quarter. Akaipo's gonna take a good amount of damage. Does have that red buff, but has that last Whisper. Spooky Ghost comes flying out. It looks like Akaipo might be going in. Sadu's coming on. The ultimate comes out. Going on to the Sardar's gonna go in. Glacier Prison go activates the Hourglass. Little Shin is getting super low. Gunslinger's by himself in that cat. Cat because Little Shin's gonna take him down. Akaipo's gonna chase down Little chase down talent and look at that Lucian's hitting is hitting to do in the back has that red buff to do so low Lucian's gonna try and capitalize throws out the hook does land on Lucian's though Lucian's gonna play gets the knockup that's the, oh my god the lights are coming in from the ravenous hydrogel a kaipo is by himself has that thorn mills can he get it he's gonna try and get it praise here lands does not enough and look at that a kaipo goes down Four members are down for Supernova. All five are still up. They're going to be pushing. They're going to be getting this in him. It's only Cavallo for that D defense. Can he do it? He's not going to do it. Fire Drag misses. Tries to goes out. <laughs> but no. Cavallo goes in. Head for Pomeroy. Goes in. Ryan DeFranco goes up for the play for Trickster. Goes in for the Urgent Strike. Getting really low. Cavallo is by himself. Oh, no. Look, look at this. They're trying to go for the end. The Lucian comes out. And Cavallo is definitely going to go down right here. Gets the ace. What a clean, clean and quicker game coming in from play for fun. They're going to take it on the end of Only Gunslinger coming out in one second. But no, all five are up to turn. The game is going to go towards them. Game two goes over to play for fun. What a huge upset over to Supernova. That that was an incredible twist of fate right there for Supernova. They they went they went into this game 1-0. They're leaving one. They need one more win. Um, also, with play for fun they are wanting this they you see the hunger in their eyes they went up they did what they need to do they got better warden they got better map control they got better uh, objective and control they had four dragons they were working their way to the fifth dragon and they took away baron from uh supernova so with the way that supernova had went into that fight rexai was looking for that back line he really wanted to get in that back line and thresh was right with him so they had no peel for that vein. Yeah. That was a protect the vein comp that didn't do what it was meant for. For sure. 
Every everything was away, and and Vayne got the Cataclysm, had the Talonold. Everything was bursted on the Vayne. Once Vayne was out of the fight, it was over. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And also, I think, and also, we could just see like the weaknesses from Supernova in in these games. As you can see, when Ventrix doesn't get a counter pick, he plays. He picks a Lissandra. But the thing is that he already saw the talent. So why pick Lissandra? Why you saw that they picked Talon? Were you expecting maybe a Fizz in the mid lane, or Fizz in the jungle and J4 top or J4 mid? I don't know. It's a little bit of an awkward pick. Maybe not go for that Lissandra again. If you do see an assassin, or if not, just ban maybe ban him entirely. I definitely do see that Supernova, Supernova Ares. They do not want. They do not want something that goes into the back lane. I think that's why they banned out Wukong. And uh, this prob might be another ban on the Talon as well because the Talon's access to the back line. So definitely want to see what happens here in this next best in this last game for the finals. Yeah, and uh, uh, the game is full. What? what Tell the them heck? when to go to spectate. Tell them to go to spectate. <laughs> let's see Good. here. All right, let's see here. I'm just going to communicate. The reason I'm just going to get into this lobby if we can. There you go. All right. And looks like looks like Supernova is going to go back onto the red side. I'm assuming they're going to be saving for that last pick as well for Ventrix. And look at that. They're setting up their pick and bans right here. Ventrix is going to know. It looks like Sadu is going to get that last pick. No, Ventrix is. And look at that, the last game. We are ready when they are. Let's see it here, folks. Last game. Oh, Lord. Man, I haven't stayed up for a tournament in so long. <laughs> Definitely. Let's see how Supernova can adapt. Supernova did win game one, lose, lost game two. So they are on a decline right now. And Play for Fun is on the is on the increase in winning so we're going to be seeing how Supernova can adapt to that they are back on the red side they have won red side they've won three games on red side so far so we we'll definitely want to see how they want to ban this out and Sadu is now fourth pick and Ventrix is the last pick they really need to get the counter mid apparently um because getting getting that early pick mid is not favorable for them even definitely. though they knew they had talent it's still not favorable for them. They would rather go for the counter pick mid. That way they can counter the burst damage that comes in. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, you know what I would love to see come from um, Ventrix in mid? What? I would love to see a Galio. Galio? If they're going to go, if they're going to come from, if they're going to go for a protect the ABC comp, I would love to see a Galio. Galio goes nothing but MR. And does massive amount of burst damage. Oh, look at that though! Wu Kong has been banned first two games here, and look at that. Play for fun is looking for that Wu Kong. There's a reason why they banned it twice in a row, and they they actually let it go through. So, let's see if Play for Fun want to utilize that Wu Kong. Wu Kong is probably one of the other only people to get into that backline really quickly and cross create some havoc and do a lot of damage. So. Hover is there, and the lock-in gets locked in for for Ryan DeFranco up in the top lane. So we want to see how Supernova reacts to this. They let it go through, so they I'm assuming they have again. Look at that! They pick Gragas immediately, so they they definitely wanted the disengage from Gragas and not Wukong away from their team. So honestly, a really smart pickup from Akaipo. And let's see how Gunslinger does it. Now the only the only problem with that Wukong is that they don't know whether it's top or jungle. Yep, so that is a pretty strong flex pick. And there it is, there's the Braum. They're not really revealing anything too big, but we definitely, so it's pretty, it is pretty obvious where we see that Gragas is, it can go mid, it can go top, but most likely it is gonna be going to that jungle. Wukong can go top or jungle as well. Definitely wanna see how it is. Now, with this Braum pick, I'm expecting an illusion. For sure. 100%, I'm expecting an illusion. Oh! The That's brand, nasty. the brand getting hovered. So tell me, tell us a little bit more on how brand works. All right, so there, there's three ways that you can pull off a brand combo. There's only one right way though. Um, what you would want to do is you would want to go for the EQ, which is the E. If somebody's already inflamed, it spreads the fire. 
and with a Q, it throws a uh, it throws a ball of fire, and if it, if it and the person is already flamed, they get stunned. And along with that is the uh, wall of fire. It was the wall of flame oh. that when a person is inflamed, they it does extra percent damage. To yeah. Them. But it looks like Brand is gonna get picked up in this rotation. It looks like it's gonna be a Jinx. I have criticized Jinx before. I don't think Jinx fits so well in this meta. Just, just because she requires so much of that late game in this meta. And look at that. Like you said, that Lucian is getting hovered over. That is going to be a really strong ta bot lane. And Gunslinger performs super well on the Lucian. Let's see how well he does it today. And come so, out with that gangplank too. Alright, so let's. I, I want to go talk about the Jinx pick. Um... The Jinx is actually very strong. All you have to do is have the CS ability. And what we've seen from both AD carries is that they do have really well CS. If you are able to get your IE and you're able to either get a Runins or a Static, you are solid. It, as long as you are able to do that in a, in a timely fashion, say, say maybe about like, like 20 minutes, you're already starting building. Uh, you have tier 2 boots, you have uh, your IE, and you're starting to build the Static Shields. You're, you have like a zeal built already you are good um you will do massive amount of damage and then you will also do a massive amount of crit damage i like to build ie into runins the reason the uh, runins is because whenever you're doing uh your rockets you're sending three rockets and that's a lot of aoe damage for sure and as you can see here, Supernova picks up the Gangplank for the first time. We don't know if the Gangplank is going to be going top or mid. And that is why this is what they like to plan for. They like to pick that flex pick for top and mid so that Ventrix can see who he's really going up against. But he does know he is going against that, going against that Zareth here. And Aurelia getting picked up. Ryan DeFranco. Looks like Ryan DeFranco is going to be going with that Aurelia top. And, and uh, Omni up is going to go for that Wukong jungle. So... Definitely a solid mid game, mid game comp, and then it has a jinx for that late game if needed, if it does get to that part. So, really strong bottling I think coming in from Supernova with that Lucian Brom combo. I think it's all how Alistair can play this and, and stop. Uh, and look at that, there's Ooh. Ventrix LeBlanc. Did super well in the first game. Is gonna try and bring it back out again. Can he do it? It is against Zareth, and it looks like they are gonna lock it in though. It's going to be game three here. A Kaipo on Gragas. Gunslinger on Lucian. Cavell on that Gangplank. Sidhu on Braum. And Ventrix on that LeBlanc. So tell us a little bit more about how you think about these team comps. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and break down the team comps so far. We have a really high uh, dive poke comp coming out for uh, play for fun. They have the Alistair dive. They have the Irelia dive and the Wukong. But then they have the Jinx and Zareth poke. They are really backline heavy. Um, they're gonna they're gonna need their backline. They're gonna have to segregate the Alistair, the Wukong, and the Irelia in the front, which is really gonna be hard for them because if that uh, LeBlanc can get to that backline and burst either Zareth or the Jinx, it's it's gonna be really hard because Lucian's gonna stay behind Braum no matter what. Mm -hmm. Lucian is going to stay behind Braum and he's going to do what he does best and he's going to call and mobil and mobilize himself. So that's that's what I'm looking at so far. Um, as as for um, Supernova, they have a Gragas disengage and also engage coming out with uh, his barrel. Then Lucian, high mobility champion, uh, can be up front, can be in the back. Either way, it doesn't matter to him as long as he has that bomb passive. He is not afraid. Lucian will not be afraid to go in. Gangplank, dude, the powder kegs are strong. They are ridiculous, especially if he can line them up three in a row and and just do massive AOE damage. That is going to be huge for them. I think they I think overall they just have a better team fight because of the powder kegs mixed in with Gragas ult um, and Braum right there. Um, it, it's going to be really hard for them uh, to stop the Wukong, but that is what they're going to need to do. They're going to need to stop the Wukong because I really can be CC'd well. The the uh, Alistair can be CC'd well, and then all they need is LeBlanc to just go in the in the back line. Yeah, right. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and break down these lane phases. We have Irelia versus Gangplank top. It, it, that's all a skill lane matchup because no matter what, if Irelia lands the stun, Gangplank still has scurvy to get away. Um, really really strong pick against an Irelia. Uh, I I think it's a great I think it's gonna be a great lane matchup for Gangplank. Um, let's go in the mid lane. Zareth versus Blanc. Zareth is bringing kill because he's know he's gonna have to watch out for the burst damage. But Blanc has distortion. 
whereas he has a stun. He's going to need to land that stun to be uh, effective against LeBlanc just because it's going to root her, it's going to give him time to do damage, and she will not have to uh, worry about distortioning into a massive Q as well. Um, when it comes to jungle, Wukong versus uh, Gragas. Uh, Gragas, I believe, is going to have the upper hand in this just because of how tanky he's going to be. Yes, Wukong's going to deal damage, but Gragas has the overall tankiness. He has the ability to heal himself, and he has the ability to do an on-hit effect which I think is amazing uh, on Gragas. When it comes to the bot lane, Lucian Braum versus Jinx um, Alistair. Jinx Alistair, Alistair is going to be really strong just uh, just because when Alistair does his headbolt pulverize combo, uh, Jinx can land down her traps, and she can get a lot of damage off. But that's only if she's reactive right as he lands that pulverize. Otherwise, the traps aren't going to be set in time for uh, the traps to be effective. But when it comes down to it, uh, Braum only has to auto attack. Like the best way to see Braum get this pass off is auto attacking Q, and it resets it to where he can auto attack again. So it, it's that's gonna us an automatic three times right there, followed up by um, a Lucian relentless pursuit, goes into a stun, comes out with massive damage. The only the only factor I don't like compared Bane to Lucian is the fact that when it comes down to the mid late game, uh, Lucian is not going to be able to burst. Alistair near as hard as Vayne will. So it, it's all going to be about how, um, again, how they enter each team fight and how well they each do in each lane. For sure. It, it's just going to come down to lane phase. For sure. I think another thing we got to point out too is that with, so you know, so you know, and you know how you mentioned the, the separation of the back lane for play by, uh, play for fun and uh, the front line for, for them, how all three are going to be going super heavy into it and the back lane is just going to be sitting in the back by themselves. I think it, so if Gragas plays it right, he can definitely separate the front line from the back line long enough where they can just eliminate the front line because I really will come they're decently squishy unless they build on full tank. So the only person who is going to be hard to take out is Alistair, but he's not even going to be doing a lot of damage. So if Gragas can separate Jinx and Zareth long enough so that Gangplanks, Power Kegs, LeBlanc's burst, Lucian's, Lucian's uh, damage can kill their front line, mainly the Irelia and Wukong in, uh, quickly enough so that Jinx and Zareth can't do any damage. I think that's going to be a crucial part too, how Gragas plays it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to come down to um, how, how well they can CC the enemy team. For sure. And it's like that just... it's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say we're just going to be loading up to the game right now. I mean, I want to load up to the game. It's not letting me. <laughs> All right, we see here. Looks like Jinx. So, two heals coming in from heals coming in from Lil Shin, the Zareth in the mid lane too. But Ventrix, very very well known on this LeBlanc, and Gunslinger very well known on this Lucian too. So, definitely want to see how these two utilizes their mains into this last game. It looks like we're just be learning right now. It's, oh wow, we're already 20 seconds in game as well. So, and it looks like they're meeting in the mid lane right here. Throws out those Arcano pulses. He's gonna give a little bit of trade here. Utilizes those rockets. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Whenever, like that's why I like to build ruins onto Jinx, man. That those rockets, when uh, Jinx is able to start landing them efficiently, and in team fights, they will just do masses of damage. For sure. And it's amazing how much she can actually do in a team fight. Followed up by um, her gets get excited, mm -hmm. like every kill. Every objective they take, she gets she gets a sp uh, sprint, mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous at how much she can catch up, along with the zap, and then super mega death rocket. Definitely, just... definitely. So it looks like it's just gonna be standard level ones here. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy coming out here so far. Standard starts, bottom side heavy. Looks like they are going to be meeting on the top side unless one of them decides to path a little bit differently. They have been very, very consistent in regards to how they path, and they can be read. But look at that, Ventrix is going to go with for that early trade. Can Arcano Palace lands, and it misses! So Ventrix is playing around very well with that. Val is going to go and take some CS in the top lane. Definitely want to yeah, see how, how Sidhu plays down in this bot lane. I really want to see how this Zareth is going to play it out. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited if he's going to like be aggressive and try to force 
uh, the lane to be pushed or if he's just gonna sit back and queue everything. Um, distortion. Yep, distortion level one again. Goes out for the queue. Throws out the Thunderlord's decree proc. But Protoms is gonna get that concussive blows. Look at that though, he path look at that though. Kaipo's pathing out level two. Can he get it? Is he gonna flash by Sam? He is gonna go. No, it doesn't even does it. Get the stuns on the Hoover. Hoover is gonna have to flash out. And does get that gunslinger is gonna get a little bit of a snipe onto Bertolt Hoover, but nothing too crazy. Ventrix is gonna take Ooh. a little bit of that damage. Has to distortion away defensively too. But Yeah, that's that's gonna be a very tough lane matchup for the Blanc. Concussive blows lands onto the little shins, nothing too big. Ah, sorry, like you said, does have this to say. Level two comes out too. Oh man, look at that Ventrix. Oh. Ventrix has to play so defensively into the little shins. Maybe if he started boots, he may have been able to just dodge a little bit more of these uh, skill shot oriented spells. But man, look at this though—they're going on to Lotion. Lotion gets knocked by. I can't. I can't oh, back on the rotation. Point. Throws out for the slow. The, the true man not pulverized gets knocked up. Goes for the Berta Hoover. Has no flash. Right, Knight gets ticked down. He's going so low. Can they get it? Gunslinger does have that flash. Does have that heal. Throws out the Winter's bite. Goes in for the. For the Q, and then first oh, blood nice. goes over to Gunslinger. Look at that Gunslinger is having is having a huge lead right now. This is his favorite champion. This is the reason why he's named Gunslinger. He played in, in against against uh, what team? What was the team he played? The game before this series. Oh my God! Against uh, what should we call it? Oh, we just want to play LOL. We, we just want to play LOL. And look at that. Kaiba yeah. comes down for the bottling. Doesn't flash body slam though. May have couldn't gotten it. Throws out the barrel. Gets that slow, but nothing too crazy. I think Akaibo should have forced that with that body slam flash. He's gonna come back, come back around though. Oh, he's done oh he misses the body slam oh, flash. Lotion no reads it, but the heal comes out. Throws out the Q. He's so low. Has to flash away. Akaibo is coming back again, but well played by Lil Shin, pushing out Ventrix out of the with his Arcana pulses. Gragas did flash. He did flash body slam for that. That was, I, I, I actually did not see the flash come from Gragas, but. Um, I guess because such a big thing was moving at such a fast speed, you know. Oh, look at that though, so hard to see everything. Ryan DeFranco's finding a big minion wave. He's gonna take a loss. The Scurvy coming. The Flash comes out, the Flash. The equalizing Strike comes out. Ryan DeFranco is gonna take a little bit of a damage. Can he get it? Throws out the Q so low, but he is gonna stay alive. Not a kill. He's gonna get passed around. Um, and you really know what, you, you wanna know what I miss so much about the old game playing? What's up? Grog so blade. <laughs> That's that that constant slow that's happening with it. Oh, the constant slow, the constant uh, the constant dot applied, the, like heal. It. Yeah, the constant dot applied and the gauge the healing. Like it's so strong, and it it was just, it was just the most OP thing in the game. You could you could go whatever game plank you wanted, and as long as you had Grog's Hook Blade applied, it it was just over. For sure, for sure. Let's see here, disparity coming in. There's only one kill, but this is actually really good. For Supernova, and the kill is on to Alistair. Not that big, but first blood did go over to Gunslinger. He does have that gold lead, roughly 400. Uh, essentially, the first blood money with that lead here. So nothing too. Crazy. Oh, with only 28 CS, already has that B up. Double Doran. Oh, that's down so on huge. Jinx. That is so very, very huge. Yeah, he's gonna be ahead for quite a while, just because of the fact that Jinx went double Doran. And also, and also with that, Jinx is going to be not strong, not as strong in the mid game too. So Lucian is definitely going to dominate. But if it does hit late game, Jinx does have that chance of carrying it himself. And, and uh, what Little Shins can pull off his inner Name. His inner Name. His inner Name. Name is known for that, those late games. Look at the Ventrix getting bullied out of this lane from Little Shin. Little Shin is just dominating this rave range. Look at that Kaipa though. He's camping his bottom lane. Oh, they have no vision. Let's see what happens here. Is the couple going to go in? Let's let's see. Let's see if they're going to fall into the trap. And the tension is Lucian building. should try to bait. Lucian should be trying to bait this. He should be like stepping halfway into the middle of the wave, mm -hmm. trying to get Alistair to go in for that uh, headbutt pulverize. But they're playing so safe, which is really smart. Can they go in? Oh, the war comes out and they catch oh. it. Oh, they catch a Kaipo in the war. Smart work coming in from Bertolt Hoover on that bush. Because of blows does. Uh, Winter's bite does land onto Lil Shins. And look at that. Yeah. That was so depressing. <laughs> so depressing. But look at this. Metric's going going for the Lil Shin. 
Gets that pass and throws out the ultimate, lands the first, lands the second, can't the third one land, but there's another battle on the top side. And look at that, Gunslinger's gonna get pulled right back in, gets that onto the choppers, Gunslinger's getting so much damage. Omni up is coming from the flank, but look at that, the Unbreakable is coming out, Ryan DeFranco so low, and Ventrix is also so low, but look at that, Little Shin is full health right now. Gets that, which is bite onto it, throws out the zap, nothing too crazy, it's just gonna try to take out this pink ward, and they will. But look at Omni up, he's on the side, he's on the river. Nope, but he does get spotted, he's gonna take out that ward right there. But man, so much action, but no kills happening so far. Uh, but I said a little bit too soon. Cavalli's gonna, mm -hmm. Cavalli's gonna try and fight out Ryan DeFranco, but <laughs> no kills again. Definitely just want to try and farm on this gangplank. 51 to 53. Yeah, I'm telling you, this powder keg is gonna make a difference in that top lane. For sure, for sure. Um, just just the amount of damage and amount of AOE area effects. It will de it will definitely create such a big um, a big cluster just for play to play for fun to go against. Um, I'm really worried about how this Wukong is gonna gonna match up with the GP, mm -hmm. just because uh, Wukong will be uh, more likely ulted every time that he goes in mm -hmm. by game playing, having that big AOE ult. Um, so he's gonna be taking a lot of damage as he's giving damage. So it's it's yeah. not a favorable situation. But Sup yeah, Supernova has a lot of zone control. Now, if you think about that, the glacial. The, the what the cat the Rom's ultimate they have they have the Gragas uh, explosive cask and they also have gangplanks ultimate with powder kick so honestly a lot of zone control and it's gonna be a little bit hard for that backline to touch them if they use that zone control correctly or or you know what um you know what a good use for gangplanks all would be in this uh in these team fights what's up because because Wukong Irelia and Alistair are gonna be in the front line. Gangplank could ult into the back line and, and allow away. LeBlanc and allow Blanc to uh to just do whatever she wants because mm -hmm. they will be slowed and they will be taking damage. So I think that'd be a good idea to let LeBlanc uh, oh, the have that time. Down. He's gonna get two changes. No, two two changes. Just no one misses. It's on the minion. Ventrix is gonna go down. Oh, Ventrix missing the two chains onto. Onto the little shin, but look at that, the Cullen comes flying out, doing a lot of damage, little six. Ventrix is by himself, can he get it? The, the chin comes out, the flash goes in, missed the flash, Ignite comes out, Ventrix has that blue buff throw, right of the occurring, comes out, and he's gonna miss, no! Lil Shin picks up the kill, and look at that gameplay, picks up the kill, and oh, with a TP as well, and Akaibo throws on, missed the explosive cast onto Lil Shin, Lil Shin is so low, the, the Cyclone is doing a lot of damage onto Akaibo, Akaibo has to back away, no, is he gonna go back in? No, he is not, but man, Lil Shin is doing so well into Ventrix, he pulled off the talent. He's pulling now. He's pulling off the Zareth as well. Honestly, really, really good play coming from Lil Shin, and also handling Ventrix's LeBlanc too, who's performed notoriously well in this tournament. But looks like they're going to be trying to trade towers here, top or bottom. Um, they might actually get top lane uh, before bottom goes down. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I think a key thing too is that nope. no. Oh, he can't even get top turret down. It's actually going to be huge. I think another key thing too is that Gameplay got picked up two kills from that TP, so that's gonna be huge. And oh. he has a phage, and he has his team right now. Yeah, that is incredible. Now the only bad thing about the situation in bot lane is that Gunslinger is Oom. Um. Yep, he is out of mana, so he can, all all they can do is just, just is just to get the farm. And look at this, they have vision on that. Throws up and 301 crit damage. Not that too big there. And the double, the double knockup. So do is gonna get onto that choppers. Virtual is gonna get stunned. The lotion is doing a good amount of damage with those rockets, but nothing too crazy. To do is tanky enough to withstand that onslaught with that unbreakable. So definitely a good so job from that. You want to know the big difference between how uh, Lucian and Jinx are right now? Sure. Lucian has 2.1k saved up right now. Holy crap! Oh my, 2.2. He needs to back. Definitely needs to utilize that gold. He definitely needs to back, and he needs to go ahead and get build. I believe he's gonna actually go back and with a come back with a full IE. I no, he's actually gonna go essence reaver. Oh, essence reaver. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. He, yeah. he won't have. There he it is. Have essence, yo, he, there it is. There it is. Essence. The essence reaver comes out. All of his gold too, with with uh, two pots, with one pot actually. Man, essence reaver and gets picked up immediately. He, that that's a big difference in their build, just because of how much crit essence reaver is gonna give him. And the cooldown too. Once, once he gets a rapid fire cannon or a static ship too, that's gonna be huge. Oh, he's definitely gonna get rapid fire. He's gonna have so much, um, so much ability to be able to attack from such a distance. Now look at little shins. 
uh, Jinx trying to go in for the uh, the minion monsters, get a little bit of extra gold on the side, but she still won't be able to have that full out edge. Yeah, and look at this, so they're gonna be taking out the dragon. Arcane Pulse comes out, doesn't land onto the dragon though. The rock comes out, nope. Lil Shins cannot wild turtle this dragon right now. And the chain comes out on Lil Shins. Lil Shins going to get chained up. But the knockout pulverize comes out onto Seduce. Seduce going to get right there. Omni up is going to cyclone. But the flash comes out on from that. The right of the arcane lands. Second one lands. And does Lil Shins takes out. Takes out oh. Gunslinger. Gunslinger is going to go down. And right to frame with TPs. Guns on, on Kavali. The one distortion comes out. Ventrix is getting so low. He has the distortion back. But Ryan DeFranco is also getting low. He has three stacks of concussive blows. Sadu is going to get knocked back. He's so low. Omni up is gonna also going to take that. Hit. No, Ryan DeFranco will. And man. I'm Zero for two trade in the favor of play for fun. They are turning this around. The gold lead is 18.7. It looks like they're going to be taking out this turret too. That's even going to give it a bigger gold lead. No cannon barrage it looks like. So cannon barrage would have been very, very helpful. Throws out. Not going to land it. But Lucius, no, misses the chain. May have been able to take him down right there. And it looks like play for fun is going to keep up this push here. Let's see what happens. I is going to get a little bit of damage too much. Gunslinger is here. Does he have the calling? He does not. Uh, the pull, the pull comes in. Kavali's going to go down. The shutdown goes over to Ryan DeFranco. And man, they're play for fun. They are keeping up this momentum from they brought from game two. This is huge for them. Yeah, but then again, it's still going to be the same thing. How well will the team be able to peel for Gunslay? And look at that. So much damage coming from Zev already on the Gunslayer. He just got back in line. He's less than half health. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, that's, that's insane. And just like I called going into this game, they're going to have Xerath and Jinx in the back line. Al Alistair, Irelia, and Wukong in the front. And Xerath's just going to be sitting there spitting out ults. Yeah, Lil Shin is just poking at him. The two Lil, Lil Shin brothers are just poking at him. They're doing so much work when it comes to the sieging. Definitely not us. We have to see when the gameplay, the mm. gameplay takes effect. Once Gangplank gets that, it gets that Triforce and gets possibly that Infinity Edge or that Yomus, that's where we're gonna see Gangplank start taking over. He does have he, two kills for though. The, for this situation, a, an Eye Edge would be ideal just because the fact that you don't see Irelia building armor, you don't see Alistair building armor at the moment. I mean, Jinx doesn't even have her full IE. Mm -hmm. um, Zareth is not gonna build armor for a while. Wukong is not building armor either so an IE would definitely be effective just for the extra crit damage for the extra auto damage um so it, that would be uber effective yeah it looks like they're gonna be trading turrets or bot a jinx and Zareth is gonna be pushing down that bottom wave gunslinger is gonna back right now omni up just gonna go and take out a ward right here and the shin brothers at that bottom lane alistar is off to the side and they're gonna the cannon brush is gonna come out just gonna deter him from taking out that turret Farm is going to go over to Akaipo as well. Lotion throws out the stun. Lance getting a lot of damage on him. He's getting super low. Can he get it right into the passage? Lance misses the first one, misses the second one, and looks like he's out. But the rocket comes out. Is he going to land? Oh, jeez. It does not. It hits Brom. So nothing too crazy. But man, they were looking oh, for look that at game kill. Plank. Gameplay stayed top. Gameplay is still top though. The Cullen comes out. These guys are so low. Berto gets a two man knockup, throws out. Because he's so low, the Ezek exhaust comes out. And three, Ventrix is going to take out the kill. Bertrand Hoover is trying to get that one-on-one. -on -one. Look at Omnia. Omnia is looking for that knockup. Goes in to get that two-man cyclone. Ventrix is getting, has to distortion out. Flashes it with that. He's getting very, very low. Lil Shin is trying to do his damage. Arcano Plus comes in. Bertrand Hoover is trying to get that one-on-one. -on -one. The stun comes off. And he's going to go oh, down from Ventrix. Okay. And the TP is coming out from Gangplank. Gangplank is going to come down. Canale. Oh, he flashes onto, onto the stun. Lil Shin is by himself. He gets, get, gets that Winter's Bite. He looks like he's been going down. And there you go. Who's going to get the kill? Kavali's going to pick it up here. 3-1. And, and let's go and take a look at the damage onto that second tier turret here. And oh my god, it is so low right now. It is set up. It is prime for taking. Really good play from Kavali. Ha did TP to get that, but that turret is set up for the taking. It looks like they're just going to go ahead and clear all these waves and set their sights. Maybe in the mid lane if they want. I would definitely try to take this mid tower right now. They're, they're in a good position to do it. Yep. Only one that's going to be there to stop it soon is Wukong, and Gameplank is on his way. Oh, look, 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 there's Wukong so Alright, goes an eye couple at the other chance. Line. But look, Kavali's getting dueled out. He's getting so low. Can he stay alive? He only has 200 health left. But here comes Gunslinger. Gunslinger's going to go on to Ryan DeFranco. Ryan DeFranco's going to take a good amount of damage. Slow good comes deal. on to Omnia. Omnia up is going to take a little bit of damage as well. But the entire team is here to back him up. No fight is going to happen here. And looks like Ventrix does have to back after that. Has that Abyssus picked up. So we'll definitely see. 
it here. Play for fun does have to react to, react to that bot lane though. And there goes Ryan DeFranco for that. Yeah, it, this this is definitely going to be how well can Gunslinger kite himself. Um, Red Buff is going to be extremely effective, but from the Irelia, from the Wukong, the uh, he's already yeah. He just okay. He just I guess he just wanted to call call uh, you know Scuttle Crab. The stun comes out. Sidhu blocks it up. Oh, beautiful job. Yeah. Um, interesting use of call. Haven't seen someone call for a Scuttle Crab before, but this is how uh, this is how um, Supernova wants to play. They always want to play for that Baron buff and get control of that. Ryan DeFranco does have TP, so that is why he is going to be splitting, pushing down there. Cavell does have Cannon Barrage, so he can participate in the fight a little bit. If something were to go awry. But looks like here comes a siege. This is what they want to do. They definitely want to siege this turret. They have they have that, and Ventrix is just going, going to clear and that wave. Yeah, bye-bye wave. Oh, look at that. It looks like they're oh. going for the fight. The kind of out. Lucian's going so oh. low. The powder kick's doing so much damage. They have to go and TP comes in from the backside. Not really, but look at that. Ventrix is going to go. The Naga comes out from Omni up. Sudo's going to go try and get the stun on the Lucian. Lucian's going to go down. Gunslinger gets that stun. So low. No, Gunslinger. I guess he does take that kill out. But look at all that damage. All the blue hounds are going down. Right, the Arcane is coming down. Ryan DeFranco is getting so low. Ventrix is by himself. Ryan DeFranco can't get it. He does not. Lucian is by himself. He's the one man left standing. He throws out the Arcane plus Misses. Ventrix and Cavalas going to throw out. Gonna get that speed boost from that powder keg. Can he get it? He throws out that Q. That's a stun. He's the scurvy. And look at this lotion. It looks like he's gonna be going down. Throws it down. The ace comes oh out. Huge, huge swing goes over to Supernova. Honestly, super well paid. Cavell stepping up, being the playmaker with those powder kicks. Five, one, and three. Getting onto that jinx to allow Gunslinger to pick that up. Super huge and super key right there. Yeah, that, that was beautiful. That was very well played. He, he saw from the side where Jinx was using that ultimate, getting the damage on. And he's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to use these powder kegs to my advantage. He sat there, and he over half health. He third health, like two-third health uh, Jinx with just one powder keg. That was an amazing damage. Lucian, was saw, he, Lucian saw that. He's like, you know what? My death is worth this other AD carry's death. My team can win this fight. We're already so far ahead. I'll go in, get the double autos, use the red buff proc, uh, proc, and get that kill for my team. That was very well played. Good job by Lucian. Go ahead and take one for the team. For sure, for sure. And look here, it looks like Dragon is going to be started up by Play for Fun. Red uh, Supernova isn't going to be there in time, though. So looks like they are going to be giving this Dragon. I've been told it's only this first Dragon, so it's not going to be too much. It's going to slow down that fifth Dragon play, but Supernova isn't really known for that right now. They do like to play for that Baron. And Baron is up now if they want to go for it. And I was about to say, speaking of Baron, it's just now spawning. <laughs> and they do see that all five members of uh, of uh, Play for Fun are bot lane. They really want this uh, first tower. Yeah, but look at look at what look what Gunslinger is doing. He's pressuring this mid wave. And look at that. The ultimate is going to come down. It's going to turn him off. But look at this. The pings are coming out. Gunslinger is going to try and take out this mid wave. He's going he's going to be pulling off his inner sneaky right here, trying to push by himself. Ryan DeFranco is going to try and back him to stop that. But look at the top wave too. Top wave is also getting pushed in. So if they do def stop a uh, Gunslinger, Gunslinger can easily rotate as well. Look at here. They're trying to stop the ports. Can they stop the ports? And look at that. A turret goes down from Gunslinger. Gunslinger is going to take that. Ports are going back. And look at this. The TP come from GP. GP's going in. They're going to take that too. What a cross map play coming in. Supernova is is playing this macro play so well. Sadu. It's only three people though. All, all four are there. Sadu is going to go down. He's going to be super low. And Akaipo and Ventrix is going to leave that. Man. No, he jumps. Omni is going to jump over. Right oh, in the passer comes out. Lands the first one. Lands the second one. Can he land the third one? Lands the third one. But he's not done yet. And there's the Arcana Pulse. Ak Akaipo is going to be there. But look at this. Look at Savala. He's by himself. He's going to be taking out. He's going to be super close to taking out that turret. Gunslinger did back. Ventrix, Ventrix is on top of war. Can they have vision? The knockback goes in. The ETO chain comes out. I think, I think out. Gunslinger didn't back. They could have probably even had inhib. Totally. They, I think I definitely agree. Gunslinger totally could have stayed with Saval, uh, Savel in that top wave. But Ventrix is going to try and stop their backs. Pinks are coming <laughs> out onto that Jinx. Looks like they want to try and take that. No, but man, that is Ben Tricks is full of tricks. Yeah. I.E. That is the only full item that she has is oh, high edge on Jinx. She is very, very far behind right now. And Lucian actually building an eye edge of his own. Yep. For sure. Look at this here. Dude, look at Ben Tricks over here with these uh, distortions. Yeah, look at here. <laughs> Supernova. Look at the Supernova. They're planning for that Baron right now. They're starting to do it. 
Look at that. They're, they're, look at this. Supernova always wants to do this play. They set up the Baron two to three minutes in, and then when when they have many ways pushing towards the enemy team, they just start doing it immediately. They know they have the vision control. They weren't pre prior to that, and they clear it out. And look at this. Another free dragon 22 minutes in. This is... This is the cleanest Baron, cleanest team that has that has done Baron consecutively. The only one that hasn't is when they did Game Two. That's it. But man, when they're on red side, they know how to play with this Baron. That that's that that I think is their downfall. That they don't know how to play um, blue side, and and they and that's something that they really need to learn how to do is just play both sides of the maps. For sure. For but sure. other than that, they are they are a good team. They know how to play. They are very communicative. Um, they they have great warding ability. So it's just that one side of the map that is just their tilt mode. Yeah, for sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every team has a preference of what you want to play. On their play style, yeah. And this yeah, is just happens yeah. to be super, uh, Supernova's red side. Bear, uh, and emphasis on Baron, too. But let's see here. Look at the rotation. They're going to try and add the Baron buff here. Top wave is pushing towards play for fun. And look at Piper looking for the buy sign. Lands it onto Ryan DeFranco, but nothing too crazy. Ryan DeFranco wants to fight though, it goes yeah. for the equalizing strike, Akepo is, does, is pre tanking the Cullen comes out with Ryan DeFranco, he's going solo, the explosive guy comes out, he only has 200 health, oh. Vetrix is going to be solo, Distortion's back, throws out the Winter's Bite from Fun, Sadu, and it's not going to be a good start, he does get stunned up, throws out the Arcano, the Arcano Pulse, and Lucian is looking for that right in the passage, can he get it, throws out the third one, no, misses Gunslinger, oh. just barely! Fancy feet. Fancy feet coming in, Lucian just literally burned that ultimate, but... Gunslinger is part of the fight, throws out for that stun. Ventric is stunned though! Can he go to No, the body stun denies Om Omni up and Omni up and Akaipo is going to be one on one. No, it's not two on one. But look at the backside! I realize yeah, just TP takes really, out Gunslinger. Yeah. Kavala is by himself. I realize doing doing so much damage onto the back line. It's a 3v2, 3v1. Concussive Blows gets in, gets the stun here. Can Ventric get it? Gets the slow, gonna take out the faster. No, he knows the real one! And look at that, the Euclid Strike comes out, the slow comes out, oh, and oh, the oh. rocket comes out, takes him down. Sadu is getting to getting chunked out. Ryan DeFranco doing so much work with that Triforce and with that Deadman's Plate. So, and it's a uh, Saval isn't a part of that fight right now. He's on the other side. He was split for the entire team during that because of that TP coming from Ryan DeFranco. Honestly, great TP coming from Ryan DeFranco right onto that, this tribush right over here. Onto that and getting onto Gunslinger. Throws up. Oh! The Powder King! That from Cavell! Come on, Cavell, carrying the team 6 1 and 4. Looks like Gunslinger is up there. They're looking for the play. Gets stunned up. East to Orange. Throws out the explosive cast. He's getting solo. Akaibo picks up. Picks up a uh, Hoover. Gonna get the calling. Oh my god, the Powder King comes down. And shutdowns everywhere. They stayed a little bit too long. Cavell 7 1 and this 6, gameplay, making it a huge does have impact. TP. He does have that TP. That is he gonna TP top? No, it looks like they're just gonna be keeping up this push. Cavell does have that Baron buff, so. Not that big of a deal, and looks like Ventrix is gonna want to clear off this mid wave too. So now they're just gonna be waiting. Akaibo is gonna tank for a little bit. They do have a lot of damage here, so. And look at that, right there. Arcane gets Akaibo! Look at that dodge too! And oh. no, he's not. The third one isn't even gonna go on Akaibo. He's actually gonna try and go on uh, Cavell, but not gonna be doing anything. Throws off for that third, hits it. Hey, and look at that! 40% of his health gone. Just like that from a powder oh. keg. Honestly. Oh, come on now, that's that's a little bit of BM. Yeah, and look at that, the double hits, throws out the chain, doesn't miss, Ignite oh comes out, God. is he gonna go down, Lil Shin, tick, and he does, Ventrix takes him out with the Ignite, the two men knock him on him, Ventrix though, and Cavell, if Cavell throws out the cannon barrage, can he get out one, Omni up, is gonna take, throws out the super mega death rocket, hits Cavell, Cavell is on the chase, Ryan DeFranco is gonna hit Gunslinger, Gunslinger is gonna get equalized strike, throws out the concussive blows, and Ryan DeFranco is gonna take him down, Ventrix is going distortion over the wall to Dragon, Akaipo is gonna try and peel for this, but Cavell still alive. Hasn't gone down yet. Seven, one, and seven. Really big play. He's, but he does have that TP. What does he want to do with that TP? There are two. All three of the waves are pushing towards him, towards Play for Fun's base. It looks like the backs are going to be coming out though. Nothing too crazy. But man, Ryan DeFranco, the top lane. Ryan DeFranco and Cavell really making a huge impact for their team. Yeah, and, and the, the only difference is, is that the fact that um, Ryan DeFranco is going for that back line. He is catching that back line, and he's going for the uh, for the ADC. Whereas you see gameplay, he's he's just doing whatever, man. He's just in there. He's trying to just make fights happen. 
he's not trying to focus anyone in particular. He's just trying to go out there, and it, it seems like he's playing a little bit selfish. It seems like he's playing a little bit for himself. But um, just just by the way that he's throwing down his powder kicks, just by the way that he's uh, going into fights and initiating them, don't get me wrong, the first fight where he had that powder cake did so much damage, and he just tried to steal red buff. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, it's it's not it's not the fact that Irelia is doing a better job. It's more of that he just needs to be able to dive their back line, and yeah. he, he just doesn't have the accessibility. I think another thing, too, is that Cavell can damage both the front and the back line once he lays up two barrels, because he can play lane one by himself and one one towards the back line. So, honestly, he's doing a lot. He's just doing a lot more damage versus to Aurelia. Aurelia only can only do single target while getting playing. All he cares about is just landing a powder kick. If it lands on a tank, it doesn't matter because it just has that innate armor pen. And if it lands on a squishy, that's even better. So. I think that's the reason why you just see you just see how uh, Cavell is playing. He just, all he cares about is landing a powder keg on anyone because that will do a, a good amount of damage. Because he, since he does have that S Reaver and does have that Drive Force, right? And he he has that damage, and, it's, and he's doing a lot of damage. And it does like he might be going Thurston or an I Edge, which would be insanely amount of damage. He's seven one seven one hundred ninety five CS at twenty eight minutes. Um, he he is actually on top tier right now. He is playing probably the best one in this game at the moment. But that, that doesn't that doesn't change the difference though. If he if he cannot carry a team solo, that Wu Kong is going to get the back line. That Irelia is going to get the back line, and that Alistair is going to peel for them. Yeah, he cannot uh, win this game solo. Yeah, actually, Gameplay has earned almost 900, 939 gold, almost one k from his parlay. That is huge. Yeah, that that is ridiculous. The fact that he can gain gold so much like that. And yeah, right look at now this he though. has 2.1k oh, so, in there. So close. So close. And right now he has 2.2, 2.2k, 2.3 in, in his pocket. And look at this. There's there's the there's a supernova strat just getting ready for that Baron. They do know that, but look at this. They're trying to look for a pick. And look at that Gunslayer d does manage to take out that ward right there. And look at this. Lucius going so low. Can he take it? One more. No, he does not. Oh, he knocks him over. But oh. look at that. The... The knockback gives it. The Gagus Bulls gets it. Is he going to go down? Yes, he does. To do. He's going to pick up the kill, but the knockup comes in. Ventrix. <coughs> Clone is going to be the only. Look at that. Ventrix is so low. Cavallo's on the backside. He's going to take it down. Take one down. He's going to. He's dominating. He's going to get a power kick. Gets on all three. Omni Up is going to oh go down from Gunslayer. God. And Hoover's going to get two man knockup, but he's going to go solo. Can he get the third one? No, he doesn't. But Gunslayer flashes over for that and gets the double tap onto him. And holy cow. Caval. Doing so much, getting that three-man power keg right before he get headbutted into the turret. Man, you are making such a huge impact on these team fights with those powder kegs. That that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what he needs to be doing. That 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 is exactly what he needs to be doing. He needs to be in that back line. He needs to be landing those powder kegs, and he needs to be making a difference in that back line. As long as he can do that, they can handle the front no matter what. They can For kill sure. Iroh. They can kill the Wu Kong. They can <laughs> focus that. Out. And now look at this. This is a free Baron. Death Mega, uh, Super Death Mega Rock. Oh my God! I Super Mega Death Rocket. <laughs> Thank you, Super Mega Death Rocket. <laughs> GG. Okay. <laughs> um, now that we've already seen that, that was just a desperate attempt to try and get a little bit of extra damage onto them. But they're gonna get oh, this Baron. They're gonna get out so without any clean. interference. The calling to and just tear him away too. Oh. Well, Kavaz by here. Look at that. The Cannon Barrage is gonna slow him down too. Looks like they're all gonna right. be making out okay. just fine. Yeah, they are. Whew. Cavell playing is super mean, super strong gangplank right now. This is how you play gangplank, man. 8 Using 1 and 10. 14.5, 14.6k. He is Woo. up on his counterparts so ahead. Oh my gosh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me get these differences. He is up 3, 3.5k. 3.5k. That is, that's, that is, that is a straight up item. 3.5k. That is insane. Yeah, he. This is this is where he shines at the 31 minute mark. Jinx, Jinx, only has rapid fire and it doesn't even and is starting to build her last whisper yet. Look, compared to Lucian too. Lucian already has IE. Uh, I don't know how to has an essence reaper over her. That is huge. Yeah, that that is insane. He's five four and eight with 194 CS. She is two five and four. Mm -hmm. And looks like look at this. There, here comes a split pushing strategy. Cavell on the top side has a can of rush. If you, if they need to impact or if they need to run away, so looks like Ventrix is going to take out this blue buff here. Cavell is going to do a quick rotation towards the bottom side. Now the question is, can Cavell split push and one v one against Ryan DeFranco? Because if he can, then he can just maintain that split push and win. But look at here, the flank might be coming out. 
they're trying to look for that flank. And look at this. They have it. They have all the vision, though. They know they're here. They're split. They're just by themselves. Burr, Burr Hoover's going to go down. He's just one more out. He's going to get the stuns. He becomes out from that. Gangly's already here, though. He's laying down the barrels. Powder Keg's going to line up. Can he get the second one? Does. And Vedrick slays on Lil Shin. Gangplank slays on Hoover. Kavaz is godlike. And Gunslinger is going to take down. Ryan DeFrank, Lil Shin's going to go down. Akaipo is going to pick it up. And look at that. Gunslinger is going to take it. Get the double kill onto Omni up. And look at that. That is going to be game. 32 minutes and 11 to 26. Supernova, Supernova Ares. You guys have done it. You guys have taken first place in this tournament with that Baron Control, with those wards. And holy cow, Cavell, MVP of this game by far. Very, very well played. Very great job to be able to come back like that, guys. Did great this game. I really commend you both. Uh, both teams. Uh, it was very fun. It was very fun casting for everybody. Uh, I had a great time. Um, I had a great time casting uh, with you as well. It, it was just all around fun night. Chilling. For sure. For sure. All right. So, but yeah, looks. Look at that. That is first place for Supernova Aries. They claimed it. They've got the redemption for their sister team too, so that is pretty much going to be uh, uh, what? Pretty much going to be it. Any last words for whoever else is viewing? Um, other than that, let's let's get the mechanics, guys. We we just want to be good like them, don't we? <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, All right, guys. We're signing off now. I'm Kryptonic Killer. Yeah, and I'm Chilling Walk. Uh, actually, if you guys want to follow me, I actually stream as well. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's at it's, uh, twitter.com at Chilling Walk. If you have anything else to say, Crypt, if you want them to follow you on Twitter any, or anything. Oh, and uh, since we're doing promotions, let me go ahead and say, guys, if you liked what we did, if you liked the cast, if you want to become a streamer or and or shoutcaster, come like us at Caster's Caravan. Thank you very much. Everybody have a good night.